and Muzz got mad at me, the coach said, he goes, Jesus Christ, why don't you just wear two nines? And I went, okay. Please, please, please never do that. Yep. So. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 472 of Spit and Chicklets, presented by Pink Whitney from our friends at New Amsterdam Vodka. Here in the Barstool Sports Podcast family. What's up, everyone? This season is just flying by. A couple of months down already. A lot of action out there. We have some front office news to get to, but we say hi to the boys first. Producer Mike Ranelli, what's going on, my man? What's going on, guys? Actually, not recording at my house today. Recording at the Barstool office. We actually have the uh, Barstool Sports Cyber Monday telethon tonight. So quick shout out to all the fans that purchased merchandise the past few days. We love you. We thank you guys. You guys are what keeps the light on. That's all I really got, boys. Very happy that the Chicklets Nation went to work for us. Was it okay if I I bring up because we were talking before uh, we started recording before you guys hopped on, and G was at his girlfriend's house for Thanksgiving and he was just getting grilled by the older crew about the the engagement ring. Oh, so that's they the were worst. just full court pressing them in oh. front of Lana. Like, what like, what's your reaction to that? Who was grilling you the most? Was it grandma pitching your cheeks? When are you gonna propose to my granddaughter? When are you gonna give me grandchildren? <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> Marty Mush and Dana Beers really, really fucked me. They really fucked me. And Dana I say Beers that, is engaged? Dana Beers is engaged. <laughs> Marty Mush is engaged. To a case of beer? To a, <laughs> to a picnic table at a <laughs> Bill's <laughs> Mafia game? Like, pub. what the f- So the problem is, is I was <laughs> two and a half years into my relationship <laughs> to, when, to a pub. <laughs> when Marty started dating Rhea, when Dana started dating his girl. They proposed this past summer. So I've been on the hot seat. I know I'm on the hot seat. I understand I'm on the hot seat. But I'll just say Dana and Marty, they, they just fucked me. I, I I didn't even know Dana had a girlfriend. He does. He engage. He proposed. Um. But yeah, they fucked me. All right. Well. All right. What do you well, think I mean, about gee, this? Wit? It's not like. What do you mean they 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 fucked you? It's like you either I mean, want to get engaged or you don't. Like you can't blame <laughs> other people. Uh-oh. Like oh, uh, grab that shovel. <laughs> what are you Absol- talking about right now? You might no, want they, Alana they put to me on the hot this seat. Episode. Right, your hey, face right now. Hey, <laughs> Alana has never said a word to me about proposing engagements. Yeah, the she tells the whole those, family to say it to you. <laughs> the second those two do it, the, the second proxy. those two guys do it, every day it's like, oh, you see this? I bet Dana and Marty are planning their weddings together. All this fun stuff. And I'm like, sorry. It's just, I, of course I want to get engaged to her. I love the girl. She's the best girl in the there world. There we go. It just, oh, these things go. take time. Butter He's going to clip that one. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> these things take time. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's going to be all over this guy's story. He's going to do the full swap TikTok hey, video. I will say whole- this. I will say yeah, this. Okay. I don't know if there's ever been a man alive to say, I wish I got married sooner. So when, when you, when you, you know, you meet the girl, your dreams, the girl you love a hundred percent G you take it, you take your time because like, you know, 10 years from now when there's little Grinelli's running around clipping clips and, and, and showing off <laughs> merch for spitting chicklets, you're not going to be like, God, I wish I got engaged like six months before I did. So you I'll think, tell you, you think I'll tell you what, a carny, he's got to keep it in the family. Like, yeah, all, he's going to be like, this, uh, who's, that? Sweat ben, who's the kid? Who's that? Benson? Who's Zach running Benson, around yeah. with oh, carnival yeah. full? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> Sick Zach first goal By for the way, I, I might as well get to it since you mentioned him. Holy shit. I said nicest first goal ever, and Edmonton fans were all over me saying Eb- Eberly Reigns. What's your guys' opinion quick on that? I was in the game, and I just remember being so like blown away by Eberly's goal, and the building was nuts. You know, there's that crazy... Uh, First game, um, season could be special vibes in Edmonton every year, and then like the super <laughs> so. rookie is coming in with Hall, and he does that. It was, it was that for me. Probably took the cake because it was more length of the ice from the red line as opposed yeah, to Benson. There was being a so build, there was a sick tight. build up to it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So that building just went fucking bananas when that happened. Bananas. Was it his crazy? First shift? And then there's actually a funny clip. I think Ryan Rashog did like a funny like uh, spoof on like us being mad that he should have passed it and like things like it's <laughs> it's definitely on YouTube, but just chir- just chirping apps. But that goal was, I I remember just being like flabbergasted at how nasty that goal was for your first one in the show. You guys went out to the pint after and just got crippled. Yeah, like and that. we won too, so a hundred percent we did. Ryan Whitney, the Whit Dog. How'd you have Thanksgiving go? You had about six hundred people coming over your house, didn't you? It was phenomenal. It was great. Good. I'm a big Thanksgiving guy. I've said that many times. Um, yeah, we hosted, I think the final number was 58, 58 people. Now that's including, uh, that's including kids, but so many of these kids are now like grown up. So it, it was just a blast. And our basement's done finally. 
Um, I shouldn't say finally. It's it's done. And um, we got the ping pong set up. We got the putting green. We got the uh, the TV. We actually got a new coach coming in. We bought a coach. Horrible, horrible coach. I okay. sat on the coach. I said, this is the worst coach I've ever sat on. It <laughs> so what happens to the big, coach? You send it back to the store? Big fight. fight. Big you send it back because, to the store? Yeah, they're actually taking it back and giving us full refund, which I don't understand how that works. But when your wife, I'll tell anyone out there, does takes the time and effort to go pick out a couch and then you're the whole time saying no I don't care I trust what you get and then she gets it and you sit down and say this is the worst coach I've ever sat on that's going to lead to a fight 10 out of 10 times <laughs> so in the end I was correct I think because she had friends come over and they sat on it and said this is the worst coach ever so any other married married guys Gucci, get ready for this one when you tell your wife something it'll never be correct but once their friend says the exact same thing you're good to go <laughs> So, I'm already doing damage control right now for the beginning part of this podcast. I, already, I just texted oh, my girlfriend. Your friend I'm like, fucked you for forcing, forcing you. I'm like, you're going to hear shopping. some stuff on the pod. It's just entertainment, babe. I'm just an entertainer. I don't oh, mean yeah. any of it. Yeah, I get the flowers Rodney ordered. I made, I made a, I made a couple day. monster plates, though, for Thanksgiving. You know when you're, I just waited and waited and waited. And um, and then one of Bree's uncles who lives out in California, the guy is talking so much shit that he's the king of ping pong and he was beating his brothers. I'm like, buddy, hold on. So first, my dad took him down, put him over the workbench and just absolutely <laughs> warped him, just smashed him. I'm like, hey, you want a piece of me? 21-7, 21-6, just embarrassing. This kid was walking around with his tail between his legs like a little puppy just getting worked by the Whitney men. But... um. I, I ran. I ran. My dad got me once. Uh, I think I was 10 and 1. It was just a shit kicking on the table. So I got the I got the machine now that serves, and I practice my returns, forehand, backhand. <laughs> so I, I'm really getting into the Forrest ping pong. Gump. Forrest Gump. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, no, Forrest, he brought the table up, and he used the backboard. I do that occasionally, but I got a machine that's serving to me. So I load that thing with 100 balls. Boom, boom. And I've actually really figured out the topspin on my forehand. My backhand's always been a weapon. So I it, would it destroy a, you in ping pong wit. I oh, would sure yeah. You, you say you'll destroy oh, everyone wow. and everything. Well, you know, and you never was wasn't, wasn't, wasn't he the one rings. who... Wasn't it's he the one happened. who beat you in bubble bubble hockey? Yeah, I think we yes, still, I think he still he owe did. me 500 But I'm not good at bubble hockey. Gee, I will, I will buy your engagement ring if you beat me. <laughs> oh! If you beat me in a four of seven series in Whoa. ping pong. And, and, Whoa. and, and to finish this happen. deal, we're going to need something from you if you win, considering you just said you'd smash me. Deal. That's a deal. Let's think about what I'll do, but I'm 100% right. in on that. All right. Wowza. Holy fuck. That is such a good bet. Jeez. What are we talking here for his side? Like maybe something like uh, he, he has to make like a Like come over himself? and wash my feet every morning Who's and salary? move to a <laughs> shitty apartment in Quincy, Mass or, or Milton, Mass and fuck come over every morning and wash my feet and make me breakfast for like a month. That could be possibility. Oh man, this is gonna yeah. Be but too I mean, good. you just talked about how great your basement is. If I can get in on the putting green like this. I don't know. I might. I'm, I'm in on that. Yeah, living in your basement on your. No, you won't be living couch. in my basement though. Oh, you man. know what I'll do? I'll get a nice state of the art porta potty for the yard, and you can sleep in there for a couple weeks. <laughs> What's the state of the art porta potty? <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. I think there was like town complaints. So, Wit, uh, on Thanksgiving morning, what time are you waking up? Are you the one preparing the turkeys? Like, are you the one orchestrate? <laughs> Am I the one preparing the turkeys, bro? Oh, well, you said you're a big thing. Are you smoking guy? turkey weed? Like <laughs> Wednesday night, I was with some friends. I got home at 3.30 in the morning. And I was like, no, how are you starting this whole weekend like that? And um, so I, I actually woke up at like 8.30 and the kids were downstairs eating, watching a movie. I was like, thank you, babe. Thank you. And um, then... I took them out like a little flag football game. And then we actually, we had four, <laughs> we had four turkeys. We fried two of them. My brother-in-law fries them. Okay. If any, fried turkey. That's the way to go? Oh, dude. The skin. It, well, first of all, it takes about an hour and 25 minutes as opposed to like four and a half hours in the oven. Done. And then the skin is so crispy. It's like bacon on steroids, I was saying. Um my 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 brother in law pretended to to pour a zin in the oil, the peanut oil. I was like, dude, he's like, I was just kidding. It was already empty. I was like, that would have been an unreal turkey, though. So he, uh, we had a blast out there. And then and I didn't do any of the preparation for food. And then everyone brings a dish. And then we just had like 
We had so much. I thought the dessert this year was a little bit of a letdown. I made that public and clear to everyone. But other than that, it was phenomenal. <laughs> Don't you get a hey, freezer? Them? Freezer yes, tarps sorry. did that. So freezer what happens tarps. is, I had freezer tarp. I had freezer tarp send me a video that night. I was like, buddy, you got to send me a video. My brother-in-law is your biggest fan. He just sent one, just chirping him. <laughs> no, he did, he did the Zen Turkey. He yeah, does yeah, the, yeah. The that's where I think he got the idea. All right. So basically, you have to be so careful putting the turkey in because if any of the oil comes over and hits the flame, it's kaboom. And Oof. so it's all about just putting it in so slow that the oil doesn't rise. But I think people, like, they have no clue for the most part. Stick to the GG special. But yeah, buddy. Biz, um, maybe next, yeah. next year I'll give my uh, turkey prep you know, key notes for everyone that, that thinks I'm doing it. Well, shout out to the people who like, like there are guys out there that wake up at six and like prepare all the food and get the whole thing ready. So shout out to those guys out there. And it seems like what you think majority of the wives are doing all the heavy lifting. I would, my guess would be in, in my history on this earth and like the families I've been around is Thanksgiving, like meal prep is probably like 92% women. Okay. I don't know. Maybe I'm way feel, off base I usually there. feel like the, the, the turkey is handled by the guy, and then maybe everything oh, else. I the, think the guy is known as the carver, but I don't necessarily know if the guy is always the one, you know, basing well, I mean, that you, thing. You don't want your, your wife d fucking around with this grease thing you're talking about. Well, no, the, this, the, this the men did the fry. The men did the fry. Okay. The women right. did the good, oven. Good to know. Good to know. <laughs> and uh, just to go back to the engagement ring thing, uh, like what type of money are we talking here? Is there a cap? Yeah. Who's, who's like month's what salary? Were you, what were you planning on spending, G? I don't think I can that's say that. That's a tough one. That's a tough one to make public. That's, yeah. yeah okay. That's tough. <laughs> no, it's too tough. Hey, cash, like, and what's your hey, salary cash. too, bitch? I'm like Howard Stern today. I ask all the hard-hitting questions. <laughs> that's Paul. We'll, we'll find a cap. And now is. sit on that Sibian and make yourself come. <laughs> Oh, the desert, Paul. You had a busy week last week. Uh, two nights at TNT. Good to see you back, resting them uh, back at home. How you been, pal? Uh, yeah, Wednesday, Friday broadcast. So there's only been a couple times in the first half of the season when we did two in one week. And, um, you know, I'm Canadian. I didn't get to really spend Thanksgiving with anyone other than myself in, a, in the fart sack in my Four Seasons <laughs> hotel room and putting a few in my belly button. So that was really the only thing I was stuffing. Uh, and uh, it was good, though. It was fun, fun games, very entertaining. And uh, yeah, I just got back on Saturday. So nothing really that exciting, I think. I mean, I'm trying to think of what, what did I do that was that no, nothing. My life, my life is kind of boring during the season. It's all hockey and travel. Can't always be excited. Uh, gee, no. what was I going to say? All oh, game notes. Uh, we got another episode coming. All this right. Friday, how was yours, Mendel? bud? Oh, yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, all right. I, I don't I hate to like try to like do that myself. I don't want to ask myself the question. Mine was well, I really know. That's nice, why you man. texted me and said, can you ask me about my thing? <laughs> uh, uh, no, it was, it was wicked chill, man. My mother lives down like a well, senior housing um, down in Swampscott. It's like an old school and they have a room that like uh, the people who live there can like you don't have to rent that out. You just put your name on. It was just me, my wife, my in-laws, my parents, uh, my siblings and aunt and a cousin. It was just real nice. No kids, no like no noise. Just chilled out, watched the football, had a nice meal and yeah. A little couple glass of wine. It's really, really nice to relax. A nice day with the with the fam. Man, you get older and you really appreciate these. When you oh, get older, older, all so. right. I'll second that. Even at my age, I'm 38 right now. Like no noise is the best. Just mm -hmm. pure silence. That's like my, that's like the best thing about about my weekend. I just chill out. Like I go for walks and stuff. Put the earbuds in. I actually think that my my hearing's You'd gotten more. Kids. You think I would love having kids? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, 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 Based uh, on well, silence being the best part of your life. Well, another thing about not just uh, making them, Paul. <laughs> another thing too is we've never had a chicklets wedding because you did yours kind of just oh, like a yeah. yeah. So, if, so it's a it's a race between Ooh. me and G. Should I just get some mail order bride from Russia and beat him to the punch? <laughs> Boys, a chicklets wedding would be fucking insane. It would oh, be yeah. the craziest thing to ever happen. Oh, we'll be auctioning off tickets to it and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> by by hey, five hundred dollars worth of merch next year. <laughs> I'm, wearing really this. I'm wearing this down the aisle. Big deal, <laughs> hey, brew, baby. Yeah, the, hey, the, the down the aisle, all the groomsmen have to wear new merchandise, and we like you know get the promo codes buzzing with the flower girl. She's throwing out promo code tickets on flower buds. <laughs> Hey guys, Whit here. Before we go any further, I want to talk to you about Pink Whitney. The New York City trip, the party of a lifetime. Which one of your friends parties the hardest? Which one of your friends will pound the most Pink Whitney and then have a time? Stories told about him or her the next day. Good, bad, ugly, doesn't matter. A partier is a partier. 
And with the, with the holiday season here, I know Thanksgiving, I had so many different messages on Twitter and seeing people with the nips. Just a perfect uh, warm-up to Thanksgiving dinner. Just hammering some pink wit, catching the nice buzz, plowing through some food, and then finishing the night off with a little more pink wit. And with Christmas coming up, and, and bowl season and football, I mean, it's the tailgate drink of the season. And also, I think it's a great Christmas gift, right? You grab the packs of nips, you give them out to some of your favorite customers or friends. Maybe you get somebody the big monster bottle that's a huge fan of Pink Whitney. So we're looking at gift giving, we're looking at the holiday season, we're looking at tailgating, and Pink Whitney's at all a part of all of them. And the New York City Pink Whitney trip. I think that we need a little more, a little more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Engagement from people. Nominate some more. Nominate nominate your crazy buddy. Nominate a guy or a girl who's never been to New York City. And all of a sudden they're going because of how much Pink Whitney they trip and how much they party. That's the city to do it. So we want to go to pinkwhitney.com to enter the info of your of your friend who's the best party animal in the world. You got 10 secondary prize winners that will receive Pink Whitney party packs with everything you and your crew need to take your shot and throw the ultimate host party. And as I said, that one lucky winner gets to bring three friends. So if you do nominate someone and they win and then they don't take you, that's a real kick in the dick. So let's make sure that doesn't happen. But they get the trip to New York City and the tour of Barstool headquarters. PinkWhitney.com. And don't forget to head on over to your local watering hole, your local bar, to have a little Pink Whit get in the holiday season so pink whitney new amsterdam spitting chiclets there we go uh well we should probably jump right into it huge yeah. news uh just broke right before we started recording uh minnesota fired dean everson uh him Oof. and his assistant coach bob woods and uh john hines is going to come in and become the seventh coach of the minnesota wild and uh there was a quote the other day uh the big rig pat maroon he said uh seven in a row fucking unacceptable uh guy should be pissed off uh apparently there was some dis- discord in the room and I don't know. I think this you could probably see this coming, Biz. That team has just been awful out of the gate. Uh, I don't think that anyone's going to be really surprised by this. Creed's going to have, have to go back to Houghton Mifflin. So we just got this news, and I wanted to say, you know, I'm I'm surprised by it, but I guess I'm not in a sense where if Billy Guerin thinks that the season can be recovered, now's the time to do it. Um, I'm sure that, you know, he's been around long enough to consult and maybe, I don't want to say lost the room because Dean Evanson seems like a great guy and, and a well-respected coach where maybe it was just like the the message was kind of falling on deaf ears where, you know, they, did you announce that they, they're bringing in Dana Hines? Uh, John, John Hines. Hines yeah. Or John, yeah. John, John Dana Hines. Say, I'm thinking yeah. of the trainer who trained Pittsburgh the fucking 2000 guy. game. So my apology, John Hines. Um, but this team has, has got out of the gate and they've struggled. Like the penalty kill has been atrocious. I've said that they probably had one of the most underrated decors coming in. Um, I mean, I still think that they've been okay. I think that this probably falls more on goaltending where Gustafson had such an amazing year last year. And, and you know, Billy G picked him up off of uh, Ottawa for, for I think it was in the Talbot trade mm-hmm. where, yep. ba- you know, he, he comes off looking like a genius based on the numbers that he was putting up. And Flower was also playing pretty good. I think he might've had one or two cold, quick cold spells last year, but collectively they were a lot better than we've seen so far this year. And as we've seen, like, you know, goaltending can be a very strong component to whether your season's going good or bad. EI, the fucking Oilers, who we've been talking about nonstop. Um, I I would say that before the other game, um, I think it was uh, abs and mini, uh, and Kaprizov looked like himself. He dominated. But I think if most people you talk to who are Minnesota fans would say that he hasn't looked like his dominant self so far this year, he's close to a point per game, sure. But we're talking about the Kaprizov who's like taking it from his own end, going to the offensive zone. The guy who's doing the fucking 10 and 2, doing fucking loser laps around the fucking ozone, looking for the hole to take, and then boom, takes it and 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 buries it. So we haven't seen that Kaprizov, along with probably the struggles of Boldy early on. So I would say that those components have led to the fact that the team hasn't been able to have success in the win column. But not surprised if Billy Guerin thinks they have a winning team and to change things sooner rather than later because we all know the stats. Once you hit Thanksgiving, and if you're in a tough spot, it's very hard to recover in the back half of the year when you're not getting any practice time or anything. So, um, you know, I, I think that John Hines is a well-respected coach. Whit, you were talking about him before we hopped on. Yeah, well, he was the coach of Wilkes-Barre for five or six years when Billy Guerin, you know, after his playing career, ended up 
player development, I think, in Pittsburgh, then assistant GM. And so there's a lot of work between him and the AHL coach. Prospects, how they look, and what's the system you're playing down there compared to ours. Just discussion throughout the year. So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing there was a ton of trust there and, and, a, and a guy he really knows um, in terms of like also realizing he's coaching the NHL. He's, he's had a couple good runs here and there. So it's like it makes sense to go with somebody you know and trust midseason. That's always tough. But like so many beat writers who follow teams daily, like Mike Russo is very dialed into the Minnesota Wild. He's like a great follow, good writer in the athletic. He kind of always is, is has his finger on the pulse of that team. And just in the past couple of days, he started kind of li- little messages um, on Twitter, little little posts kind of saying, like, I think the, the seat's getting much hotter for Evanson because Billy Guerin had come out and, and, and spoke highly of him and Pat Maroon earlier this year mentioned like this is not on the coach and in a similar fashion to the Oilers it really wasn't on the coach like at some point you either when the team's faltering and everything's falling apart it's like make a trade or fire the coach well it's always easier to fire a coach so you kind of feel bad for Woodcroft and Edmonton now I'm sure there'll be some things that that change there the same way they have in Edmonton I mean the other assistant coach is Bob Woods is that his name uh, he got fired also. He was running the PK. Their PK is pathetic. It's leaking oil. It, it's it's so horrible. So they, cha- they changed it the last two or three games to a diamond. And I think it was Jen Botterill who pointed it out on the broadcast, which it was actually pretty decent in the game against uh, Colorado, although they missed one of the clears and ended up in the back of their net. And you know when fuck it rains, it pours. Just one of those years where, hey, let's really make sure we fucking keep it out of our net tonight on the PK. Oh, fuck, don't get the clear in the back of the net. So... But like you said, when I think it's in the what sixty percent range, they're horrible. And and like uh, Russo writes in, in this, in, it was like a mailbag I just pulled up. Kaprizov two even strength goals, Boldy one, Marcus Johansson one goal in the season, no shots the past two games. Freddie Goudreau zero points in the last nine games. Ryan Hartman seven goals, but none in the past seven games. Felino, Duhame, and Dewar seven combined points. It's like. You know, like the coach gets fired, but you you look at the roster, it's like guys aren't playing well. And and what's what's good for the Wild, I think, with Boldy is he he caught fire in the second half last year. I mean, he he wasn't doing that much early, and then just completely exploded. The Kaprizov thing is what's weird, and I don't know if he's injured. I don't know what's going on, but you said it best, Biz. Even with the point production where it's at, he's not even close to what he's looked like in other years. Other years, he's driving the play, he's controlling the puck, his offensive zone possessions out of this world, and now it's just like a shell of himself. So when confidence goes, it goes quick, and it takes a lot of work to get it back. And it takes a lot of luck to get it back, too, I think. So I don't know if he's dealing with an injury or if he's dealing with his confidence being kind of shattered right now. Same with Boldy, but, you know, the coach gets like, oh, that's that's too... 200 point seasons in a row from the wild those two years and garen didn't even hire evanson so he he, he believed in him after yeah. coming o- coming in and taking over and like all right i like this guy but in the end you got to try to do something so between penalty kill goaltending and kaprizov not being himself but you kind of mentioned the secondhand scoring sometimes when it's not there it puts so much focus on the top guys because most teams have a shutdown line or a pair that can really you know take care of that and then when all of a sudden you know other lines start producing it takes a little bit of pressure off you and you don't you're not gripping the stick as tight so you know who knows who knows i i uh i still don't think they make playoffs now i just think that there's oh too i don't other, think they make playoffs either i think they're done and yeah it's um that sucks man but it's, it's crazy the, the 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 gustafson thing's nuts with last year and then he gets the contract and maybe it's the the whole feeling of expectations not yeah not even ex. Yeah, I'm thinking expectations is one way to put it. Or also, you, you kind of take your foot off the gas a little. And but I, I know nothing. I don't know Gustafson personally. I don't know anything. But, man, you sign a big deal. Oh, maybe maybe your work ethic drops just this much. And all of a sudden, like, the, 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 the strength that carried you and being so determined and driven, you relax a little bit. And all of a sudden, your play falters. And, and I don't know what's going on with him, but it probably has something to do with the defensive zone coverage they have and their overall defensive zone structure. But uh, it, it's just tough. And it's also weird to me. Same thing with Edmonton with uh, Glenn Gullickson. Excuse me, I'm mispronouncing that. He stays as guys leave. And now 
Darby Hendrickson stays. I always wonder, like, as the assistant who stays, you got to feel, like, a little guilty and bad, but you still have your job. A little so wife like, swap. Hey, yeah, it's like, uh, hey, guys, like, and it's just kind of awkward, I'm sure, for those guys. But I think you probably need one guy to be there to at least, like, Hey, this is what's going on with the team. This is, this is uh, Kirill, Kirill Kaprizov. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, if you, you guys have to have him wake yet. up, please. Yeah, um, this is where the steam room is. Um, but you know, it, 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 it definitely to sucks to see a guy games. lose his job. Yeah, this uh, seven points back of the second wild card. They do have three games at hand, but you know they got their work cut out from with all those te- teams in between. So. Uh, see what happens there. On the other side of the standings, Biz, your, your boys, the New York Rangers. Oh uh, nice God. little 13-1-1 run, uh, 27 out of 30 points. And they've done it uh, a lot without, without Adam Fox, the number one defenseman. This team's been rolling. And honestly, I don't even think they're playing their best right now. I mean, what's his name? John Quick, how about him? Two shutouts already, 37 years old. Uh, Biz, do you want to do over on the Rangers here or what? No, come on. I, I've said this before. I just hate their fucking guts. And in fact, it actually makes me happier because the expectations are being built even higher for them to fizzle out in the first round. And I actually, in my brain and in my daydreams, I'm kind of seeing this, you know, second half comeback by the New Jersey Devils and somehow they meet again in the, in the first round and New Jersey figures things out. But we're going to have Pasha on later. And, and just to go back quickly to Minnie, did you guys want to talk about the flurry situation quick or, or did you want to move on from that? considering we were talking about their goaltenders. Oh, the old uh, NHL just <laughs> looking like fools again, yeah. not wanting him to wear and, a and, mask. And I'm not trying to deflect. We can talk about that after we talk about the Rangers because we're just getting into this Rangers talk. You guys tell me. Yeah, I, no, it's good, good call because obviously the Minnesota stuff broke late. We had the okay. Mark andre flurry down further. Yeah, uh, the NHL is like that fucking uh, Sideshow Bob episode of The Simpsons where he just keeps stepping on rakes and they keep smacking him in the face. That's the <laughs> NHL this year. They just <laughs> can't do analogy. anything fucking right. Uh, I mean, they, they, I don't know. They told the guy he couldn't wear it in warm-ups. Like, uh, who gives a fuck? I mean, that's been one thing. Goalies have always been able to put whatever on their masks. Uh, a couple of goalies. I know uh, Bob, Bob down in Florida, he's had the hockey fights canceled. Like, how do you tell a guy he can't wear that mask? I mean, he's just tribute to his wife it's just stupid man they can't get out of their own fucking way man first they said he couldn't wear it in the game but could wear it in warm-ups yeah. then they changed their mind which is like that's even crazy like we already said you could wear it in warm-ups but actually no 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 we thought about it you can't wear it in warm-ups like what are you doing and rarely does um uh Luongo chime in on any negativity surrounding the league and even he quote tweeted and said like what are we even doing here now this could be my only answer for why it was like flagged down is Maybe they didn't get enough prep time and to know what the what you know what it was for. And therefore it has to go down this totem pole where I know you're rolling your eyes a little bit, Whit, but what if it ends up being put on his helmet where it was something offensive and oh it, it slipped through the cracks? So I don't know how long but in this advance. Wasn't. No, I, I understand, but if they get that information uh the morning of, hey, he's wearing this mask. I don't know who it's got to go through at the league to understand and, and if it's in the right hands. Like, Is there like a, a group text of individuals that they can go to to like have a panel where this can go down or be given more of a heads up for – they're probably thinking from a legality standpoint. Do I think it's stupid knowing what the cause was and, and how beautiful the helmet is, why it couldn't have been worn for the whole game? No, it's fucking ridiculous. There should be somebody that, that they can – like, like a, a – a, a panel or committee that it should go to. Like this seems like it's not really being handled properly because they're fumbling the bag so many times on these 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 topics. Oh right? yeah. yeah, like how, how do but they? Here's the other thing. Like, does the, does the, the hockey diversity alliance or, or or the one that they've established? That's I don't even know if that one's still a thing. But isn't there like a a thing that's established where they can take it to that in advance? Uh, all I know is that the the the, the best like most bizarre part of all of this is. There wasn't even a punishment, so it it's a, it, it goes back. It's, it's like they make a big deal. Uh, no game warm ups. Oh, sorry, no warm ups. Where's it anyways? Nothing happens. Like what? As Wongo said, what are we even doing here? That might have like, been a good decision they've they made. They, with. they should. I really, thought he was like, going to get fined or something, but he decided to wear it anyway. So they even well, they should even, find okay. him anyways if they want to. If they want to try to at least like stick to their guns, you like how you look foolish saying no to be, to begin with. You look even dumber to not punish him because after the Dermot pride tape, no punishment. He wasn't allowed to do that. No punishment. Right. So now Flurry's told he can't do this. No punishment. It's like, uh, I, I don't know. Like at some point, maybe we should punish them if we're really that adamant that they don't wear this mask or use this tape. Say I mean, that I'm just saying, loud. Wear this I, mask or use this tape isn't allowed. 
<laughs> at the end of the day, it seems like this information is being sent to the wrong people. So they should change those people who are making the decisions is basically what I was trying to say. And on top of that, from an indigenous standpoint, in Canada, every game, they pay respect to them. Like Ed Edmonton, every game, they have the guy who's on the Jumbotron and they say, they say they're, I think every Canadian team acknowledges indi the indigenous community and, and what they did for our country before games. So that's why I'm like, ah, that's kind of dumb considering they're doing it all the time. Like what's the big, and the helmet was stunning. Yeah. Uh, Biz, just sick. to chime in on your point about having enough time, Noah Ennis, who made the mask, said that they gave the NHL and the Minnesota Wild over a month to approve of oh this. My God. So what maybe kind of they month? text Gary, but it's right after he hits like his huge gravity bong every night. And so like he's not great <laughs> at getting back to text like after 8 p.m. It's like it's like it's a four foot gravity bong, the same height as him. And he's just like he's just blasted after it. They're going to turn it into an NFT. <laughs> the mask. <laughs> fuck. Uh, fuck. Thank God more, for the more, Less NFT time, more putting a group where you send it to a group chat of somebody who can make the, the right fucking call on this stuff. This has been a sideshow between everything going on this year. Um, on to the Rangers. Um, so do you think there's a chance, guys, that Biz says back-to-back -back President Trophy winners aren't going to make the playoffs. That would be an incredible thing. Yeah, but I think that we can all agree, though, and, and we're going to get to the calls later. By the way, I'm super fired up for these calls that we do. Oh, yeah, we didn't guy, tell anyone we yeah. did those. The The shtick of me hating their guts was was me saying, ah, they're going to miss playoffs, fuck them. And like, I don't, if they do, which they very much are, on that call and when I'm on the TNT panel, they have a team that is good enough to win the Stanley Cup. Okay, we can all agree. Okay, on that. so we'll go back and, in time, and if you like, you you thought no, they would I make the playoffs. No, I fuck them. Like I said, I'm I, I don't <laughs> care. I'm gonna fucking troll their fans. They're fucking scumbags <laughs> online. I'm gonna keep telling them they're trash bags. Is anyone else Cal listening Bell, confused hey, listen, by now? Do you did Cal Cal Bell Gee, ladies are you trash confused? <laughs> yeah, this is this is just crazy. What are you talking about? Do I you said, think before the year they were gonna make the playoffs? I said they weren't because I fucking hate their guts. Okay. Okay, Do they so, have a team good enough to fucking make playoffs? Of course. I said that they have a good enough team to win the Stanley Cup. They have great goaltending. They have an awesome back end. And they got some studs up front. We said the question mark is going to be with the bottom six. And look at the fucking start Lafreniere's had. So let's go back to pumping their tires. And I have no problem paying respects when it's due. And I will, I will keep pumping their tires. And the minute they lose in the first round of the New Jersey Devils, I can, I can have a great laugh about it all. You Gassing speak with your up. heart, not your head sometimes, Biz. I exactly. think that's what it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't think uh, it was a jo <laughs> Jonathan Quick, did you already say his numbers? I mean, holy uh, fucking shit. Yeah. This is unbelievable. Six, crazy. 6 0 and one uh, 9 3 0 save percentage, one nine nine goals against two shutouts. It's fucking unbelievable. Which, I love which, it. Which we go to Gustafson last year to this year in Mini. Quick was horrible last year. Like it, it kind of looked like that was it, right? I mean, yeah. there was not yeah. much there. He did not play well. And then maybe the old magic of playing for your favorite team growing up and, and just being back closer to home. Maybe it's just brought him so much inner peace away from the rink that, well, that and the, the, the team's awesome. They're an awesome defensive well, they do, team. Hey, they do give up a lot of high danger chances. So he has to fucking work to get these wins too, right? And, and also with maybe a little bit of health too. Like this guy has been through some surgeries yeah, and true. the hips weren't good and you know, in order to play his game, he has to be as athletic as he is. So, Wit, I was going to ask you about a different Gustafson, this guy who was in Toronto. He's been a, a suitcase. He's played on seven teams, four original six teams, and he's got, what, 14 points right now for them? He moves like, well, dude. Buddy, he fuck, he's making $850,000. The Leafs pick up Klingberg for four fucking million dollars. Like, he was in Toronto. You had your guy, and you had him at a bargoon. You're telling me that they couldn't have signed him for like a two year at 1.5? He's making 850 grand. And you can't even tell that Adam Fox is out of the lineup right now because it hasn't affected the power play at all. I think that since he's been out of the lineup, I don't even know if they fucking lost. And you, you, I think before the season, you were talking about the honey badger. Um, is it Lilgren? Not Lilgren. Lindgren? Lindgren. I always get those Ryan two Lindgren. fucked up. Lindgren. Warrior. Uh, Warrior. I mean, he brings in element. I know he doesn't have any points right now, but he doesn't need to. He's that fucking shot blocker. He's the guy when you go near the blue paint, he's fucking cross-checking you off. You were singing um, Schneider's praises as well. He's a big fucking D-man who stepped up in, in, that, in the absence of Fox being out. 
uh, Keandre Miller's Keandre Miller, and holy fuck, dude, this Truba train, oh. <laughs> this Truba, that this clip. This guy's of, a menace. And and the 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 coolest thing about it is like the mental toughness side where he didn't get baited into fighting Delorier. He's fucking grabbing him the whole way up the ice against the the Philadelphia Flyers, and then he sees an opportunity, and then who do you, who do you end up going a Half truck? Away. Like he uh, tr and Hathaway ain't a fucking little guy either. I know. He's built like a brick shit house too. So he, f like Truba, might be one of the best open ice hitters in the NHL, if not the best open ice hitter. And he fucking every like ten games, he's doing something where you're like, okay, this guy might be on the spectrum, and like put a handle Belector mask on him. <laughs> and, and then I think the game after was when the Frederick thing happened, and we can wait to get to that and and that breakdown. But their back end is so good, they're so solid, they're getting the goaltending. Uh, power play is third in the league right now, so they've been fucking humming. And the penalty kills seventh, so their special teams is doing an unbelievable job. And Panarin, uh, you know, he's having an MVP caliber season as of late. And I use this analogy on the broadcast: of Benajad, when he's flying up the ice, his hair is kind of the modern day Mike Medano flapping in the wind. You see his hair going. <laughs> It's like he watching a, like a horse galloping in a field. Like with his the, hair is like Madonna's jersey. Yes, it, it's <laughs> flapping in the wind just as beautifully. Have you not been watching these like oh. these full end rushes? The one where you got a stick on the other night. So, well, that's I mean, the thing. They they've been playing this well. He hadn't done shit. He had two oh, goals yeah. going into that game, and then Fox being hurt. It's like it's kind of wild that they've. Like, if you if you would have told me Fox would have missed eight games, whatever it was, and Shesterkin for a little bit too. Yeah, Mr. Sirkin, and then Zabeniad would have two goals through 16 games. I'd have been like, oh, they could be in, they could be in, like, staring up at a wild card spot. And no, they, they've gotten go quick stepping up, and they've got just a deep team. And, and, like, Trocek deserves a lot of respect. Oh, my God. I think he's great in the room, too, just from knowing him and talking to guys. Like, people love, love him on their team. Like, he has everyone over on Thanksgiving. It's just, you know, a lot of teams do stuff like that, but when everything's going smooth, while it possibly could not have been because of injuries and stuff, you just look at this team, and, and I think it's a close bunch. And LaViolette deserves credit. He obviously has some ability to go to new teams and, like, break through to guys and get his message across and get guys to buy in because everywhere he goes, he has success right away. And so I think it's really no different in New York. But I guess they do give up a decent amount of chances. I just think with, like, the struggle of some flaw. of the that's what? the only flaw you can use against them right now is the high quality. Well, the only flaw, chances. and then and as we mentioned, Kako and Lafreniere, they both had to step up. Well, one of them stepped up. Kako's, he's just, I don't, I don't know. There's, there's, he gets nothing accomplished. <laughs> he's just not that good as of right now. And, and Rangers fans will argue that, like, you know, he'll 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 hold on to the pocket. Well, well dude, I kind of need to see some offense here. But you've had one of the young guns really step up and have a good start. And and that's been enough. And and this was also Wheeler hadn't done anything. He's kind of stepped it up a little bit. So it just seems like everything's kind of firing for them. But they'll go through their rough rough spell as every team does. And then you see how they figure it out after that. Like this this run won't continue. And that's no knock on them. It's just the league. And uh, as far as Fox being out in the power play still humming at that rate, I think a lot has to do with just Kreider net front. We talk about Pavelski. <clears throat> like who are some other names that we say are the, some of the best net front presence in the league. He's just so good around the blue paint, getting his stick on shit, whether it's screening the goalie. So they just, they got a great team. I think that they'll probably have to add a little bit to, to, to the bottom six in order to be a real contender. But as far as having to make any significant moves, whew, they look fucking great right now. How about, how about all the morons who, who called Peter Laviolette a retread when they hired him? Like he was some stiff who like bounced around. The guy won a fucking Stanley Cup, brought two other teams to a Stanley Cup. I'm like, he's and he's also retread. somewhat of a player's coach too. Yeah. So he's not I this mean, yeah. old grump. Yeah, exactly. I know, I'm, but like it, it, it is like people complain about like the old boys club, and then it, it, it was that, but it wasn't a guy who'd never accomplished anything getting another chance, right? Like it, it just yeah. seems like well, it's kind of the same argument, you know. I think of a retread as a guy who just, you know, kind of run of the mill, like who, who doesn't have a, a, a track record of winning. And, and that's not Peter Laviolette. You know, I mean, he had a track yeah. record of winning. Oh, that's a great should've... point. All right. And, uh, and Mika got little game notes bump, too, from Merle's uh, that that episode. Right. Right. She said better on Mika today. He scored two goals that day and uh, Rangers won the game. Yeah, Merle says that just about every show, though. Every, <laughs> every opportunity he can get to go get a yeah. Mika burger, he takes. Actually, Biz, I heard that um, 
over the summer, uh, Jonathan Quick uh, met with like a, a goalie expert to kind of refine his game a little bit. No I don't know shit. If you, if, yeah, right. Have you seen that picture right there from, from Vegas? <laughs> that was you partying with him where? Uh, so it's the only cup. The night, they, the night he won his third cup. Yeah. You, oh, you, you snuck into the room that was in the arena, correct? Well, no, that was... I did that, yeah, but this was uh, the second place I snuck in. Not to oh, be confused okay. with the third place. <laughs> I didn't really... I mean, I obviously made a text I got called to get in, but yeah, it's more fun to sneak in. No, I saw him standing there talking to George McPhee. Crick and wakes McPhee. up next to the cup instead of his <laughs> wife on the other side. It's oh. R.A. She's so <laughs> no, on his best friend is like uh, friends with one of my family members. Like I'm not gonna get into it; it's kind of boring. But so I, I mentioned that, and he, you know, so we ended up shooting the shit for a little bit. Like great guy, I was really happy for him. I've always Johnny's been a, quick a pizza. Guy. Yeah, good shit. Um, uh, now let's go back to the Truba train here. Okay, oh. let's talk about this situation here. Now, listen, I understand there's a common theme here. You got PNC uh, cowbell lady assaulting a police officer. You have another Rangers fan. Uh, in the subway, assaulting uh, another fan from a an opposing fan. team. Uh, yep. And then uh, it was a Lightning fan. Um, our thoughts and prayers go out to that Lightning fan who got sucker punched by a New York Rangers scumbag fan. There's a lot of them. <laughs> There's a lot of them online, everywhere. And then Truba tries to decapitate Frederick. There's a common theme here. And as much as I hate the New York Rangers... I don't think that he should have been suspended for that, and I, I'm okay with that small little fine. But when Frederick is joshing with him and he pushes his left shoulder, you could see that Truba ends up getting pushed back on the back of his blade, and you could tell that quick motion in order to catch his balance is what drives his stick up. He says, his quotes are, I got to be more careful with my stick. But uh, You think? When, yeah, but Wit, would you agree though? When Frederick kind of shoves his shoulder, you can clearly see him go to the back heel of his skate where he got jolted, and that's why his stick came up for balance. His stick—he already had his two hands on a stick. No, or do you I, think I disagree with you a little bit. I wow. think I didn't think it had anything to do with balance. I think Truba was holding his arm and he was trying to rip his arm away from him, and in the process of that, his stick swung around. And I think it's fucking crazy he didn't get suspended. Wow. Buddy, okay. are you kidding me? Have okay. control your own stick. You just slashed a guy in the temple full tilt three Samurai feet style. away from the ref. It, it, it wasn't even a penalty, was it? <laughs> it was really, The ref was right there, too. He didn't even blow the whistle. No, no call. Blow the whistle, no man. call. What the hell are we talking about, Biz? Balance on the back of your skates? This isn't you trying to break the puck out. This is a guy <laughs> tomahawk slashing somebody in the side of the head with his I, stick. I, no, I get that he looked. it looked like he tried to use his head as a pinata, but... I'm telling I you, I saw the I, new wait, angle thing. Wait, there you go. I was just going to bring that up. There's I another angle and it, it didn't change your opinion at all. I want you. All right. I a want touch, you and Grinelli and it you went from a five gamer to, to a two gamer in my mind. <laughs> Rewatch it. And I get what you're saying. Tell me that when Frederick, because he has his shoulder, he, he has Truba's left shoulder, and when he pushes it back quickly, that's when you could see Truba lose his balance, and his stick is already, already has two hands on it. So when he falls back, it automatically comes up to try to catch his balance, and he did. He caught his balance real quick. And listen, you're talking about a guy who hates the New York Rangers, and I want to, I, I want this guy to get, no, I don't really care if he gets sussed or not, but... I would usually be hammering on a guy if I hated it, but no. Watch it again. You're responsible for your stick, though, no? I mean... Yes, and that's why he got fined, but they obviously watched it over and over and deemed that he didn't do it on purpose, so then why should he get games for it? Okay, so so what if the stick knocked all his teeth out? Well, I mean, didn't that fucking happen to Hoffman and nothing happened off the draw? I don't, I don't remember that. I don't remember that. Off the face-off, I thought it happened in training camp where the guy kind of gave him a little bit of a, a cross-check. I don't know. I thought it was it just ended up being a, a No, a I'm, fine, not, I'm not saying you're ma you're making that up. I just I just can't remember. I, just, I think it was A.J. I, Greer gave him a little cross-check to the face. Mike Greer lost I think it's just the whole, the whole visual of like a slash to the side of the head. Granted, you were trying to pull your arm away, but like, I don't know, drop the right hand from your stick to pull your arm away. It's like, I already mentioned, you're in charge of your stick. So, okay, and actually, you know what? If you don't want to suspend him, make the fine more than five Gs, bro. He's spending five Gs. Like, what is it? It's five Gs to him. What does he make? Seven? 
He doesn't give a white, fuck. Man, the, a the, 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 if they want to, if they want to start doing like no suspension, but you get the maximum fine, make the maximum fine twenty five grand or something like five grand. I, I actually cares. said that to Jeff today. I said bump it up to where it's a little bit more of a pee pee whack. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask: Is that something that's negotiated by the union in the league, or the, that the league makes those rules? I was curious. I don't about know. That. I went to one NHLPA meeting in the city <laughs> and <laughs> buckled the whole time with yeah, my buddies, same. and like never same. even remember uh, what was said. I'm like, well, what's I, our pretty impact? Oh, I went from 96 <laughs> to 102. Perfect. No, I was thinking because if players did have a say in it, then like I think guys don't you don't want, want health it. insurance? Nah, I'm good. Just make <laughs> no, sure good. the cash is in the per diem impact. last. That don't plan. These are these braces. Um, and, and people probably think I'm trolling with my opinion, but neither of you have watched the video again to see what I'm talking about. I, know, I, 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 I watched times. the Russo video, the one Russo okay. put out there. Yeah. I, was, I would I, be fine with one game. I'm kind of with you, Biz. I think it's kind of a nothing burger, but one game I'd be happy with. Hey, hey, that throw him in prison with PNC lady in the, in the subway sucker puncher. I don't Frederick's care. tough as shit. When they play again, he's going on my bet. Yeah. He, hey, actually. I don't know, man. Truba's oh, a Truba, tough fucker. Truba's, yeah, he's not soft either. And the thing about Truba is... Like what a what a um amazing thing to have every fan base hate you but your own. Yep. And also, <laughs> he was horrific at the beginning of last year. Horrible. He's been a beast. He's been an absolute. I think horse. the whole team was shit, and that's when he ended up doing the helmet toss. Yeah, ever since yes. the helmet toss, he's been unbe unbelievable. I know, but but I'm saying like we talk about this a lot, but when you still have the guy and the guys out there in the league that still will run you over, like. Fans may hate him, but buddy, everyone on the other team knows when he's on the ice, and he still manages to light people up. I think Pasha still has a concussion from when Meyer got drilled <laughs> in Game Seven. Um, so, would you say a modern day Scott Stevens? He's got the Scott Stevens Award right now, where he will lay the guy out. That should be that should be kind of I don't know. Should they introduce that award? Like the guy no, who's like illegal a introduce an award for hitting. They're like, no, they're, like a they'll give another lady bang out before they uh, give this. No, Stevens like a defensive award. defenseman because I feel like it always goes to 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 like points now. Although we're we'll get to the Norris talk later, but I don't know, just a top of mind stupid thought. Thanks a lot for bringing it up, Whit. All right, before we go any further, here's a few words from my friends at Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all these sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. Listen, next year, these boys are coming back to America, the Rolling Stones. Everybody, the mother's going to want to see them. You're going to use Game Time. It's so simple. Couple taps, couple pups, boom. Last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, whatever. It's easy to find and buy tickets for every event in your area. And if you're not a concert person, sports, shows, theater, whatever, you can find it anywhere. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last-minute seats. Find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and a whole bunch more. With zone deals, you pick the section, Game Time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. Woo! And the Game Time guarantee means you always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section in a row for less, Game time will credit you 110% of the difference, not 100, 110%. All right, all right. I got I to gotta jump in here because oh. this Saturday I found out, this past Saturday I found out that my little brother was in New York City. Not every day you find out your little brother's just in New York City. <laughs> it's, it's 10 a.m. I'm like, hey, wait, the Bruins are in town today. Let's check out game time. Let's see Bye. if we can get any tickets for a cheap price. What do we do? We grabbed some tickets. I think they were under 300 bucks to get four or five tickets to go into MSG. We had an absolute blast, and it was all because of the game time app. World's most famous arena, man. You can't beat it. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code CHICKLETS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CHICKLETS for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. The local boys, gee, the Bruins, uh, they finally lost two games in a row, but they're still tied with the Rangers for the most points in the, uh, in the league right now. Uh, they have arguably the best goaltending tandem. Uh, Lena Selmark, 7-2-1 with a 9-8 
918 save percentage, uh, 258 goals against. Swayman, 712, 927 save percentage, 228 goals against, uh, one shutout. And Biz, I know you were asking about uh, teammates uh, winning the Vesna, uh, going back to, to the old school. And I, I did look it up for you. In uh, 1938 and 1939, Tiny Thompson and Frankie Brimzik each won it for the Bruins. However, they weren't teammates uh, in that second year. So the Bruins did win okay. it in that, those two Fair. years way back in the day, way, way back in the day. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this, uh, this team, uh, I think they're due for a hiccup. I think they've been kind of playing over their heads a little bit, a little over their skis, as Whit would say. I wouldn't be surprised if they have a little bit of stumble coming up in the next few weeks or so. Well, I mean, also because the goaltending's been so good. Like, I watched that game. They had the rematch of uh, the, well, this is the second time they played Florida and Boston. So this is actually the, the second game after um, the McAvoy hit on Oliver ekman Larson. It was a chippy game, Chippy too. as fuck, a- yeah. They were awesome going at regular him. season game. I mean, you guys watch it in that first period. Omar was on his head. Like, I mean, there was probably about five 10 bell saves that he had to make in order to keep the minute. And then all of a sudden, you know, frustration sets in and then Boston ends up figuring out a way to win. So I would say that if you're talking about the Boston Bruins right now, a lot of what they're, they've been able to accomplish up to this point has to do with goaltending. And I mean, I, I don't even know when the last time that the uh, a tandem has won the Jennings Trophy back-to-back. Is that the one with the best save percentage? No, because that's it, uh, goals against. Uh, sometimes or, one or, guy or wins it, sometimes goals against, two wins excuse it. Me. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I mean, they're, they're, they seem to be on top right now for that, unless we're going over the guys in Vegas. But overall, this one-two punch is really working for them. And, I mean, Swayman's numbers, I believe, are even a little bit better. But th- what's his name? Um Montgomery was asked about this and he said, you know, if you're going up to playoffs, like, what are you going to do? And he said, he goes, oh, we would just keep with the same system, which I thought was odd to answer considering like you don't really have to talk about that far in advance. And last year, and considering last year, right. <laughs> considering the way that it was, I, I believe it was fumbled last year, but this is, this is kind of the new wave of getting it done in the NHL, or at least one way of the two goalie system. And it has fucking been really working for this Boston Bruins team. So credit to management because the amount of money they're spending on goaltending based on production is, is really out of this world. And wait, I'll send it over to you. Like, Pavel Zaka has been fucking unbelievable. Another Pasha heart take. Oh, He's telling me how horrible he is. We don't <laughs> want him. He stinks. I'm like, buddy, I don't know. This guy's pretty legit out there. And I didn't necessarily know if he could be a true first line center. He's got 16 points in 19 games, but if he can, if he finishes the year with 65 points and he's as good defensively as he's been, that's a hell of a player. Gee, I, I know you wanted to say something. Go ahead. I was just going to say that um, Patrick Waugh and uh, Brian Hayward, they won the Jennings Trophy in 1987, 1988, and 1989. Yeah, you mean Patrick Waugh did? How many games did he play each year? Go look at that. Well, each goalie has to play at least 25 games in order to... uh, no be shit. A winner of the okay. Challenge. Yeah. 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 Because Martin Brodeur also won it in 03 and 04, and it was just his name on the list. No other backup goalie. Yeah. Because he was playing fucking 69 games a year or whatever it was. Back Wait. Then. So you're saying that an individual goalie can also win the Jennings trophy if your mm-hmm. partner doesn't play oh, yeah. enough games? Yep. Yep. Okay. Exactly, so yeah. in, e- I didn't in, know either, that. in either of those years where Patrick Waugh Wa won it, was, he, was it just his name on it or did the other yep. guy play? Well, yeah, so no, he, it, it, in in from eighty seven to eighty nine, it was both names, and then Patrick Waugh won it again in two thousand two by himself. Martin Brodeur won it by himself in 03 and 04. Mika Kippersoff won it by himself in two thousand six, two thousand ten. Brodeur won it by himself, and even we mentioned Jonathan Quick. Jonathan Quick's won it twice by himself as well in twenty four. Has there ever been a time where the goalie has won that individually and then also not won the Vesna? That would probably be impossible. If you're winning that trophy well, on your own. Well, he just said Quicks won it twice. Does Quick have two Vesnas? He didn't win it in the 2018, I'm pretty sure. He didn't. Oh, won so it. there was you it go, sh- Wow. Was yeah. it was it Lundquist that year? 2018 was uh, 27. 2018 was Pekka Rene. 2018, 2019 was Andre Vasilevsky. And also, it's only goals against. I mean, I think save percentage is probably a, a more relevant stat when it comes to goalies. So I, I agree. I, think, I, yeah, almost, yeah. I almost I nodded to Biz when he asked if save percentage was the Jennings which obviously shows I don't know anything. But in my mind, that's what it should be because goals against, that has so much to do with the team as opposed to like save percentage is a pretty equal like test to the entire league. I guess it would be unfair to people. I think who- they're both. I think they're both relative because it's like, where are you? Where are the shots coming from? How dangerous are the shots, right? I think they should. I think they should factor in both stats. 
and 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 also maybe even the eye test, kind of a kind oh, of a little a, eye test action. Yeah, okay. yeah, a little eye test. Um, eye test on the Bruins for me is exactly what Ra said that they're they're kind of due for a little of this, and and I guess the worry would be that. The two, basically, the only two bad games that Swayman and Allmark have had were Detroit and the Rangers this past week when they when they got you know they got spanked both games. So it's like, all right, well, we have these two amazing goalies, but if they're not playing great, like, are we in a little bit of trouble? Like, I've seen a lot more like passes through the offensive zone, you know, trying to get the goalie moving side to side that are working against the Bruins just re- recently. But I don't know. I I just think. You just keep talking about the culture. Pasternak right up there for MVP oh if we're talking God. about MVPs. Oh. That guy, watching him skate around and then always Julia. create these angles for himself, it's it's amazing to watch. But McAvoy's Montgomery, been incredible as well. Montgomery is a great coach, man. Like That speech he gave to those guys in Florida about oh, the dad's so trip. And, and why don't you just play it quick, G? All right, boys. You know, I... I've been watching you guys hang out with your dads, and I gotta be honest, I'm a little bit jealous. You know, my dad passed away nine years ago, and what an opportunity for you guys, you know? And whether your dad's in heaven, right? Linus, or whether he's here with us, or Louts, whether he's watching at home on your sofa, they gave us the names we wear on the back, and they're proud of you guys, as they should be, right? Now, we're all proud to wear that B in front of us. What my dad expected was second and third effort every fucking night. Let's have second and third effort tonight and see where we are at the end of the 60s. All right? Starters, Forby, you and Chatty. We got Zach as line. Linus, you're in this. Just talking about, like, these are the guys who gave you the name on the back of your jersey, and, and there's some of us who can't have our dads here. Like, just, I, I was welling up with tears. I was like, holy shit, right before the game to have a speech like that, he's going over and giving guys knocks. I think Lauko's, Lauko's dad wasn't there. So it's just, um, I, I, I think it's a team that will probably go through a bit of a bump here or at some point, but... Uh, it's hard to it's hard to say they're not Stanley Cup contenders because of the goalies and the D. And going back to last year when they didn't go back at, and they they rotated all year, and then Ra famously was correct, put Swayman in after Game Four, and they game didn't two. Game Two. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it, it, it is crazy to me to imagine though a playoff series starting and switching goalies every game. Like I. I know if you're doing that, and he says they'll we'll just do it. Now it's November. We're talking about the playoffs, but I think it would be bizarre if you win a game, first game of the playoffs, and just boom, go to the next guy, and then he loses while the next guy's going back in. What if he wins again? It's like I don't, I just don't know how long that could last in the playoffs. I guess we'll find out. Well, I mean, Minnesota tried to do it last year because Gustafson he went into overtime I think it was two overtimes in the first round well he played stellar they won the game and the next game they went to flower so it's just like I think that I agree with you and that's why I was surprised that he already he I guess he answered the question the way he did where I would have said well you know right now we're just kind of focusing on right now and like we'll make that decision down the road because one guy could be playing way better than the other guy but either way, huge reason is goaltending Zaka has been incredible uh that the young kid the Patra has slowed down offensively. Yeah, but nineteen-year-old rookie, right, buddy? But because he's so reliable on the other side of the puck, they can he can stay in the lineup. And I think that I think there was probably a, a lot to do like with with Marchand being named captain and him being like boys, like you know we got a lot left to prove and a lot left on the bone here after the way we went out last year. So him having a chip on his shoulder and and kind of leading that group after the way things ended with Bergeron is probably a, a big reason for that as well. I think that, I think that like, you, would you guys say easily Marshawn Hall of Famer? Yes, absolutely. I would say easily. He, I think that you ask any person in hockey. You'd give everyone a Hall of Fame though. So when you say no, it, like, I gotta no, no, go no, start listen, looking. He, it is, okay, look, first of all, look at his playoff he's, he's numbers. Not, I don't think he's close right now, man. I, I, how it works is he has... He's been, I think you asked. I think of him as a Hall of Famer. I'm just telling you, like, he's got 967 games. He's got 881 points. His playoff numbers are great, but Hall of Fame, buddy, I know you'd have uh, anyone in there. It's just, it's tougher than you think, bud. All right. I just, yeah, all right. But but I know what you're saying. Like, he. I I would say that he's been a top eight winger for. Like any, if you ask anybody, like who do you want, you know, going into playoffs overall, 
as far and, and also his point production, I would say that he's been a top eight winger for a, a 10 year period. Oh, no doubt about that. Yeah. I just like that's a long period of time to sustain dominance. If he I mean, gets how in the long Hall of Fame, I will not be surprised. Put it what were, I'll, what were I'll, Cam I'll Neely's it. numbers? That's I mean, different. I'm kind of cherry picking here, but I, ju I just typed in Martian Hall of Fame on Twitter and this came up. After two points tonight, Brad Martian has 280 points in his 220 game career since the start of his three, uh, 30 year old season, 1.27 per game. There are two players with more points per game and at least 220 games played in their 30s Wayne Gretzky at 1.69 and Mario Lemieux at 1.62. Wow. What a fucking stat That's funny. That yeah, he, his his better, sustained like, dominance is. He's a fine wine. And He's last nice thing on the Bruins, um, Charlie Coyle, nine goals. His career high is 21. So that that's a, you know, for him to get that role, he's playing with Frederick and who else does he play with? Morgan Is it Morgan Geeky? Yeah, Geeky. Uh, yes, Geeky. Kind of yeah, it's been a great line. Around. So Bruins are a little slow uh, uh, over the weekend, but they should be fine. Beecher's been awesome. Beecher, the fourth line center, yeah. he only has four points, but every time he's out there, he's making something happen, whether he's throwing his body around, getting his scrum out front. I've loved what I've seen from this kid. So that first game in Florida was the dad's trip for the Boston Bruins, and Louis DeBrusque was there, and uh, Jake surpassed him. 402 games played. Louis had 401. So he got to do that on the dad's trip and he scored a goal. So it was a pretty cool moment. And they both got interviewed together after the game. So I, I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, yeah, that's got to get would... going, though. Yep. He's got to get going. Yep. Uh, but just to answer your question, uh, Cam Neely in the playoffs, he had uh, 57 goals, 32 assists, and 93 games. So just under a uh, point per game in, in his career. Uh, 694 points uh, in 726 games. Of course, he scored Very 50 similar. goals. 50 goals in 44 games. Only one guy beat him in that category. Would that, you course, say from a power forward, from a power forward standpoint, that Cam Neely dominated for how what length period of time? Would you uh, say he was one of the best in for eight yeah, years. Yeah, I mean, well, they never used the phrase power forward wasn't a thing until Cam Neely came along. Granted, guys could score and fight, but nobody combined the two uh, like him. I mean, he was a you fifty don't think goal scorer. Goldie Howe was a power forward. They didn't, but they, uh, you, you didn't hear that phrase. Is what I'm. So I'm not saying he wasn't a power forward. I'm saying, but they didn't call people really a power forward. You didn't really hear it until like Neely came along. I'm not. I'm not making him up. I know I'm a fucking huge fan of his, but he was the like you know the the first guy they really called one. And it's not just about scoring, man. It was, it was fifty goals. He scored fifty goals. And beat the I fuck look out at of Cam Neely and Lindros in the Hall of Fame. Pretty similar that their careers were cut short because of injury, but. At their peak, they were so much like better than anyone else. Uh, not yeah. than anyone else, but they were so dominant that like that got them into the Hall of Fame. W whereas obviously, there's guys with longer careers and more points that that will will never get in. It's just about how dominant they were in their era before the injuries took over. Did you ever play Pogs? No, I wasn't a nerd. G probably did. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, I, never, I don't even know what pucks are. Oh, I actually have no idea. I think it's are. those little like bottle cap yeah. things. Yeah, you, you yeah. flip them over with the hammer. So I used to collect the NHL pogs, and I I got in a pack of Lindros pog, and that was like when he was like one of his top years, and it was an eight dollar pog. I, I'll never forget. I used to get him at this place called K's Variety, I, and then and then later on to do magic cards for a little bit, and then yeah, that kind of ended. I so I guess in, uh, between that, the Jenko jeans and the pogs, like I was a full fledged uh, fucking loser, still am. <laughs> um, I remember uh, on Pittsburgh in Dallas, it was actually a dad's trip. We played Dallas, then we played the Coyotes. And Lindros, I've told this before, Lindros had a like a wide open net, and I came like from behind as he was just about to tap it in on the goal line, lifted his stick up and cleared it. And Terry, and like the next day, like showed the video. He's like, "Fucking right, way. That's fucking strength. That's how to be strong in front of the net." That's Eric Lindros. I'm like, "Thanks, thanks." I was so happy. And then <laughs> I'm, I'm, not even, the gonna, big I'm not even gonna say who said it. He came up to me. He's like. That wasn't exactly the Flyers, Eric Lindros. You did that too. Bro. <laughs> he would have smashed your head in, into the into the crossbar and then buried the, the goal if he was on the Flyers and you tried that shit. You I can't said, say right, who enough. said that? No, no, no. Okay. I don't want anyone out there maybe dogging the Dallas Stars Lindros, right? Yeah. yeah. It was still Lindros <laughs> in my mind, though. I lifted his stick up. Boop. Out muscled. Oh, <laughs> hey, next time you see the Big Easy, maybe at the All-Star game in Toronto, I'll be like, hey, remember that time I out muscled you? Like, that one, Big Easy. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, the Big Easy. I love it. Uh, there's another team with a, a hell of a, a tandem. The Vegas Golden Knights. 
They haven't skipped a beat since winning the Stanley Cup, and uh, they got the two-headed monster back. I mean, I know they had uh, Mark Andre Fleury and Robin Leonard a couple of years ago, but Aiden Hill nine two and one in twelve starts, a one nine seven goals against nine three two save percentage, two shutouts. He leads the league in the first two categories. Uh, Logan Thompson half that uh, injury, he got back this year five three and one in nine starts. 232 and 922. These guys are unreal, man. And Logan wasn't even drafted. Aiden Hill uh, drafted a few years back. This is a fucking great story. These two goalies, they weren't probably the most uh, heavily recruited guys, but t- t- chugging along right now, Vegas. Big I guy. was talking about the Bargoon for Gustafson in, in uh, New York, 850. I think that uh, Logan Thompson signed a three year deal at 750. So between him and Aiden Hill, you have this unbelievable package at just under five million, I believe, or maybe maybe it's a little over. Like that to get that type of production at that number, it's much like the Boston Bruins, man, and that's why they're a fucking top dog. I mean, we could talk about their strength down the middle. We could talk about the fact that they didn't lose many guys, how they roll four lines, how they have an unbelievable three pairings. Although they have battled a little bit of injury on the back end, but. The, the thing that you need to talk most about these top dog teams is the goaltending. It's a common theme. New York, Boston, and then, of course, uh, the, the Vegas Golden Knights. And I think that we've talked enough about them, but I just figured since we were talking about the goaltending, the goaltending topic, these guys had to be mentioned. And if I'm not mistaken, Logan Thompson is 750 this year, and then they also have him next year. He correct. was an all-star last year. That's right? correct. This yes. kind of all yep. happened by accident with Aiden Hill. And that, that whole division, I mean, the top three teams at the division right now, go over to Cam Talbot, L.A. I mean, he's been playing out of his mind. I know he struggled a little bit last year. Uh, another guy lighting up 10-3-1, and one, uh, 13 stats, 202 goals against, 9 save percentage and a shutout. I mean, he's playing out of his mind right now with that squad. What, what, you've been, L.A. You much, is what, sick. Sick. That's like, my squad. So what are they? I think they're one point back at division lead with, is it two games in hand or one? I think they're 13-3-3 three and three right now. They've only lost three games in regulation. Uh, I think that uh, so Vegas has the edge goaltending. Well, Talbot's been great. But if you're looking on paper, I think you take the two Vegas goalies over over L.A.'s. After that, those teams, it's like looking. It's like the Spider-Man meme. Like they just remind me of each other a lot. They they just have big, strong forwards. I guess the Vegas D would be a little bit bigger. um, But just like how they play team defense and how every single line plays the exact same way every night and that there's never going to be these... Like, those two teams, I'd be very surprised if they went on, like, a six- or seven-game losing streak because they just, like, bring it every night. There's no nights off. And now, obviously, you're going to lose some close games here and there. But that th- th- those two teams playing against each other, first off, they're awesome games. And second of all, if they played in the playoffs... It, it, I, I couldn't imagine it not going seven because it's just the same exact lineup coming at each other. And and the depth on, on forward for me is the big thing. So like L.A., like Fiala the other night, he scored two beauties. I think like you see the locker room after. seems like they're awesome, obviously oh, yeah. a, a, a great group. What you say about like every winning team is that they're probably really close. So I guess I'm an idiot for saying that. I don't know. I just like there's no weaknesses on these teams. And then you got you got guys like chipping in that you didn't know what they were going to bring. Byfield this year. I don't know. Was he going to make a step up? Yup. <laughs> so now it's like even they're able to even get through some yep. injuries. I mean, is Arvidsson even playing yet? Uh, I don't believe he has been playing. So That's like they're going to add that fucking water yeah. bug back to this lineup. They're, they're deep. They're deep. If I was an Oilers fan, I'd be really scared of them. So considering that you probably look at uh, L.A. and Vegas as the top two teams, I agree with you. I'd give slight advantage in, in net because they have two guys. I would say slight advantage advantage on D, but I would probably say up front you have to say they're pretty even. Because you you look at that fourth line for Vegas. That's the only thing that, that L.A. doesn't have. They don't have a fourth line like Vegas. And as far as the other three lines, it's like, fuck, you got Wild Bill. You got Chandler Stevenson, who's going to get fucking paid this offseason. And then Jack Eichel, who's been fucking lights out, too. So um, did you guys see that game where he fumble fucked the, the, the OT goal? No. <laughs> oh, it was, it was pretty funny. We had him on post game. I go, yeah, you look like you went to my hockey school with those fucking mitts. He like fucked it up twice, but somehow it ended up in the back of the net. And uh, Gave the sandbagger a nice little yep. shout out too. He yeah. said he learned it from you at the sandbagger. Yeah, he said he learned it from me at the bagger. So a nice little plug from Jackie boy there. Stanley Cup track being Dak Eichel. Um, but I didn't really have much else to talk about as far as the Kings and, and Golden Knights, just more kind of pumping the top team's tires. They just keep chugging along, man. They just keep chugging along. And Vegas has had a little bit of a regression. I'm sorry, Vancouver. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think that was to be expected, though. 
they, I mean, they have, but they're still they're still right there. They're only two points behind Vegas. Uh, Thatcher Demko, nice bounce back here for him. We had him on the show a couple of years ago. Great kid. Uh, some funny stories from his time in Utica, I believe it was. Uh, 10 and 5 with a 2.18 goals against 9.25 save percentage. Already has two shutouts. Uh, you mentioned they come back to earth a little bit with, but uh, talking, not, not shy about uh, health bombing these guys, you were saying, Biz. Like, if guys aren't going, like, he has no, no problem. Kuzumenko, two, two straight games. And right now, so let's talk about Vancouver, and we're going to get to a bigger overall picture uh, c- coming right up here with Quinn Hughes and Kale McCarr. But as far as their team's concerned, uh, even when when dealing with injury, they've been able to slot guys in who have contributed. Uh, I like even even going back to the game the other night. I think it was against the Kraken. They won five one or five two, and four of the goals were secondary scoring. This Hoglander, did you see that hit he put on Tanev? Buddy, the ref helped him off the ice. I know. You, you don't like to see Turbo go down like that, but Tanev is, is is also built like a cigarette machine, one of the best hitters in the National Hockey League. Very, very stocky on his feet. And this Hoglander, a bunch of Canucks fans underneath, they're pretty ruthless on, online. They said, no. look out for the Hoglander train. And apparently he's been trucking guys ever since he stepped in the league. But right now he's also bringing that offense. One other guy the Leafs let go, that Lafferty, I fucking love him. Up and down the wing, big, strong body that Joshua is now coming into his own a little bit. So for me, for the Vancouver Canucks, it's been the talk of of, of JT Miller, uh, uh, Pedersen, Brock Besser, all the big dogs, Thatcher Demko, who I texted you the one night with, like for how big he is, how violently he can go post to post, like how he can push off and how athletic he is. It's, it's, it's almost ungodly. I actually even texted uh, Brian Boucher. I go, Hey, like what's the deal with this guy? Like should goalies this big be moving like that? And he goes, man, it, it, it defies science. Really? It's very, Oh, he, I'll, I'll get you the text. I'll, I'll toss the, he is the, a tank. I think the game, I think the game we were watching might've been St. Louis biz. I remember we were texting. It was like late night on the East coast and he was kicking and he has been all year. Um, a little, a little worry for the Canucks fans is like, do you almost wish Heronic was playing like not this well? This guy's a free agent. You mean, dude. you mean Devon Taves? <laughs> he's gonna he's get t- like he's Devon, Devon Taves. Taves money. But you know, how, you know how much money a right-handed defenseman who's playing the way he's playing is gonna command come free agency. I, think I was he reading takes something a, like seven point two to seven point seven a year seven, on a long deal. Seven six is what Devon Taves got. I don't think he should make what Devon Taves got. No. I think that they should sign him. Good. I think that I think that he'll they should sign him long term, give him term, and try to get him in like the six and a half range. Oh, is he gonna laugh at him? But 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 buddy, but but, here's the thing though. You don't think Devon Taves could have got more money? You don't think Devon Taves said I get to play next to Kale McCarr for the next fucking four or five years? Easy. (laughs) Just bring your lunch pail to work and all these flat passes are coming over. What I'm saying is like Devon Taves, like he, he Devon Taves is a good comparable and Devon Taves probably took a little less to stay there but correct like, you're now you're now asking you're saying Heronic should take what a million less a year than Taves well, yeah because he, he also isn't Devon he's not Devon Taves he hasn't he hasn't sustained it as long as Devon Taves has sustained it and he also hasn't won a, a Stanley Cup there's there's way more intangibles that should factor into to getting a long-term deal at what Devon Taves got now just quickly going back to that Bush text I said uh so, somewhere when I texted you I go hope you're well bud I had a goalie question that Thatcher Demko is big but his post to post slides are nuts almost violent is he a freak is he the real deal is his style what got him injured? Now, sometimes because you're you're so violent with your your activity and athleticism that it can lead to groin problems. Well, this is was his response. Have you seen his post to post hip flexion? Covers both posts. I've never seen that in my life. It's unthinkable. In some ways, it's crazy as how fast McDavid is. I'm a huge fan. I'm not sure if that's what his injury issues were, to be honest. As you know, if you're hurt, you're useless. So I think many just wrote him off. If if he was on the East, then he'd be a, a big deal, in my opinion. So not being talked about enough. And that's some high praise from Bush and a great breakdown. So um, that's your Demko, baby. Probably in the top three for the Vesna or oh, maybe uh, top I hope so. five. I got a lot okay. of dough on him. I hope so. <laughs> okay. Well, there you uh, go, R.A. So, fucking right. <laughs> um, great secondary scoring. They're getting conscious. And you know who the biggest genius of them all is with uh, with this Vancouver situation? Is Akalini. 
Everybody oh. was saying sell, 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 and he said fuck that, and he got the right oh, guy. Just for give the him a five game lose streak, and they'll be probably screaming sell, nah, sell, sell. Right again. now he's fucking, he's getting the billionaires cut, baby. <laughs> <laughs> right um, now he's turning the heat off in a couple apartment complexes he owns. So suck it, renters. <laughs> <laughs> easy pump the brakes here so the <laughs> oh, main shit. topic of conversation since we're talking about the top dogs and we're talking about vancouver and of course we're going to talk about colorado and this should probably be front and center as far as conversations the fact that two defensemen who are going for the norris right now it's a two horse race you kind of wrote Makar off about what eight days ago and he's been <laughs> hey, hold on. What was, what was, i saw your guys outline what was my quote what was my quote Oh, I said, I said between McCarr and Quinn Hughes, and you're like, oh, God, Hughes has got it, landslide, and also nominee for the heart. I would say that they're both, I would say if anything, slight edge to McCarr right now for the Norris, and I would put them both in the heart conversation. And the reason I say that is these are defensemen that are insanely driving traffic. They're out there for more time than any other forward. They're playing like 25, 26, 27 minutes every night. And both of them are very competent defensively. And if anything, more so to Makar. So both of them, in my opinion, should be top five for the heart conversation right now. And we haven't seen a Norris race heat up this quick in probably ever. When's the last time that two defensemen have been in this type of race and have each hit 100 points, Ari? Is there even an, an, a stat for that? Uh, yeah, no, there's never been a season where two guys have hit a two defensemen, I should say, uh, hit a hundred points. That, that's never happened ever in the history of the NHL. Nope. Uh, six different defensemen have scored a hundred points in a season, but there were never two in one season. Uh, or has the most. He had uh, 37 goals, 102 assists for 139 points in 78 games. You know what his plus minus was? 124. Was like, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> 124 shit. is plus minus. But it happened 15 times in total, but it never happened with two guys in the same season. Or did it six times. Coffee did it five. And then McInnes, Leach, Potvin, and Carlson all did it once. So What are they had each at a point per game right now? Because if they stay healthy with this type of production, and if you have those numbers ever, and Whit, I don't mean the shit on you. I think we were in Newport. And that's when you made the comment. And I think. Oh, yeah. Since and then Makar had 10 points in the next two games. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have the numbers but, already? But what Makar's done? I never, like, put it this way. If, if, if you could start a team, I think every GM's taken Makar. But that's like saying, like, and obviously they're not the same type players. I'm not comparing them. But that's like when Lidstrom was winning all his Norris's, like, oh, I get pronger. Like, it, 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 that's how good Hughes has been. It, and I actually think, as of right now, I would give Hughes the Norris. Ah. I think he's, I think he's playing more. He has more points. Like I don't know. Like I, I don't think at the end of the year it may look like that. But but right now I think Hughes is the Norris Trophy winner. Makar is just, I don't know. I would I would even say yeah, carrying the puck. He's more impressive. But Hughes skating when he was wheeling around the other night and then sniped that top right far side well, shot. I, I I don't know. They're, I'd have they're to like disagree. similar in a sense, but Makar's bigger. Throws bigger hits. So if you talk about like who's got a better shot, I think mccarr has got a more lethal shot in my opinion. Who's a better playmaker? I think they're both elite Equal playmakers. You, you, you can't give one the edge on that. Uh, skating, you have to give to McCarr. Defensively. I don't know not, if that's that one is that sure, dude. Listen, I Quinn can close and he can move out there. He's like a little water bug, but we're talking sheer skating, edge like work. power? I, I mean... <laughs> I, okay, okay. I'm just thinking it. it's it's similar to the to playmaking. Like that's how good Hughes is on his feet. Okay, so okay, fine. Let's say even there. You're not saying McCarr's better, or, or sorry, you're not saying Quinn Hughes no. is better. No, but Def I'm saying he's kind of there with them. Def defensively, full spectrum as far as uh, boxing guys out net front, closing on guys and gapping up in the neutral zone, uh, closing them in, and separating them from the puck in the defensive zone. I think from an overall standpoint here, we're not shitting on Quinn Hughes here. He's incredible at it too, but McCarr's better. Well, we're comparing him to what a guy who will go down as like a top ten defenseman ever if his continue if you know, God willing he has his health and everything, like he's a freak of nature. So even having the comparison and even right now, like being in the race with him is is enough said for Quinn Hughes. But Quinn Hughes' numbers and like the way he controls the play, it is amazing to watch. And, and, and on the All power right. play, like I, their power play is so lethal. He's just moving around out there. How Niedermeyer used to, he can be anywhere on the ice in the offensive zone. 
But yeah, McCarr also kills. You remember the hit he threw on Jordan Stahl? Stahl's he's like 230. So yes, McCarr overall is a better player, but it's the fact he's that close to him, I think is very impressive. So we might disagree on who we have in the lead right now. That's okay. They're both elite, right? Um, the What was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, but we can both agree on the fact that should they both be in the heart conversation? Um, I, I, would, I would say take one of them, but I just, with what we've seen from Kucherov and what we've seen from Pasta, and, and it's, it's like I, I, I'm not throwing those two in the heart. If we're talking tar- top three, if we're talking finalists right now, all right. Six months away. All right. Well, then I guess we can agree on this is the most intense Norris race we've I seen. I mean, the f- yes. maybe ever. The fact that, that w- the fact that a defenseman hasn't won the the heart since two thousand when Prongs did is mm-hmm. pretty wild to me. I mean, I I guess you just look at the most points and and you look at the domination from the forward unit and the the players at forward and you just kind of give it to one of them, but. I mean, I, I, if McCarr wins an MVP at some point, I won't be surprised at all. If there's a year to do it, it's probably this year with McDavid having a bit of a, a down year. Oh, People need to start oh, oh, talking oh, about oh. Cooch. Fucking oh, Cooch draws 100, 100 points the other night. Nobody yeah. says a word. He's going he's gonna to stroke and come in, in a little bit. Uh, Biz, I know you had asked about, uh, has there ever been occasions where two defensemen were nominated for the hot? Uh, it's been quite a while, but it actually happened uh, three times back in the 30s. Uh, Eddie Shore and King Clancy were finalists, but they uh, they lost to Howie Morenz. Uh, that was Clancy. in 19, 19, 1931. Uh, 1934, Lionel Conacher and uh, King Clancy were nominated, but they lost to uh, Aurel Joliet, I think he was that old Canadian guy. Remember when he when he comes skating around and, and he and he kept falling, but he kept getting back up and skating. But do you remember that video? Wit? He was no, like, that oh, was you at Fenway Park. <laughs> 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 I didn't get back up though. Uh, and uh, the other one, uh, Eddie Shaw won it in uh, thirty five, and uh, Ot, I said Ot Coulter was a finalist as well. Uh, like you said, with the last uh, D to even be a finalist was was Pronga, and he won it. Uh, let's see, Bobby Orr won it uh, three times, the hot trophy, uh, three years in a row. It's, but it's been a while, man. It's, I think once they kind of come out with the, the Norris, that was kind of sort of like the MVP for defensemen, I, I think it kind of So say. Vegas odds has the, have these two guys like far and away running away with it. It's either one of them who's who's favored to win it. Yeah. <clears throat> but I think we can just, you know, debating aside, we like to talk shop. Like we're witnessing true greatness here from two great defensemen, and it's it's the new wave, baby. It's the new wave. What are the odds right now, live? Uh uh, Quinn, uh, he's the chalk right now, plus 180. Uh, Makah's right behind him at plus 250. Uh, then you have Darlene at 12 to 1, uh, Heiskanen at 12 to 1, Fox 20, uh, Theodore 22, McAvoy 22, Hedman 25, uh, Bouchard 35, Dougie Hamilton 40. Uh, but how about this? Uh, with Macau was the preseason favorite at plus 175. Quinn Hughes was 16 to 1. Fucking 16 to 1 for so, what he's doing so right now. So why wouldn't scene. you? So why wouldn't you, RA, throw 10 G's on Makar? Five G's on, or maybe op whatever. Ten G's on one guy, five G's on the other, and then you're. Is that guaranteeing a profit or no? Don't hurt yourself. No, you with. throw the bigger. You throw the bigger money on Macar. You think you know one of these two guys is going to get it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, you also probably want to turn it back I think and they call it a hedge. Quinn was sixteen to one. <laughs> I, I know. Uh, yeah, but, I think yeah, uh, you, you could. You could take the 16 to 1 early and then be laughing at me. I mean, I just hope that we get a, a Western Conference final with uh, Vancouver uh, in Colorado at some point, just to have those those two guys going against yeah. each other for the right to go to the Stanley Cup. I mean, Cup. it, c- it could happen. Shit. I mean, fuck, if, especially if Vegas and LA meet, just beat the fucking wheels off each other. Imagine that series, how heavy that series is going to be. Oh, my God. Lower the cage. Biz, uh, I'm surprised you didn't mention when we were talking Vancouver. Uh, uh, talk it with the, not Harry Knuckles, Harry Knuckles. <laughs> you mean Prince Harry fist, Knuckles. He fist bumped the fucking, how funny is that though? I mean, I, I know he's not technically royalty anymore, but most people get all like, ooh. All right, and, we teed you, know, you up for that shit. joke and you didn't even say it right. Or you even thought of it on the call yesterday. You didn't say Prince Harry Knuckles. No, well, well, he's not Prince he's Harry. Not a, he's not, a, but he's not a prince anymore. He fucking he he basically told him screw. Well, I know, but come on. No. Here, well, know, I think I think it's screwed. better to say instead of Harry, Harry Knuckles. <laughs> I've yeah, been watching the be- Crown lately. It's actually a decent show. I thought I would hate What's it. What's that? Oh, the Crown. Yeah, I'm it's into good it. shit. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. The actress not. who plays the queen the first season, she's an amazing actress. So, uh, th- Claire Foy. so let me yeah. ask you this: like, why if they kind of denounced all that stuff? How do they get special treatment? Like, how does that all kind of still kind of basically celebrities? So everyone sucks their dick, you know. 
Well, she. I mean, that's, Megan that's doesn't have of one of those. Well, I mean, you know what? Unless there's the something that hasn't that. came out. <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> All right, move right along. <laughs> um, oh, oh, uh, uh, there's some. There's a fan base that's probably disgusted with us punching the steering wheel, angry uh, that we have not acknowledged their existence. But here comes the mascara. Here comes the double wrister. Oh, 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 the Winnipeg Jets rear. Talk to me, buddy. Woo. Hey, how about Great. Colby Armdog Armstrong before the year when we all said these guys were dead in the water, picking them to win the division? I thought they were going to move the Colorado team. Colorado right now. I thought they were going to move or, the team. No. <laughs> Well, I mean, great stuff. I mean, Rick, Rick Bones come back. His wife uh, had a seizure, Judy. We hope we hope she's doing great. Uh, great to see Bones back. A little clip from him on the locker room, giving the guys hugs. You can tell these guys have so much respect for him. And, you know, like, he, he's blunt, man. He tells them how, how it's supposed to be, how it is. I mean, we saw what happened last year. He stripped the captaincy. And, you know, he's the, he's the boss. But uh, fucking Winnipeg, man. They beat Panthers the other night. They're just rolling. I think they've won eight of their last ten. Uh, Adam Lowry actually gave Bones the, 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 the puck after the game. You know, it was a nice little tribute. It was his first game back. They actually went 9 2 and 2 while he was gone under Scott Al Neal, who you figure his profile will go up too. I mean, it's only 13 games, but you know, the way that some of these GMs hire coaches, he should uh, come up on somebody's radar. But have you watched these guys much? I mean, I know it's kind of late for you a little I, bit. I've seen them play three games, so I'm probably not at liberty to say like why they're playing so well. But I just think, and I, I misspoke, they're tied with Dallas for second in, in the Central. Um, the Avs have a, have a two point lead, but I just think it's amazing. And you got to give a lot of credit to like their core because with the way last year ended and how Bonus spoke about them, and then with everything that was going down, who's getting Shifley? Who's getting Hellebuck? Wow, what, these are going to be crazy trades. They both re signed right before the year. What a move! What a move that was, right? I mean, you look now at the team, and it just probably gave them the shot in the arm. Like, oh, we got our guys. They're here. They're committed to being here. Now we got we got rid of, like, all that noise last year. Probably a little unfair to, to Blake Wheeler to, to put anything on him, right? But obviously there was, like, something that had to change, and it's been a new beginning, and they've just had the entire team step up. I, I – Hellebuck – when you have notice every team we're talking about has a good goalie. It's like the, the, it's the sport is goaltending, and he's been perfect. And their D, like while not getting a lot of credit, I watched that Brendan Dillon man. He'll fight a little oh, bit older, awesome. tough as shit, he's physical, and and Josh Morrissey like the numbers he's putting up last year was was incredible and then this year he's doing the same thing right around a point per game like it kind of came out of nowhere his first few years in the league you know 30 to 40 point guy like a solid contributor offensively but nothing like this I would love to sit down and chat with him and, and kind of ask him what changed what happened to your game like did you make some crazy improvement in one of the off seasons in terms of your your puck moving ability your skating your vision it's it's hard to kind of point it I'm sure Jets fans will be able to fill us in uh do we know how are they doing attendance wise you got to think they're bumping now on this run yeah they, they've gone up they're not they're not, they're not i don't think they're banging out every night but it, it has increased since they've been playing a lot better <laughs> all right so you think hopefully the fans if they continue to win keep you know showing up or show up a little bit more because i also think for bonus as he came back it's probably hard like you you can't wait to get back to work and I'm, we're all so glad to hear his wife's doing better, but it's also like, oh, fuck, the boys are doing so well. Like, you got that, you got those nerves in you. You don't want to show back up, and all of a sudden the team flounders a little bit. So it was cool to see Lowry give him the game puck, gave him a big hug, so it seems like uh, they got a great relationship with him. But that's a guy who's, he's had no problem calling people out since he's been there, and it seems this year there's not much reason to call anyone out. Even the, the uh, Mason Appleton's got 15 points looking at their roster right now, like, Kind of a lot of depth there. And I think, as I mentioned, defensemen who don't really get much credit but just are doing their job. Uh, definitely underestimated their D squad. And, like, you forget a guy like Nate Schmidt who went through that cup run with Vegas the first year. I feel like, you know, one people... Point too. I know, but yeah, so but maybe he's fallen into more of like a defensive yep. role given the production from other guys. Like they got who'd they get? Pionk. They got him in that Truba trade over from New York. He's a great defender. I think that Dylan's another guy who just it's a aging like a fine wine and beloved in the locker room. And if anybody gets hit, you know he's going to answer yes. the bell. As well as uh Nikolai Ehlers. Have you did you see him the other night? Like he's not shy a couple times a year. Like if if one of his teammate gets ran, like he is an absolute worker bee. If you watch them play too, one of the best offensive zone cycling teams out there. 
and they're Shifley's big. Shifley's sick at that. Shifley, they got Niederreiter, they got that Appleton you just mentioned. Like these are big fucking bodies down there, and when you can cycle and wear teams down, that's a fucking huge lift. And I mean, we obviously just talked about Lowry as well, but I would say that you talked about Cooch, probably still, maybe even being one of the most underrated players in the league. There's Kyle Kyle fucking Connor never gets mentioned ever. This guy is just an absolute fucking gamer. 14 goals on the season. So from a from to a man with this team coming in, I know we had a lot of question marks, but they didn't get poopy pants with bonus calling them out last year about how they fizzled out and they didn't have enough guys pulling the rope. And you know, with the with the you you, you discussed the the maybe the issues in the locker room that they were talking about last year. It seems like they figured those out and it's all systems go right now in Winnipeg. So there's your fucking double wrister. Uh, I don't know what else we can say in order to pump your well, guys' we tires. Say, we could say that it was the third line that we should have mentioned. We mentioned all of them, but it's Lowry with Niederreiter and Appleton just bringing the thunder. Lowry will fight. He'll run people over. Power forward, as R.A. said. The, the saying's new. The saying's somewhat new. And then Perfetti, another yeah, uh, high draft pick that they Sagan needed. Saginaw Spirit. So Saginaw Spirit, eh, Biz? Seven goals, ten assists this year. He's finally finding his groove. Yeah. 10th overall pick three years ago, four years ago. So it, it's it's pretty cool to see considering the expectations were super low. Now, not to be a downer, they 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 kind of remind me a little bit of the wild the past two years <laughs> where, you're like, where you're like, fuck, I don't want to play him in the first round, but I don't think they'll compete for the Stanley Cup. But at the same time, like so many people counted them out, including all of us besides Arm Dog. So that the fact they're doing this, good for the coaching staff, good for the players to get the new life in the room and to have some success. That's an awesome story. I love it. I love it. I, I know there was a lot of Winnipeg fans all over me in my DMs about not talking about them enough. So really? I hope that we've done Any them justice. Any smoke bombs all? What do you mean? No. <laughs> no. Fucking Walter from fucking Winnipeg. <laughs> Just a, working yeah. at the John Deere factory. I know, Biz, earlier you, you said we got uh, some fan calls uh, we're going to have later in the episode. We also, when we were in uh, Newport Beach in uh, California a couple weeks ago, Alex Cologne, we didn't even have him planned originally, but a uh, big big friend of the program, I think this was the sixth time, I think he might have the record uh, or at least tie for appearances on Chicklets. We're going to bring him on shortly, but uh, we've been talking about the uh, U.S. Thanksgiving playoff stuff. Well, 75% of the teams roughly uh, in posi playoff position Thanksgiving make the playoffs. Of course, you know, this was an early Thanksgiving. Win. It was the 24th, so that week can make a huge difference. But in the East, uh, Boston, Florida, Tampa, uh, top three in the Atlantic, Rangers, Caps, Canes uh, in the Metro, and then Toronto and Detroit were the wild card. Uh, out West, you had Dallas, Colorado, Winnipeg, uh, Vegas, Vancouver, L.A., and then you had St. Louis, Seattle as the wild cards. Uh, what do you think? Which two teams? Which teams won't be there, and who might replace them if you have a take? So in the East, mad respect to the Philadelphia Flyers, but I don't <laughs> think they'll be in. I think the Penguins will slide in there, and then other than that, I, I not think, New I Jersey, think that's, Washington. No, I, I think I think Jersey will get in. So I shouldn't have said other than that. I think Jersey and Pittsburgh ends up getting in. The problem is, oh, man, Philly's out, but who else is coming out? Maybe it's Detroit, washed. but I'm getting closer to hopping on this Detroit train. I love this team. Um, and then, yeah, I don't think Washington makes it. I think Washington's done a hell of a job cons considering I said they stink and they're like 14-1 and one since I said that. It's a giant fuck you to me, which I get quite quite often in my life. Um, but I don't, I don't, they're not in right now. I don't think they get in. So say Pitt and Jersey gets in, say the Flyers and man, I might have to say the wings. I'm not prepared to say my other team. I'm not prepared okay. to say in the, in the West biz, you take the West first. Yeah, I'll take out, the West. In? I, uh, I'm going to say Edmonton is for sure going to make playoffs. And I want to say that right now, St. Louis is in. Yes. You, you, uh, yeah, they were, they were, they were, they were, I'm, I'm going to say this till I'm blue in the face. I have major 2019 St. Louis Blues vibes from the Edmonton Oilers. I just think for whatever reason, they get a hot goaltender and their offense starts clicking and it just, rainbows are being shot out of their ass and it's happy days in Edmonton. That's just my my theory. And and am I right? Is St. Louis currently in the playoff position? Yes. And I, yeah, would, take, I would take them out. And I think that other than that, I, I don't have anybody making it. East, I think that New Jersey is going to make playoffs and take out... I don't want to go. I, I I believe and love my caps. I 
could see them being the team that comes out, especially They're not even that, in right now, though. Oh, Caps aren't? Okay, never mind. Uh, let's... I can't answer East yet either, all right? Fuck yeah, that. I, mean, I can't say the, it either. Well, the Caps, they're only a point behind Philly. They got like four games in hand on them. So I, yeah, I, I would like to go quickly, though, back to Winnipeg, saying that Ayafalo is still finding his groove with Winnipeg, and Velarde hasn't played. So they have so many fucking good players that it's almost like we forget about. And I don't know, man. That could be well, – I mean, what were they coming into the season before those guys signed? They probably were one of the cheapest tickets, No. But as, what, as what far as what, like like, uh, like 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 betting on them to win the Stanley Cup oh, okay, before the those two guys were signed, yeah, they would have had incredible odds. Probably what fifty to one, maybe forty to one, around there. Uh, I'd say, I guess. Quickly, in terms of Detroit, Alex Lyons doing this again, uh oh, is nuts. <laughs> that he's come in, he's just light. He's well, lighting it up isn't the right term for a goalie, but <laughs> the guy's kicking. He didn't even play at the beginning of the year. He could just wait around, wait around, boom. Maybe he's their guy. Detroit's riding him. Making mincemeat out of the Bruins twice Ooh, this year. Shit. Twice, yeah. Yeah, only two well, up until the other day, the only two losses they had in regulation. But all right, boys, uh, let's send it over to Alex Colon. Uh, great chat with him. He signed with Anaheim in the offseason. So uh send it over to Killer. Yeah, Enjoy. this is a great talk. A pro's pro, a guy who, while joking around, me and Biz were mentioning after, like a serious guy. You could tell why he's had so much success. And I, I, I love when he comes on because you get really insightful answers. And we were able to go into the exit from Tampa. We were able to go into some players there and then how things are looking in Anaheim and, and how his summer went playing in the, the Celebrity Classic in, in, in uh, Lake Tahoe. So enjoy Alex Kalorn right now. This interview is brought to you by Chevy. Chevy has convenient ways to research and shop electric vehicles online. They make it very easy for the customers, and when researching, utilize Chevy My Way. Vehicle specialists and hosts give a virtual tour and help answer your questions of all vehicles, and when you're ready, you're able to buy online by reviewing available EV inventory or build your own at participating dealers. You can do as much or as little of the buying process online with help from a participating dealer. You could configure finance and lease payments, apply for credit, upload documents, and finalize your purchase through our secure checkout process. And you can even schedule vehicle delivery at home or at the dealership. Imagine that, just scheduling the delivery and counting down the days till your Chevy EV truck gets pulled in the driveway and it's all yours. If you'd prefer to purchase the traditional way in person, their nationwide dealer network is available to help as well. That's not to mention all the different charging stations all across North America with more coming day by day. Learn more at Chevy.com slash electric. That's Chevy.com slash electric. All right, the boys are here in Southern California, Orange County business, they call it, because yes. there is a town named Orange here. Okay. And we have for the fifth time, it could be a record, <laughs> definitely tying a record, Alex Colon, first year in the Anaheim area, Anaheim Ducks. You guys are playing all right lately. I was at the game the other night. The crowd was looking pretty hopping. How's it been so far, buddy? It's been good. Uh, you know, it's been somewhat of a change. You play in Tampa for 11 years, and you kind of think you're going to end up retiring there. It just to kind of gets flipped on you real quick. But um, it's been great. Listen, um, to start the season, there's been, it's been exciting because we have so many young players that have been doing so well. Guys that when I signed, I didn't really know about. You know, like this Mintikov, um, knew about Carlson. We didn't know yeah. about him either. Did you guys not? Know no, him? we don't really He's, follow the prospects. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's not, huh? <laughs> well, when you're playing, you know how it is. I mean, I didn't really know who the guys were drafting and, and how good they were. But um, and there's even more guys coming up. There's a kid in the HL who's really good. That's that that so basically from training camp, you're like, oh, my God, this team stocked and loaded in the next couple of years. For sure. And like the GMs and the, the assistant GMs were always, they would always talk about the pipeline so strong in, in Anaheim. But for me, I don't know what that means. Does that mean in like three years they're going to be playing? And then they're playing this year and they're doing well. So for guy, I mean, we have a new coach, kind of a different culture for the, for the older guys that have been here in Anaheim, you know, guys like Henrik Silverberg, um, Cam Fowler guys that have been here for a long time. I think it's a nice change for them to get a new coach just a new voice in the locker room. I don't know how. how Has well he you heard know, of bro. sunscreen, no. your coach? <laughs> I like. Uh, his, I, like I think he's a surfer. Though. He's Have you seen this side. guy's tan? Oh yeah. So I was. He gonna, looks like a fucking tomato in those post game press conference. Like a Kelly's yeah, later oh, look. Well, well, <laughs> that's an Irish guy, man. You know, we gotta be careful out here in the. No, Kelly but I. Um, he's he a surfer. The, he was one oh, of the. Oh, is that what's burning him up? Yeah. He surfs. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. He was the. 
he was one of the original coaches at the National Development Program yeah. when that started. Yeah. And I remember guys saying he was intense, right? And then he's been what we talked about on the Anaheim preview, like they were staying at the Baza at camp. That's how intense he is. <laughs> they had the Baza going. Yeah, the rush, the Russian vibe. But um, you know, we were talking basically about he's going to kind of have guys accountable and yeah. it's, it's probably been different there the, the past few years. So I think you're, you coming from a cup champ, all those years of success, you're seeing like, this is kind of what you need almost. Yeah. Well, you do need it to kind of change the culture that's been there. For me, it's been a, it's a, been a big change because it's just such a younger team when you get to yeah. play like in Tampa and we were, you know, going on all those cup runs, you know, we didn't, we didn't practice like we do, like we do here. And, and we practice really hard. He holds guys accountable. He's really honest with guys, um, a lot of the younger guys. So he just, he just, and the reason he does it, he's just trying to get a little bit more out of everyone, but he can be super intense. Like I remember when I was at Harvard, he was at Northeastern and I was like, who's this guy on the bench? Yeah. He, was, <laughs> why, he looks wow, like a WWE he wrestler. It? No, he just, he's super intense. Yeah. He's going to, you know, I mean, he's barking like, so, out there. So screaming sometimes. He's screaming. Yeah. At the refs too. Yeah, he got to, he got fined twenty five thousand yeah. dollars. Oh, nice ching, ching, buddy. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't happy about that. <laughs> That's a lot of dough because they're probably first time paying. first time head coach. He's sixty years old. He doesn't he look. He doesn't, 60. Lo he doesn't look he sixty. He looks great. Yeah, sixty. I seen him last night. I would have thought he's younger. Oh, than that, he's a unit. Holy shit. Yeah, he's a unit. Yeah, he's intense, but he's. I'm How surprised do, uh, you don't you have you don't have more stories about him being from Boston. No, I heard guys just said he was an animal, yeah. and when they were like working out. You know, every day he's up there, he's powering weights. Like he's expecting guys, someone challenges you, give it back. Like he was, he was a lot to play for. But I, I, I mean, that's, that's a long time ago, That's right? 98. So looking now, it's, it's probably, you know, he's been around long enough that it's changed a little bit, but more than m most new age coaches. I mean, he's 60, he's giving it to guys. Yeah. He's giving it to guys, but I think he has evolved from the guy that you've probably yeah. heard of. And yeah, he's he's been great for us. Um, holding guys accountable is huge. I know that was kind of a problem in the past with this team. So it seems like, but for a young guy, like I want to talk about this McTavish kid. Like he yeah. doesn't really seem like a, a kid that you have to like mold into to play in the right way and having a heart no. on him. He seems like a fucking grizzled vet right away. Yeah, he's built like that too. He's just a big boy. He's kind of the guy that you have to like pull the reins back on, like. Like after practice, it's been like 30 minutes. Everyone's gone. Like get off the ice. You know, like we got a game tomorrow. That's kind of, you know, his mindset. He he plays he plays really hard. He's kind of got that like, I mean, I, I haven't been here a long time, but kind of that like clutch gene a little bit where, you know, maybe if things aren't going well for him in the game, he gets the puck on a stick, he scores. And, uh, you know, I think he, I don't know if you guys watched, he had the game winner in Boston. It seems like he's been getting a lot of game winners. So Yeah, late with, goals. Yeah. Was, did he score one in OT or was it a late one when he was at He got one, He got an OT Pittsburgh, net front. Pittsburgh, no. Was it net front? Well, yeah, Pittsburgh, he, he got the tying goal and then he got the winner out of the penalty box. Okay. Yeah. So he scored two to, yeah, to end up winning that game. Yeah, he's a bulldog out there. And Leo Carlson, a guy, well, the pod's been big on because of Merle's. I, I was at the game last night, his very first hat trick in the NHL. This kid is special, you could tell right away. Yeah, was was Merle's always talking him up? Like, oh, yeah. even oh, over, yeah. even oh, over Fantilli? Yeah, 100%. Oh, he, he was, was yeah. saying, he was saying, like, over Bedard. He he he, <laughs> he thinks this legit. kid. And and actually, uh, a buddy at, at home said to me, it's like Matt Sundin. Like yeah. he's just this big, powerful center. And then the news broke, or I don't know if it was necessarily like breaking news, but we talked to his agent and when they were sitting him out a little, Matt, he, he, my agent, yeah, yeah Cater. oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Cater. Yeah. So he said, um, his grown, his bones are still growing. So it's like, <laughs> like <laughs> that's that, hilarious. So that's what he said, okay. So he went in practice. He was doing a one-on-one. -on -one, he flew into the boards, like bumped his hip. He ends up getting an x-ray and the doctor's like, your growth plates aren't fully like you got a couple inches left in you. And he's like six <laughs> four. So oh my god, we learned he's still growing. Um, Jesus, but I think with him, it's just like the ceiling is so high. You know, I I didn't realize he was as good of a skater as he is. You know, once he gets the puck in the middle and he gets going, he, he's tough to stop. So I think he's just going to keep getting better. I played with him last game. You know, it, it was a treat. He scored a hat trick. I mean, took me six hundred yeah, games and, uh, to get one. <laughs> Troy Terry too, right? Troy Terry, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I, I mean, Pat Verbeek, I was told if 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 you guys weren't getting Bedard, he was number num, number two no matter what. Like they were taking Carlson regardless of where they were picking if they didn't get Bedard. So yeah, I mean, seeing the results so far, Biz, did you have some? No, no, okay. I was just listening to you about, explain that. Frankie Vitrano, uh, I I like he. I mean, he's a Massachusetts. How guy. about his tattoo? Uh, like, 
the which one? one? The, the, oh, the, the skyline Spring, of Springfield, Springfield Massachusetts. Mass. <laughs> you haven't it's seen like, it yet? I've, I've seen like it. Like I, didn't know, I didn't know it was Springfield. Yeah, oh, yeah. Ask him about it. Yeah, Keith Yandel told me. Like, the name's gotta, probably faded at this he made point. Us, That's how he bad. made him show us his tattoo at, at, at Lincoln in South Boston. He's like, show him that tattoo. He's like, yeah, boom. Springfield Mass. The idea. Yeah, he's got a couple of tats. Um, very he's intense. been great. What is I he, like leading the, the yeah, NHL? Yeah, 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 yeah. Very intense guy once he gets the jersey on. Vent Vetrano? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, I think that's why Crow really likes him. Okay. They kind of got that similar, like, pit bull mentality. But he, he's been good. I mean, listen, he scored nine goals in, I don't know how many games we've played, but that's pretty good. So he's got a great shot, and he's, he's probably the fastest skater on our team. When you talk about, like, straight line, you talk about, like, going. Kreider, powerful, like, yeah. one point to another, he's he's incredibly fast. Um, when your agent called this summer and said that he had four years at six a year, were you shocked? A little bit. I mean, not to chirp you, no, dude. No. I thought that that was one of the best, like, free agent contracts all but to summer. To get six years, I was like, that. No, four years. Four years. Oh, it's sorry, six sorry. million a year. Sorry, twenty-two five, six in the hook. Um, yeah, yeah. Six, <laughs> eight, two five, six two five. That's over twenty. I knew there was a little over more there. there. That's how over we got 25. the watch. That's how we got the watch. No, so this is my first time going through free agency, and I I had no idea what to expect. Um, yeah, then that's the beauty of free agency. You hold all the leverage. You know, everyone's battling over you. And I was kind of worried uh, at the beginning of the year thinking I was going to free agency just because the cap wasn't going to move. And I was on those calls being like, hey, we got to get the cap up. Like, <laughs> come on, on this please <laughs> just get it up like a million. But uh, the cap just wasn't going to move. So there just wasn't a lot of money in the system. And, and like a lot of guys, as you know, um, you know, weren't able to get great deals. I was yeah, fortunate. Like Tarasenko took a one year deal. Bertuzzi took a one year deal. Like those yeah. are some pretty fucking good players like you're talking about. Yeah, There's guys no that have scored a lot of more goals than I have. Yeah. Um, if <laughs> yeah, we're being honest. Win cups, man. Yeah. But cups matter. But yeah, it was, I mean, we knew the number was going to be maybe not that high. That was a little higher, but, you know, Anaheim in the position that they were at, they kind of had to offer that. You so. must have been going fucking nuts, man. That's, yeah. I, was I know it's sad to uh, leave Tampa. It was but sad to leave. It, yeah. It was like kind of a mourning process because I, I wanted to stay in Tampa. I really did. And we actually we tried to make it work, and it was it was close <laughs> it was close to to working, but it's just with the salary cap not going up, it, it kind of there's just there wasn't any money. If it was next year, yeah. There's not if there even, was no COVID, I I probably would still be there. Yeah, there's not even money for stamp ghosts right now. So, uh -huh. oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I was I, I Biz mentioned the Tampa thing, and wh when did was it right before July first that it it was over or was it actually even a couple weeks before you knew you weren't going to be back there? I, ch I, July 1st or the right before July 1st is when I made my decision. Yeah. No. Yeah. And it was down. It was a down. Hard, it, it, when hard, I say, day, when I say right? down on the wire, it was like down on the wire. Yeah. Oh, all right. So, oh, you're calling them back when they're, oh, okay. I there didn't was know a lot, there was a lot going on behind yep. the scenes, but. How stressful is that? Stressful. Oh. I would like, I would never, I mean. Are you with your wife? Just like yeah, hanging at home Beyonce, all day? But. Um, excuse me yeah we were hanging out all day and i didn't know when it was when the calls were going to come in i mean they can you know typically it's it doesn't happen july 1st in the morning it's you know you get some whispers the day before or whatever but yeah it was pretty stressful like i wouldn't i mean i'm complaining about this great contract no, I got, yeah, but you know what i mean it, it, it was a stressful moment for sure i don't no, i don't think uh i don't think people give you a hard time considering what you'd been through with tampa like yeah. it's not like you were bouncing around like i can only imagine the time it took you to call every single one of your teammates and explain the decision and how it was going and rekindle all the memories yeah. and all of it right it's just like it's like a breakup yeah but i, I mean a lot of them i was calling to, to, to like figure it out kind of situation. <laughs> and they all knew what was going on. They had hey, uh, it they was, say if you restructure Cooch, <laughs> then we can make this work. <laughs> Cooch, you just got to cut your salary by $4 million. You should be able to restructure like, in the NHL. Well, then you better get yeah, me a yeah, fucking right, better yeah. Bud Light deal, motherfucker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, they they were a huge part of it. And they and they understood, like, they get it. Yeah, they're, they all go you know, through it. They've all gone through it. And like, they're going to have to go through it, you know, some of those guys in the next couple of years, so... Uh, well, you must have had other suitors, no, other than Anaheim and Tampa. Yeah, there were. I mean, I won't go. Gonna I'm not going to go into like no, the details of every it. team that was was offering yeah. and stuff. There were a couple teams. Anaheim was the best offer. Yep. Um, and yeah, I mean, there was a lot that went into it. I think you know, life. You got how long have you guys been here for? 
like in this like, town. Yeah, we're old. Uh, we got here f- uh, probably seven hours ago. Oh, okay, so you guys haven't planet. really been able to enjoy it. The weather here, I is, played here. is unbelievable. You've played here. Um, it's a joke. Yeah. yeah. Every single day. Groundhog is, day? Is, is, when you said it was, yeah. yeah. 75 and sunny. It's just like, yeah. yeah, it's like every single day is the exact yeah, same. Because even Tampa gets like the storm season. And, you know, yeah, like you get the season storm season. And, yeah. and, I, and I live in Tampa, so the summers there are kind of like... Too hot. Kind of too hot and it rains every day. Yeah. Here it's just like 75 and sunny every day. Yeah, good Groundhog Day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's No, it's beautiful out here. Uh, I can't like not let you pass it. Like giving a little double rest to my boy Coop. I mean, you, now that you're not with him anymore, not not to dish a new coach. How, how how good of a coach is he, and how much of a motivator is he for the whole squad? You know, he he's great. And I was watching the Carolina Tampa game before I came here, and like, it's pretty impressive the longevity he's had with that team. Because as you know, coaches their messages like they can kind of kind of get tiring over time, and after a certain amount of time, teams kind of fade you out. And for him to be there, I think it's his 12th year. Longest in the league, yeah. Super impressive. And to continue to get the results um, out of those guys. And, you know, I get that deal with Anaheim this summer. And, like, a huge part of that is him playing me, us winning as much as we did. I wouldn't have got that deal if it wasn't for that. So I owe him a ton. And, you know, I, I hope he continues to coach there and do well. What is it that he does so well that makes you guys still want to play from 12 years in? You know, everyone talks about him being a player's coach. I just think yeah. he kind of understands when to push buttons right. and when not to push buttons. He understands, like, we were an old, older team that had played a ton of hockey. He wasn't practicing us every day. He was giving us days off. He just kind of understands and feels the team. He's, I always say he's like, he's a great manager mm-hmm. of people and not even just players, but coaches too, like, he really knows how to manage people better than he is kind of like a an X's and O's guy. Mm-hmm. You know, like they say CEOs are really just good at managing people. And I think that's kind of his greatest skill. Um, when you signed that deal, was it kind of like vocalized, like we're going to want you to come in here and establish a culture and take on more of that role where like, did you feel not a pressure, but do you feel that you have to like reach out and spend more time with the young guys as opposed to just worrying about your own game? That's a good question. And I, I think that's a huge reason why they did sign me. And they they made that, you know, clear that they wanted an older veteran guy that can play top six minutes, help out offensively, but also a guy because there's going to be a lot of young guys coming up that could kind of help them. I mean, you know, the fact that I've been to, you know, whatever, four cup finals, we ended up winning two, just kind of, you know, those experiences can help out a team a ton. I mean, Guys, guys give me crap because Crow mentions it like every two <laughs> meetings that I've won two cups. He like mentions it every meeting. So guys, that's like, they just jab me every day. Oh, like, oh, oh, killer. Not wearing your it's like killer's got two cups, guys. You know? <laughs> so That's the shit that makes me miss being in a locker. You know, yeah. every day, just guys giving it to each other. But yeah, they let me know. That's that's funny. With, with Vasilevsky, right? We, we saw him. He's out right now, yeah. but. He plays so much, and I, I hate to go back to Tampa, obviously, but cut the cord with no, no. But I'm curious, like, did guy like no, good. were guys like almost telling him like or asking him why do you play so much? Take a little time off, or is he just kind of wired that way? You can't really tell him much, to be honest. So he's like, "Coop, I'm playing." Yeah. All they, right. <laughs> there, you, there you go. That's kind of cool. <laughs> no, it it was like they did pull him. They did pull it back. And like he would never, if ever the score got out of hand, he's never coming out of a game for the most part. He's yeah, they in. never pull him. He's that he's well, they tried to, but he's yeah. <laughs> he's like, no, you can't no. pull me. No, he's just different. I mean, he I've never seen a guy that prepares the way Vasilevsky prepares. And I said it on another podcast the other day, but at one point he was getting to the rink like four hours before a game. And if you're playing, I don't know how many games you would play. Yeah, it just kind of mentally, you go to like oof. those three cups and you're there at the arena all day. I think like our team guy was like, hey, maybe just show up like two hours before. And I think that helped him out a ton just because he cares so much. Um, and he was so dialed in. It was like, just kind of like relax a little bit. And I think this time off is going to be good for nervous him. nervous system. At a exactly. Point. That's what it is because it's more mentally draining. Yeah. When you're there, it's like you're, you, there's something inside of you is on. Maybe it's not on like you're on the ice pl- ready to play the game, but it's firing. Right. Yeah. And all that time and that amount of time, I like get a certain point. It's just like, it's going to wear down. It just and that's wears nothing on you. Against, that's you. That's just human. That's being a human. Yeah. It just wears on you. Like 
I always talk about those. Everyone talks about how physically tough going to those three finals were was. Like mentally, it was it was a lot harder, especially the COVID bubble, and then going straight into another season. And I think for him, I could have like four bad games and no one would notice, you know. Whereas if he doesn't play well, everyone notices, and it's it all, a lot of it lies on him. So he's so he's so hard, and he takes he takes the game so seriously. So I think ha- him having this time, even though. They had a long summer just because of, of the playoffs last year. If they can find a way, I think, and they will get into the playoffs, and arrested Vasilevsky is going to be pretty dangerous. That, that nobody's like, that's what Coop said. What did he say the other day? We're still relevant. Like, yeah, it's one of those things. For sure. Like, now, I know you, I don't, they said you uh, mentioned the word mentor when they signed you. I know you're not that fucking old, but like, when you come in the league, did oldest you have guy a, on the team. <laughs> are you really? Yeah, 34. Oh, wow, just shit. 34. The league's getting so young, too. That's just, like, crazy to well, think about. There must have we been have, guys... We have six uh, or seven guys under 22 on our team. Holy shit, wow. So, I mean, you when you came in the league, there must have been, like, guys in the locker room who are sort of mentors to you, like, take you into the yeah. league. Like, what kind of things did you learn from them, and what guys did you learn from? Well, there were some guys I should have looked up to and some guys I shouldn't have followed around. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I had Bugsy, oh, here we go. Bugsy Teddy. Malone, <laughs> Teddy Purcell, oh, no. Nate Eddie. Thompson. Oh, God. <laughs> and those guys were great. I had a lot of fun with them, but I also had Marty St. Louis and like Vinny LeCavalier. Mm. Um, you know, Marty St. Louis it was such a, such a good leader and him being the coach in Montreal is, is great to see right now. I love playing with him. Just a guy who kind of has such a presence in the room. Yeah. Did you know he was going to be a head coach when yeah. you play with him? hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. He was coaching while, while he was, he was like a player coach for us kind of. Right At certain line. points, like he'd be running the power play meetings. <laughs> he'd be like, give it to me. <laughs> and then if even if you have an option, you give it right back to no, me. And if you don't, you're yeah. off the fucking power play. Oh, shit. <laughs> he'd always say, just look for the yellow stick. It doesn't matter. That's true. Oh, yeah, the synergy. the yellow stick. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, let's talk more. Shift back over to, uh, to Anaheim. Uh, Cam Fowler is a guy who's been here a while. Yeah. Uh, not only a stick on the golf course, but probably a guy because of the teams they've had and hidden away in Anaheim doesn't get talked about enough. Yes, uh, unbelievable player. I think, and it's great for to see the team. I mean, it's early days, but kind of see the team kind of making a change and, and a turn, kind of starting to build a different culture for him. Because he's been, you know, he's been here when it was kind of great, and then he's kind of been been here when it started to go a little bit south. And um, great player. It's crazy. He had his 900th game the other day. I don't know how old he is. I think he's like 32. No, he's, he's one of those age. young guys who got there. Kind of like, like he plastic. played. Yeah. And he's just been playing. He plays so many games. Um, really impressive guy. You know, I played with guys like Headman who are just horses on the ice. And he kind of is, is similar to him in that sense. Great player. And uh, yeah, 900 games is, is super impressive. Have yeah. you uh, have you played golf against him yet? Yeah. Who Who won? He's pretty. He's, he's legit. Good. I know you're a legit golfer. Yeah, I. I mean, he, he's got. I played. With I'm him trying once. to think of the game we played. It, it wasn't a one-on-one game, um, but he's got some. He's got some serious game. Yeah. It's it, just. It's with all these guys. It's. I don't have any kids yet, so I have such an upper hand on these guys. Like all summer, <laughs> that's all I do. And they're, you know, they they're babysitting. <laughs> Um, so I was a guy who used social media quite a bit when I played in the NHL and sometimes it could benefit me. Sometimes it could hinder me and it would be a distraction. Look at you now. Have you, (laughs) have you had a chat with Zegras about like how his popularity and everything he's got going off the ice and maybe how to hone it in a more positive way where there's a time and, and space and for it not to be maybe a distraction. And that's not even saying it is. I'm just asking from a guy who's playing with him to be managing everything he is at such a young age. For sure. And I, when I got in the league, I remember, and I don't know how it was for you, but when I started posting on Instagram, the older guys in the locker room just gave it to oh, me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, you, yeah. It, when it, you it, post it, a picture with your girl, girl. Oh, anything. Like, Bitch. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you posting on Instagram? It's like, how's your girl know. doing? It's like, I broke up with her because you guys were chirping me about my Instagram photo. <laughs> exactly. But um, he's actually pretty good about that stuff. I mean, I don't know if you guys know he's date. I mean, yeah, he's we, date, we yeah, can yeah. this out. He's in the sway house. He's in the sway house. Sway house. <laughs> but um, yeah, he gets, he's got a, his fan base has grown yeah. a, a ton because of that. Um, but no, he he's on top of that. I don't think he cares too much about the social media stuff, to be honest. Um, yeah. So, okay. Uh, another signing, I guess. Sorry to put you on the spot. No, there. no, I, like I just don't have it. Yeah. 
One thing about hockey is like how you can go from like hated rivals to teammates so quickly. Another guy who signed uh, Radko Gudis, man. That's uh, obviously a hatch you, you you just bury right away. How's yeah, what's he like so in the far? room? Well, Good. I played with Goody in Tampa my first year. Oh, so shit, that's you want to oh, yeah, oh, call their we want to call their cup together with Coop. Yeah, yep. You did guys you were at the you beach did. together, weren't you? Getting the getting the tans where Coop, Coop <laughs> yeah. said you. Then you guys were in the paper. He was so angry. Yeah, we're, Coop, we're, we're you in the playing beach. the exhibition game Blues versus Lightning in Orlando in 2014 when he ran over Tarasenko. Were you in that yeah. game? Well, no. I was on a trial. I was in that game, and I'm yeah. If I was it was like, in Orlando Ooh. and it was Tampa, I was definitely playing. I didn't know Saint. It was Saint Louis. Yeah, we yeah. Played, we played Tampa, and 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 I was like, who the hell is that? Like Tarasenko is a truck. Truck. Gudis was. It must have been his first year or two. I think. Yeah, his first year was 2013, maybe 2012. Yeah, that's when it was. Yeah, 2013. It was 2013 camp. Yeah, he's um. The crazy part with him is is like his game has not changed. Since he's like been like 19 years old, <laughs> you know, usually guys evolve and they kind of they become a little bit less physical. He's it seems like he's become more physical, and like in practice, you're always like you're doing a one on one drill. If you ever take him wide, you're like, I hope he doesn't run yeah, me yeah, to yeah, the goalie. Drop, yeah. But um, <laughs> he also has the hardest slap. I mean, recorded slap shot. You know, they do that like analytics. They track it. His, right, right. He's got a he's got a cannon, but yeah, he was my first roommate and it's funny because i know labrie was on your guys podcast oh, man. he's a funny it was me him and labrie um in tampa together in a in a, a oh, condo <laughs> nacho so was that when he started getting called nacho nacho yeah oh <laughs> nacho libre oh man that guy's a beauty uh what else you got boy any other duck, duck stuff i know it's only a quick hit not a usual like no uh, yeah hours, well, i mean yeah. it's your fifth time i think I know, terry yeah. ryan's the only other guy who's been on five times yeah, yeah we've covered the golf we've covered all the teammates we were talking about the tahoe no? they're, they're, oh that? yeah he played in that celebrity classic tourney and didn't you get a hole in one? Oh, curry was, i was in his group when curry got the hole in one what's he like as a guy oh that's right. that's got to yeah, be yeah, you yeah. were right in the hunt for that yeah thing. you were, you <laughs> were like i was for like a cup of coffee wasn't nost on your bag yeah. So do you know? You guys know. You know. You must know Colt Nost. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, from yeah, Arizona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the connection I, I was on his to podcast. that? So Colt, Brendan no, Morrow. Is it no laying up. What's their podcast called? No, it's um, it's um, fuck me. Subpar. 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 Great he podcast. Plays, it's with Sleaze. 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 That guy's a stick. Really good player. And and uh, Colt Nost used to play on tour, yeah. and then now is doing commentating for the tour. He has he had the record at the waste management for the lowest round, I think. Yeah, Up until it, just a got, point? it just got beat this past year. Okay, he was in so, his golf cart watching it, and he like threw his his phone when it happened. Uh, but either way, he I knew him through Brendan Morrow. Brendan Morrow played with us in the Lightning, and Colt was doing the Valspar, and he wanted to come see a Lightning game. I got him tickets. We ended up grabbing a couple drinks, and then he was in Tahoe. Covering it. Covering it, doing a sponsored event. And we're at the range. And my buddy, I was going to bring my buddy from home. Just, it's cool event. You're with so many celebrities. My buddy ended up coming, but his knee, he like tore his MCL or something. So he couldn't walk. He's like, I'll walk some of the days. I'm like, no, I need a caddy who's going to be with yeah. me the whole time. Colt jumped in um, and we got off to like a hot start. You were in the lead. In the lead. I, day looked one. Up, I think it was, I looked at, you could look at the scoreboard. Oh my it, God. It's points. So a par is two points. On, is it based on your handicap? No, 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 no. no. Oh, wow. So two points a par. Correct me if I'm wrong. Four points a birdie. Eight points an eagle. One point a bogey. Zero points double. So you never lose points, right? You lose points for double. That's why some guys are like... Yeah, so there's minus... All right, the sorry. only... It's minus two for a double. It's zero for a bogey. Oh, all right. Then and you I, get I one point for a par. For, so either way, the guy, I looked at his card, he had a lot of points. He shot like one under or something. I was like, holy shit, he's going to fucking win this thing. But yeah. what is it, three rounds? Three rounds. And you've played in some competitive golf tournaments. I've never played in a competitive golf tournament in my life. And wow. I come out firing. <laughs> I never, I didn't get practice round in. And this is at Edgewood, like Poana Greens. I just played, I played really well. And I remember the, um, me and Colt were, I think it was called like, whatever there's a bar that we everyone went to you know charles barkley everyone hanging out having yeah. a great time and we see the matchups for day two it's like me steph curry and pavelski oh my god and now i'm kind of like you're like i'm i'm in it i'm in one and yeah. i still like we were having some drinks i was like oh it's gonna be great you know when you're like hitting the ball well you're like i'm gonna oh, be I, great tomorrow yeah. it's gonna be awesome and uh Did i got out curry there. before the round or right at the first tee i Right, no, at uh, the driving range. You know, Colt knows everyone. So Colt yeah. goes up to him, starts like breaking him, 
breaking his balls a little bit. But um, I talked to him. I was so nervous. Oh, you think? Like really? Yeah. Golf, yeah it's, what? He's Steph Curry's yeah, probably the most notable star, athlete on the planet, you know other than Messi, right? And now. he's nasty. Yeah. He's, and it wasn't so much playing with Curry. It was like everyone in the world's watching me right now. <laughs> I, I, and I was watching. Yeah. So and then the people that like the tournament can be very different. Like the guys like Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, like Kelsey, like they just have a blast. They don't care what they shoot. Right. They have a good time. They're drinking. Um, and then there's the other guys like Curry, Mulder, um, Marty Fish. Did, Marty they're, Fish. They're to win. Marty Fish are there to win. Romo's Not, there, right? Romo. Marty Fish, the old tennis player. Yeah, yeah he's sick. Oh, he I don't know sick? if you guys. Sick. I don't know I've if you saw what dog. happened oh. the last hole. Did you see that? Yeah. No. Yeah. Someone yelled in his backswing. He was in the lead. Oh no! And he shanked it. Did he fucking snap? He snapped. Steph Curry snapped too because Steph Curry was second, and he was, you know. He obviously didn't want, win like he that. doesn't want to win like that. And it was a par five to give Curry credit. He still made an Eagle on a par five to win. But you know, if Marty fish made, makes a birdie on it, it's like a short par five. He ends up winning. So it, it kind of sucked in that sense, but the, the event itself was awesome. I was with Curry, the, the crowds that follow Curry there, like would rival PGA tour crowds. Like it's, it's crazy. And he gets the hole in one and I'm with them. <laughs> oh my God. I, so yeah. I was playing so bad <laughs> that I'm hitting third all day and he goes second. He hits the hole in one. Me and Pavelski look at each yeah. other <laughs> and he's running. So we just follow him. <laughs> so we all ran up to the green and then my caddy Colts like we ran up. He's like, dude, you got to go back and hit. <laughs> I didn't hit. <laughs> I forgot to hit. I was celebrating with Curry. <laughs> so I then I go, that. yeah. And then I go back. Like, like, I gotta be in the shots for you. It's, like it's like a walk of shame. Back <laughs> like a walk of shame. Team. Like, yeah. Tell me, did you hit the green? He yeah. sprints back. But then they, Curry goes back too, and he's doing an interview right at the front of the tee box to the left. And I'm like, Colt, I can't hit right now. Like, I'm not playing great. If I shank one off Steph Curry's oh, head yeah. after he got a hole I'll in one, I'll never play this tournament like, again. Never. <laughs> but uh, I actually hit a good one because no one was watching me at that point. They're all watching the interview. But that that was one of the coolest experiences of my life, playing with Steph Curry and his whole like being a part of his hole in one and, and that celebration. Uh, it was really cool. Well, how did you get into that tournament? Yeah, it's a great story. Um, actually, I remember it's, I told Erica. Funny. You guys I, are kind of well, not really part of it. I but. told Erica Nardini one time. I said, if you could ever do anything for me, try to get me in this golf tournament. And and she was like, Oh yeah, I don't know. She didn't know. Anyone. I had a buddy and reach I, out to me to say that he can get you in that tournament. You should. I mean, no, he didn't. No, when you mentioned on the podcast. He, uh, you said that, and oh, he said that. I want to play in that tournament. It'd be great. I'll, I'll, that I'll looks like the most you would fun. Love it. You would tournament. have so much fun. Okay, I'll in the you. world. Yeah. All right. Well, go okay, ahead. Okay. So right, I interrupted I'll, you yeah, to yeah, tell no, my part of the story. <laughs> it, it, like you would be great. You would love this tournament. Um, and like you said, it's really hard tournament to get into. You look at like Aaron Rodgers, Pat McAfee. No, it's, like, it's a superstar field. Yeah, oh yeah, but there are dog, a lot the of dog. no names. That are probably it's time to like maybe, but, but the, I think once but the you're thing in, is the th yeah, I don't know if it's once you're in, but if you've gone a couple times, you're in. Once you don't go, you never get invited back, so everyone just keeps going. Oh, yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, I think I think there's different rules for like Curry. That, that's and, how the Jerry Bruckheimer went, yeah, exactly. So if you don't come back, but so for me, the way I got in was NBC Sports was filming a curling tournament in Raleigh, North Carolina, in a it was like four summers ago, it was a curling tournament four teams each team had one nhl guy one women's league player and two olympic curlers so they could kind of help us out and it was like me slavin pavelski and ronick and uh does jr play in that yeah well he used to so this is kind of part of the story <laughs> so we they couldn't find any nhl player to go to carolina in the summer to film this thing over three weeks it was going to play in between playoff games so that you know the dead air they would kind of just fill it in and um I told them like, you know, I'll go do it. I just want to play in the Tahoe. And they said, sure, you come do this. You'll play in the Tahoe. And it ended up never, f I won the tournament, but it never ended up um, airing because of JR and NBC. They had their whole thing. No oh, shit. No. Uh, so, 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 but if that was four years ago, this was your first year. Yeah. So it's because oh, we went to the, the cups. Cup. <laughs> so every year I'm like, Fuck. sorry, I was winning cups. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry so it was four that. years and then I, which probably didn't hurt the fact that they got you in yeah, there. Exactly. Like, okay. Yeah. We got this two time Stanley cup champion. Like everyone but knows yeah, we're all is. pit. Like the hockey guys compared, like it's, it's, it's a pretty cool field. You guys get gooned up. Oshie's, yeah, it, Oshie's yeah. in it. Oshie's in it. And I'll give Osh a lot of credit because 
I played with him the first day and I was so nervous. I've never played like competitive golf on TV and he was the best. He was like, when I made a birdie, he was giving me like shots. He was jumping all over me. That's and awesome. He was just giving me good vibes. Yeah. And then he was in the lead of the whole tournament and he goes, I hate these next fucking three holes. And he ended up just double, and double, 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 uh. double, double, double. But he, uh, he's kind of a legend in that tournament. Like, I remember because he's been there a bunch of times. Like Miles Teller was like, "Hey, have oh, you heard? he's the guy who gets so buckled at night at the bar. Oh, like yeah. they're just like, oh yeah, have you, did you see Oshie like, last night? But he plays like this. Like it's he's a, kind he's of a cool, he's got a lot of swag. He's got him. a lot of swag, but he, he kind of doesn't care what people no, think. No, he's, no, he's no. like it's natural swag. It's, it's like, natural he's just a cool, swag. Cool cat. Yeah. And he he would set up these like baseball games. Have you ever played like it's like a um it's like a beer game that kids would play in college. It's called baseball. Yeah. Either way, <laughs> all right, you know, it's yeah. the, the, the oldest I'm guy old, here. He used to do it with, he used to do it with like Wolf. base Coke. But base. like, <laughs> but like all these huge, all these huge the celebrities. Chalk line. Yeah. All these huge celebrities were like, Miles Teller were like, you think OSHA's going to like set up the baseball tonight? And like, everyone's talking about it. <laughs> and like, end up, we ended up playing, I think Baker Mayfield, a bunch of guys came out and it was a ton of fun, but that's just, OSHA, OSHA couldn't care if any celebrity came. But he'd be doing uh, that with his buddies at yeah. home. He was. And that's a bunch of guys came and it was a ton of fun. That's awesome. Hey, I uh, a little dirt here. Uh, ask about the quiet woman restaurant down here. If, if he's checked it out yet. <laughs> the quiet woman, the quiet woman restaurant. Yeah, that's um, there's not a ton of spots to go out and grab drinks, but that's that's one of them. And it's walking distance from where I live. It's kind of oh, uh, that's a dream. Yeah, like a cougar type. Whoa, 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 oh, hey, okay. hey. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, they film yeah. all those like real housewives out here. And oh, is that it the seems spot? like it's okay. kind of a hot spot. The address Wait, the address is like oh, wazing it right now. I got to look at a text. Saturday up. night, right? Actually, the bar down here is uh, oh, dude, pretty nice. This hotel last night. Nice. I come back from the game last night. It was jamming. Uh, I got this one. Uh, Who are you I'll, texting? Try, I'll try and sneak out. You guys should do Whaler. Whaler is a good one, too. There's so much puss there. <laughs> <laughs> and the last line is, if you're into that. <laughs> Whaler's fun. I mean, I just got here, so I'm kind of Learn the getting rope. a feel for it. But those are the two spots. Yeah. All right, one more. Uh, I heard uh, Sheets uh, in the, after the game. Uh, you're a big fan of those? With sheets? The, yeah, the, the, the Sheets in the, the after the room. You, know, the, you said Sheeta. Like are you talking about ask Sheets? About going, go, ask him about the Sheets. Sheets. With, sheets. We have after the games in the room. So when the, the I'm assuming the the fucking <laughs> who texted yeah, you that? I'm not, I'm not a snitch. Hang Strom or, or something. I'm not a snitch. Had to be Strom or I want to. Sheets is a sub place. I thought it was in like no, sheets, like the, like the game sheets, like the fucking game sheets. Oh. If you're talking about what I think you're talking, all right, about. you read that like you read the numbers on well, the podcast no, the other day. It says ask about going up. Uh, ask him. Don't do it again. Oh my god. Don't about the don't sheets. Do it again. W have after after game. W hat. That's what it says. The, the, I'm assuming that the game sheets. Well, you know what I'm talking about. You don't know talking about. You talk. Yeah, I think what you're talking about is like after every game, the next day, we go in and our basically our analytics are on the board. Okay. And basically, it's kind of like a tool to hold you accountable and let you know if you're playing well or what not. Are the okay. Can you? What are the analytics? I will Kind of like scoring chances for, scoring chances against, drive bys. They call it if you don't like hit a guy. There's like a bunch of different things, and there's like a team one. If that's what you're talking about, yeah, and then. I, I mean, some guys kind of get well, maybe tired get, of it. If, if it's Every on there, day. if it's on there and you're horrible, I mean, that's a tough look. The whole team's looking at it. Yeah, and then especially if it's happening like a lot. game after game, it's like you're coming in like holy. Shit. So what are you gonna Dave, piss that? Dave, that's Dave, Dave what it Tippett is. used yeah. to put that type of stuff on the board, and he used to give like a point for like if you had a hit and you know point for this, point for that, and it like you said, it kind of just keeps you accountable, and it also shows you from a point standpoint like were you engaged in or involved in the game in any manner. And it actually without scoring. And and I, yeah. I agree to what you're saying. It does hold you accountable with your teammates simply because all the results are on the board. So when it's public, everything changes. Yeah, it's yeah. I think I don't think it's a bad thing. It's like this is where you're at. This is what the numbers are. I'm not holding them from anyone. So that yeah. that that's exactly what it's there for. Just to kind of hold guys accountable. I don't know. It's new it for me. You off, apparently. <laughs> how, how'd, you, uh, yeah. how'd you get injured at the beginning of the year? I got slashed. I broke my pinky in a um, in an exhibition or? game against San Jose. Uh -huh. oh. We play them tomorrow. Pay <laughs> back. Well, they beat the Oilers. Right, my old buddy. This boys. was awesome. Thanks. It yeah. was it was great, great yeah. catching up last with you. Minute, we're, last minute. We're stuff. so happy you got that deal. Much deserved. And this team is on the up and up. And with the way things can turn around now so quickly, like this Anaheim team could be a playoff in like what seven eight years. <laughs>
Fuck, man. Make it a bit. No, yeah. but, hey. I knew right when you said no, that. I knew exactly what I you actually going. thought he was being serious. No, I, legit, be, no. I thought you were going to say this year. I'm like, ah, oh, this is kind of corny. No. Seven, eight years. No. <laughs> I think by next year, you guys could be sniffing around there. Thank I'm dead you, serious. If you can get Zegers off Killer, TikTok, thank wiggle dick him. Yeah, no. thanks for having me. Love you. Thanks, y'all. All right, before we go any further, here's a few words from my friends at BetterHelp. Spit and Chicklets is sponsored by BetterHelp. This time of year can be a lot for a lot of people, and it is natural to feel some sadness or anxiety about it. But adding something new and positive to your life can counteract some of those feelings. Therapy can be a bright spot amid all the stress and change. Something to look forward to, to make you feel grounded, and to give you the tools to manage everything going on. I've used therapy in the past. A bunch of my friends have. It's tough sometimes to take that first step, but once you do, I don't know one person who's regretted taking that step because everybody needs a hand sometime. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, you got to go to BetterHelp. Give BetterHelp the try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Chicklets today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Chicklets. Huge thanks to Killer for jumping on us when we were out in California a couple weeks ago. Great guy, man. Awesome. Like I said, he's got the record right now. He's at least tied for the most appearances. So thanks again, Killer, for jumping on us. And uh, we have to talk about the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh we talked about at the beginning of the year, Biz. They kind of just had to tread water until they got Vasilevsky back. And they were in a playoff position when they got him back. And I mean, I think they're going to probably cruise to the playoffs right now. He had 22 saves his first game back. How about this, though? Incredibly, Tampa Bay lit up Antti Ranta for eight goals on just 14 shots, making it the first time since they started tracking save percentages back in 55 56 that a team's only goalie in a game stopped less than 50% of the shots he faced. That's banana lands, man, in this day and age just to see that. But either way, we got to talk about the Lightning Kucherov. He just like, like a media just jumped to the front, the front of the line for uh, scoring points. He had what, he got two goals, four assists that game last week. I don't think he's underrated. I know he said people are talking he's underrated. I mean, you can't win a, a fucking MVP in Stanley Cups and be considered underrated, I don't think. I, I agree with that. I just think like there's so much discussion, rightfully so, for. You know, McDavid, Jack Hughes, McKinnon, and Leon. It's it's his name does go a little by the wayside. I think part of that is kind of similar to why like people write off Tampa and like they maybe even don't get discussed discussed enough is people get like sick and tired of like the same the same team winning all the time and like Kucherov lighting it up. It just it, it, it continues to happen and it almost becomes the norm where people don't even really mention it as much as they should, but his game, the, the last goal he had in that game, just like buzzing through the middle and just snapping one shelf, like so quick. And then his he, on the power play, he stands at the top of that circle. He's either ripping one-timers. He they, he has a ton of like, um, obviously like chemistry with with point, where the point's great at that shot tip is. You know, he just like hits a stick with it. It's perfect deflection. Um, I just... I just think it's crazy that me included going in the air like, oh, I don't know, it's been a right. long time and they finally had a summer off. But, you know, their times probably come to an end. Not really. And all we talked about was just kind of surviving till Vasilevsky got back. And they didn't just survive. They played well. He comes back and just an easy gives up two goals. They win 8-2. You, now you don't really have to play him as much as he wants to play either because they've proven that they can get good goaltending otherwise. But... Man, I'd be afraid. I'd be afraid of Tampa from other teams in the Atlantic Division. Yeah, and, and as far as the East is concerned, it's really any team's game. Like, there's no one team that seems that threatening to me. I mean, you know, Boston does have its holds. I think the goaltending will round out, but it always goes back to what you say too. So he's gotten 25 percent of the season to get healthy. And, you know, it might take him, you know, 10 games to get back to being himself. But all of a sudden at that point, you're at the halfway mark because he's probably going to be in and out, you know, 50, playing 50% 50 of the games, getting him to, to proper health and reacclimated. And then all of a sudden you're halfway through and then you hit the ground running as opposed to having to carry the load and, and do a full 82 game season for a goalie like that, who's usually playing about, you know, 60, 60 of the games. So, you know, that's that's one team we're looking at who relies heavily usually on one goaltender. So aside from that, like you said, it's been the Cooch and Point show and their, their chemistry is just off the, the off the chain. And, 
it seems like they just figured out a way to crack the code, so to speak. Like they always know where each other are going to be. They share a brain out there and just that overall core group, man, it's just, they're a bunch of winners and I wouldn't be shocked that they end up running through the East. They're, they're, no. they're, you know, they're, they got a good enough core and you know, they're going to figure out a way to do something at the deadline to keep this fucking train running. They always do. Always find something. They always find that Blake Coleman. Oh, what the, who the, who the fuck is this guy? Oh, well, how, about making, the, how about how about how good Hagel is there? Hagel. I mean, now Hagel's got, I, I fucked up a few podcasts ago when we were talking about this. I thought Hagel's new deal kicked in this year, but he still has this year making what? Two million, two and a half million bucks. Like that's a fucking bargoon. So overall, I think they got enough weapons, and uh, and and Coop's got the boys playing, man. I don't think I've ever seen um, Tanner Jano get hit as hard as McAvoy the other night. Did you see that? Into the, the bench. The woman's reaction front row of the class was hilarious. She was just like, "Oh, like Jano is a monster out there." Now, so is McAvoy too. But yeah, it just seems like Coop has such a a good idea of what's going on in that room. And like, we haven't even mentioned Stamkos. He's over a point per game. It's just, it's, it's the winning championship core that as all these changes have gone on around them, they remain there and they, they know what it takes to win. And they finally had that summer where, all right, we get time off. Now we go in, oh, big injury news, big cats out. And they're able to survive. He's now back. Now, I wonder how long, the, now what you're probably wondering is, he's going to be pushing to play. And now it's up to Coop where he's like, oh, my, I don't want to play this guy back. To, not necessarily back to back, but two, three, four starts in a row when you know that's what he's going to want. So you kind of go, it almost, once Coop knew that he'd get back to full health and be okay, he probably was like a little relieved. All right, well, I, at least I got 18, 20 games where I, I don't have him in my ear saying, I want to play, I want to play. He's not allowed to pull him. I mean, <laughs> that that's, that's one aspect. You're not even, you can't pull the guy. So... They were lucky enough to get through the, the 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 break without him, and I actually thought it would be a little longer for a back surgery, right? I don't yeah. know. Maybe it was something pretty minor, but when you're dealing with the back, you think to he have went him back, back for the gas quick. back home. No, uh, he went for a little no speedy speedy recovery. Seems like you, <laughs> hockey players come back early a lot a lot of, a lot of times. Like Mashan come it back a little bit early. It last seems time. like uh, nowadays they've been timetabling it longer. Just so you don't get the expectations the as high, because I feel yeah. like, every, like you said, all right, every guy is coming back sooner yeah. than expected. So, yeah. uh, Tampa's got a good thing going, man. We've been pumping a lot of teams' tires this episode. Yeah, seriously, should be a fucking gas station tonight. Uh, uh, Rob Rossi, he had a, a great piece of the Atlantic about uh, the Atlantic, the Athletica about uh, Sid Novi, and uh, you know, Ovi had a quote that I guess it went viral. He said. Uh, we saved the league, meaning him and Sid. Uh, now they come in, and I guess we're old news, but we saved it. It's up to those guys to come in and prove me wrong that we're not the best. Uh, I, I thought it was kind of funny in, in a way. Uh, I, I don't know if they saved the league. I, I don't know if the league was in a yes, dire position. Did. Okay, all I don't. Right, listen, do they mean? were great. They, yeah, I think listen, they 100%. Let me collaborate. All right, what was the league doing coming out of the lockout in 06, buddy? Uh, was, listen, I, I thought that Anson brought up a great point where the league did a good job. I, I'm sure planning that these guys were coming in to really nip in the butt, the, the hooking and obstruction interference and all that bullshit, which then resulted to uh, more power plays, but also protecting the league star, the, uh, the league stars to at least a better standard coming out of the lockout compared to what it was pre lockout to post lockout. The, would you not agree that there was a lot more calls and calling all the bullshit? So it allowed guys like Sid and Ovi to thrive in which they should have. And going back to whether they saved the league, well, fucking one guy is 36 years old and on, still he's on pace to have the best career year that a 36 year old has ever had. Sidney Crosby, his numbers speak for themselves. Three Stanley Cups. I don't know how many fucking league awards in that period of time. They literally changed the playoff format so that these two teams would meet at least at one point, which I think ended up kind of shooting themselves in the foot regarding that because they ended up meeting in the, in the second round as opposed to the conference finals. Each time they did meet, which was four, the winner of that series went on to win the Stanley Cup. We can remember every single one of those series. The fucking remember the hat dueling trick, hat tricks. The remember dueling hat tricks. hat tricks. Every hockey fan was glued to their fucking seats. And I think that, what, two, maybe three of those years, Washington won the President's Trophy of the league while Ovi went and fucking scored 60, 65 goals. And we talked about Sid still doing it. Ovi's chasing the fucking goal record. If you would have told somebody when Ovi came in the league that he would be breaking Wayne Gretzky's goal record, they would have laughed in your face. 
They would have they would have took face, like, they would have took every career. goddamn credential you have away from you so you could not enter an NHL building. All right, might, might have already happened to you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yes. I think that some people might think that they think that it's cocky and they don't like hearing hockey players talk like that. Every fucking word that came out of Ovi's mouth was was 100% accurate. Yes, they saved the NHL. Fuck, Washington might not even be in Washington if he wouldn't have showed up. Like, what the and fuck Pittsburgh were they doing? might not be in Pittsburgh. They, they would not be in Pittsburgh. It, it's, fuck it. it's, think of how much money Sid this. has put in Mario's pocket. Think, think about that one. They came into the league with these... The expectations. I mean, the expectations were Sid, for Sid were even higher. I think, and 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 they were they were sky high for Ovi too. Ovi's going to go on to become the greatest goal scorer in the history of the National Hockey League, and I think a high majority of people would say he's actually not even the best out of both of them. That's how incredible these two have been. Like they came in, they, there was a jolt of life into the league. The the rookie years were incredible. Hundred points for Sid. Ovi Ovi scores. He, how many scores rookie year? All right, check that quick. But it, right off the right off the bat, dude, they just came out flying, and ev everyone's like, "Holy shit!" With all these ex expectations, and they're still somehow like better than we thought. Yeah, the league wasn't exactly doing great. Now, ironically, Ra mentioned it. The Stanley Cup final that first year after the lockout was phenomenal. Viewership was brutal because it was yeah. Carolina Edmonton, but it was seven games of awesome hockey with um, the Oilers goalie getting injured and, and, and Ty Conklin coming in and all these crazy storylines, but it was Sid and Ovi. And then they continued to do it, and then it never broke. And you want to talk about uh, Patrick Kane, Jonathan Taves, Kopitar, Bergeron, all these guys throughout these 15, 20 years who've made a huge difference. None of them even sniffed these two. They don't even come close. It's these two... And then go down, 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 and it's everyone else. And when they came in, if you ended up saying 20 years from now, this would be the case, people wouldn't have believed you, as Biz said with the OV goal record. And it's just, it's wild to see they're still doing it. With Sid's rookie year, he had 102 points, and he didn't win the Calder. He had Cause, over, because Ovi did. Ovi had 106 with 51 goals. 52. As rookies. 52. As rookies here. So... It's and and it's also the 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 I mean think about how many years there was probably about I mean he was even doing it last year Ovi but especially in those first like ten to twelve years he was trucking guys while <laughs> scoring sixty goals he was taking ninety second Killing shifts people. he'd have three hits he'd have fucking two plays that he made and then he'd end up scoring the one t I I honestly think that they'll for Ovi when he retires and in, in um wash they'll put his number where he would score all his one-timer goals didn't they put 99 behind the net for wayne gretzky i thought just the last game i thought just his last i game. think for the last game they should put number eight in his house where he scored all those one-timer goals i mean as far as sid i think you maybe put the 87 where the mcdonald's logo is where he's doing the mcdonald's thing every warm-up because he's so superstitious but their ability to 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 adjust to the way the game's being played. Think about how much faster the game's gone. Now, credit to Sid because he doesn't look a step behind at all. I would say that maybe Ovi's starting to look a little bit slower than he used to be buzzing around out there. But just the 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 sheer determination and and commitment to the game for Sid to keep it to this caliber. I said this. If Sid continues his pace this year at 36, becomes the best 36-year-old player to ever exist because his numbers say that, even better than Wayne's, if he does what he's done this year for two more years and somehow they fucking win another cup, he is 1,000% on the Mount Rushmore of hockey. I don't care who you have to take off of the Mount Rushmore, but there, it's undeniable because right now you would have Gordie Howe, Bobby Orr, Wayne Gretzky, and Mario Lemieux. I don't want to d debate on who you take off of that list, but buddy, come on here. No? Am I crazy? No, I don't think you're crazy. Argue I mean, it's, it's on there right now. Very valid argument. Yeah. No, no, no. Not, no I mean, you're right, not like crazy, saving but not this. the league, I think, <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit. Like the league wasn't going to fold had those two not come around. But had those two not come around, dude. No, they, it, it could be way different. Yeah, and, and obviously I'm, I'm older, a little older than you guys. And when I hear save the league, I, who do I think of? What Magic Johnson and Larry Bird? That's because they literally saved the NBA. So I, I, I think of it in that terms. I guess I mean no, Sid, they they elevated the game. They're they made like it better. Comparable they, though. What's that? 
Like those two and Crosby Ovechkin are comparable in those two leagues. Yeah, no, listen, I, I'm not trying to d- diminish it. I, I, again, I'm comparing it to the NBA, which the NBA was a drug riddled league. They didn't even play the finals on live TV. It was a disaster. And that league was close to folded. I, I, I guess what I mean is the, the NHL wasn't going to fold uh, if they didn't have uh, Sid and Crosby. It would have been way worse. It would have been less, uh, less talented and less exciting. But I, I think the league would have continued to go on had they not been there. I guess that's, that's I think my point. That, uh, I think Sid put about 300 sheets in Mario's pocket. Uh, in helping that regard. I think that between Ovi and Sid, they they put billions of dollars in the owner's pocket by saving the league. I would say that we talked about the Macar quinn Hughes debate on the Norris and that third guy's way far down. I would probably say in this period of time, Sid, Ovi, um, Hawks way down, Hawks dynasty, and then maybe LA dynasty for saving the game out West. Would you say that that's a pretty fair comparison in that span of time? Like what other things that stand out to you from a saving the league perspective? Because you can't deny the Hawks three championships because I feel like dynasties always gain attention. And then, of course, Tampa, they won two modern day dynasty. But other than that, like what are some? I mean, like I said, I didn't think it, it was groundbreaking it was, moments. You mean? Needed well, yeah, them, like think of the, the, the major things that have kept people glued in. Like the Taves and Kane. David getting to Edmonton. Granted, they haven't won anything. Like that was like, that was nuts. Like he had the same. He had the same Crosby talk, and he's he's done it offensively. They okay. you know, They haven't won, but in terms of like living up to the hype and being like, holy shit! Like the Oilers are like really relevant again. McDavid's right there. Okay. Patrick Kane. You know. Yeah. Part of the Hawks with with the USA Hockey connection and. And, and, you know, Austin Matthews has said that was his idol, right? So that's, like, that's one thing you look at. Yeah, that's, I mean, I just look back at those two and what they've done and then battling in the playoffs. Like, the league could not have scripted it better. They're in the same division. Like, how lucky are they that that happened, right? If Sid's, if Sid's in Pittsburgh and Ovi's um, on the Ducks or something, it's just different. But they ended up battling one-on-one so often. And then there was also, uh, R.A., you mentioned a quote from... Barry Trotz that he was talking to Ovi after the 2014 Olympics in Sochi and he said um, like you got to look at at how you're doing things and how we're doing things and it's not going to work and go back and look at our series with Sid and look at how he played and like look at the defensive awareness and just battling and you just can't we're we're not going to win the Stanley Cup with you just scoring and not really doing much else and Ovi changed his game and they got that title yeah Absolutely, man. I mean, like I said, I, don't, I know people are going to like come at me. It's not diminishing them. It's just, you know, I, I go automatically go to saving the league. You think of the NBA and whatnot. But uh, you, don't, rumor- you don't think Crosby has done what Magic Johnson did for the league? That's what How I'm saying. How long did Magic Johnson plays- play? Who till that? 90? No, 90, like for like 91? length of time, his career. Oh. He's, for his first season was 79, 80, and I think uh, 91, he retired. When he, well, so he did it for 12, time. 13 years? Yeah, yeah. Sid might yeah. do it for seven more years. Yeah, it, I, I, think- I get it. It's more the state that the NBA was in compared to the oh, NHL. Okay. It was fair that's enough. All. It was, it, fair they, enough. That, that league could have been gone if those guys didn't come along. That, that's coming all, out that's of a lockout I mean. on the outdoor live life network. Remember the <laughs> OLN? Remember they were on the OLN? <laughs> I got it. And the jerseys tattoo. they got right out of the lockout. That like the sweat was staying in yeah. them, and they were twenty pounds by the end of the game. Like, yeah. the, the league was a joke. It was a disaster no. at that point. D- definitely a lack of laughing stock element to it. No, no doubt about that. But uh, Biz, you might have saved hockey by being on TNT. You and Wayno, man, you guys have been killing oh, it pump, on that. Pump the I fucking mean, brakes, buddy. Pump the fucking uh, brakes. All right, I will. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm busting your balls. No, Alex Tuck, obviously a friend of the program. Great interview with him. But Curtis McDermott, man, I mean. A guy's a tough guy. He played three minutes and 30 seconds, seven shifts. He had one shot of goal, and he got the game winner on a nice, nifty move, too. And he said he felt like it was an out-of-body experience. He said, that's fucking hilarious. Well, I think we should roll the interview. Soda and bringing the man who had the game winner, Curtis McDermott. First goal since March the 20th, but a sweet one. I mean, a beautiful move. Did, did you have that one saved for a special moment? Because that was – you busted out some uh, pretty silky paws on that one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, it was kind of an over body experience right there. So. <laughs> <laughs> Dermy, how long until you go into Bednar's o- office and start requesting some power play time after that one? Oh, probably quite a while. I need to get a few more than before I do that. Well, it, it had you listed as a defense, seventh defenseman. Were you playing D or forward that shift? Because I know you hop around quite a bit. 
Yeah, I know uh, Ford, so uh, kind of been in the lineup as a Ford as a lead, so uh, I don't know why they haven't changed that yet, but <laughs> I'll play wherever. Curtis, it's a great snipe in the game tonight. You played three minutes and 30 seconds. Like, that's tough to be effective and play that little. Like, how do you keep yourself fresh and in the game and mentally focused? You know, I think just uh, being good on the bench and uh, being positive with the guys, staying engaged mentally that way. And, um, you know, when I do get out there, just keeping it simple and uh, keeping the legs moving, um, create some energy on the four check. And, you know, our line, that's our job. And um, just get in there and create some havoc. And, um, you know, it's pretty simple, but it's effective at times as well. So you're talking about keeping that energy in the bench. Are you talking to your own teammates? You're chirping guys in the other bench as well. No, just uh, my own teammates. But if something does happen on the ice, I'll, uh, I'll have to stand up and say something here and there. <laughs> Curtis, Brian Boucher here. Uh, you know, we know your core, your team, uh, well documented. But there's eight new faces in the lineup on this Avalanche team tonight. Uh, with some new guys here, where do you assess this team's play is at uh, at this point in the season? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of new guys, but they bought in right away, and um, they've been gelling with the structure of like, our game. And, uh, you know, it's just next man up type mentality here, and everyone uh, is on the same page. And, you know, we're all working for one goal, and that's to win each game and do our best. So I think uh, at this point in the season, we're doing a pretty good job. Well, listen, we really appreciate you coming on with us. Congrats on the win and the goal. Enjoy the night. Thanks, man. Amazing. Yeah, thank you guys. Beauty. Oh, like you know, such a such a fun thing, man. I mean, he'd been in and out of the lineup. I think he'd only played four games up until that point, and he's typically a defenseman. But so far this year, they've been having him play play up, and you know, he finds himself in the lineup. I think it might have been his first shift of the third period, and all of a sudden he gets it right in the slot, and he goes forehand to backhand, and it's a it's a big moment because think of all the, all the practice time and all the bag skating and all the you know not being in the lineup and having to schlep around, and finally you get your number called, and then in those games you're playing fucking three three and a half minutes. So there's uh you know there's a lot of not so fun times playing that role, but you know the few times a year where you get to shine and have your moment, it was a special a special night for him because he got the game winner so i just thought it was a cool thing and we throughout the two broadcasts we had um we had the thing with wayne when he was fucking chirp me about the olympic lifting i don't know if you guys caught that i used well, to do say snatch and clean and jerk and like trying to keep a straight face no i mean that's what it was did you not do those exercises oh the cleans and yeah the, it was brutal Brutal. So when you were doing the cleans, would you also do the p part where you push up? No, we actually at BU with Mike Boyle, we we did dumbbell snatches one arm. We didn't do the overhead bar, um, or bar. What what am I? Yeah, we did dumbbell snatches, but for cleaning, we used the barbell, and we'd only go under the chin. Okay, I was doing all of it. I was actually training with an Olympic lifter. I forget the guy's last name. His name was Jason. And it was in Niagara Falls, and he had his own warehouse where we would go, and it would be all the platforms. We would be doing the heavy front squatting, the heavy back squatting, clean and jerk, press over your head, like hold the position, the snatching, like driving your hips through, the heavy deadlifting. And I just like, you know, I think that there were so many phases of, of, of how to train and how to, you know, get to the national hockey league level where I think that that actually hindered me in the long run because of how much tightness it created. So it ended up fucking being a, a, a joke on, on TNT because Wayne thought it was funny that I said snatch. Uh, back to McDermott. I loved how he was just like, uh, yeah, I'm listed as a defenseman. I don't care where I'm listed. I just want to play. And yeah. the other cool thing was, Cogliano, who had his neck broken in the friggin' playoffs last year, he's played great. He gave him that pass. So it was a pretty cool celebration. And just oh, that's Co awesome. Cogs, man, that guy's career and what he's done, and he got robbed out of that Iron Man streak he had going when he got suspended oh, for that hit. He's come back from a broken neck and still played, like, meaningful big-time hockey for the Avs. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, the other one we had on was Tuck, who you know he he fucking he carried the he carried the league on his shoulders on the TNT broadcast. He did the pregame interview, he had uh, an apple, then he had the game winner, and then did the postgame interview. And let's run it because I think that there was a little bit of a shot at ticket prices maybe in Buffalo. We get to ask. Oh, because Alex Tuck is joining us right now. You can ask him what the spark was. We bring him in, Alex. Congratulations on the win, the goal, huge game, twenty four minutes. 
59 seconds played. Your big part of it, Biz, go right ahead. Well, first of all, Tucker, that broomstick on the top upper lip is unbelievable. And uh, <laughs> as well as that pumpernickel celebration for the game winner. Now, you guys were a little bit sleepy through the first half of this game, though. How much did that Pey uh, Peyton Krebs situation, taking that shot in the face, Josh in the box with uh, Christopher Latang, get the bench going and get you guys fired up? Yeah, no, uh, Krebs is an energy guy through and through and uh, in, the lo in the locker room, on the ice. Uh, he's always giving it his all, and uh, it's really good to see him go out there and make a huge impact. You know what? Sometimes it's, it, it goes uh, it overlooked what, what these guys do if they're not score uh, showing up in the score sheet, but they're making some plays happen, and they're making some things happen, and I thought he got the momentum going in the right way, and then uh, we were able to follow that up, and then our captain, you know what? He's spoken between the second and third, and uh, I think we all wanted to run through a wall for him. He's, he's one of the best guys I know. He's one of the best teammates I've ever had, and uh, he's an unbelievable leader, and he, he leads by example, and uh, you know what? He showed how resilient we are as a group, uh, and he had a big goal for us there in the third. Alex, Brian Boucher here. I don't know if you noticed in the pregame, these guys didn't let me ask you a question. They were hogging the air, so I finally get a chance to, to talk to you. What, 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 did, what did your captain say? Can you share it with us? Yeah, we just didn't want to sit back. You know, we wanted to dictate the pace of play, and we wanted to dictate the game. And, uh, you know, when we're controlling the pace and we're, when we're going as a five, six-man unit, uh, we're really dangerous. And we have to all, we all commit as one. And, uh, you know what, I thought we, we got a little short bench there. Uh, we lost the guy uh, in the second period, and, you, you know, we said screw it, and we just kept going, kept working uh, for each other. You know what, and it's, it's, we've seen a lot of doubters. We, we heard some boos after the, at the end of the second period when we were getting off the ice, and uh, that pissed us off a little bit. So we wanted to come out with some vengeance and uh, sh show, the, show the Buffalo City how uh, resilient we are as a group. Alex, I don't care what uh, Biz is saying. I love that stash. It looks great. <laughs> but hey, it's for a good cause. <laughs> I love it. I want to talk about your power play. No Tage Thompson. How does that change the philosophy with your group as you guys go out there with the man advantage? You know, I, I think we have a really, um, really skilled depth group, and we can have any guy jump in on, on the power play. And obviously, you got a guy like Tage Thompson. That takes a huge loss in both five-on-five. Uh, man up and man down. He does it all out there, but we have to have guys, some of these young guys step up and they're able to do so. And uh, we had a little bit of a change there. Victor Olsen made a great play and uh, we had a couple uh, good looks before that. And then obviously Skinny just buried it. So um, yeah, it was good. It was good to get some momentum on the power play there. I love the stash. I love the emotion. You talked to us in pregame. You told us how much this city means to you. You did hear the booze, but how great was it to see a packed crowd in the third period start to get loud there in Buffalo. Oh, yeah. Obviously, we know there's some Penguins fans. They're not too far down the road, but I didn't hear much in the third period, so that was really good. Uh, probably heard some people yelling from the end of their TVs as well. So, I, I, you know what? It's not only got people in the crowd, you know, because it's not always a, the most uh, affordable, but it's really good to see how much support we have, and we're going to continue to get more and more because we're going to continue to win. Alex, thanks wow. so much. Really appreciate it. Congrats, man. Great Th game. Thanks, guys. Woo, that fired me up, man. Yeah, I'm, ready to run I'm jumping on the Sabres Saber bandwagon now. <laughs> so, I mean, great post-game interview. Talked about hearing getting booed, the emotions it created in the locker room. Uh, the captain, Opozo, who ended up scoring that game as well, standing up and talking, saying, let's shove it up these guys' ass for booing us off the ice. We need to be better. And then, like I said, I don't know, R.A., the, the ticket prices, like have you seen what they cost in Buffalo? Too expensive? I mean, they can't I mean, be more I than Beals, uh, or Bills tickets. I know. I mean, I think tickets are expensive everywhere nowadays. I mean, between the fees and all the other shit, I you know, they got to make them cheaper. But obviously, they're not, they're not going to go down. But what a beautiful duster he has above the lip, though, huh? Oh that yeah, stash. the old <laughs> lip sweater. So <laughs> it, I thought it was cool. But but Buffalo continues to be a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde show too. Yeah, where win yeah. one, lose one, lose two, win two, and I don't think that they did a good enough job of going to address the 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 filling in pieces around the, the young talent. Although they have a lot, of, still a lot of young talent. They just called up two other young guys. And then they had Benson, who, who's came in. We talked about his, him being one of the nicest first goals ever. But you look at a team like Detroit, like look at the guys they went and got. Like the older, more experienced guys, like the Goss Despairs. They went and got Perron. They went and got They're Lighting it up, Petrie. by the way. Who? Goss Despair. Yeah, he's, he's, he's lighting up too. So they... I don't think Buffalo, although it's not panic time and there's still plenty of time for them to kind of get to this, the core years, I just think that moving forward, they really need to make sure they address filling in those areas because that, I think that that's the reason right now for the inconsistency. That and Bush talked about it on the broadcast in a, in a sense that they might have put in 
uh, Levi in a, in a tough situation. Well, re really both goaltenders because they're all young guys. They don't have a veteran to lean on. At least in, in um, I know Huso, we talk about Detroit, like at least he's got Reimer to go to. Reimer's been around for what, 12, 14 years? Yeah, yeah, so, he's been around. Yeah, anyway, uh, it was it was a, a fun couple games on the broadcast, and I just wanted to talk about uh, that Tuck interview specifically, and then Dermy fucking going velvet and you know what? Uh, you know what sucks for the Sabers too is that Jack Quinn tore his Achilles over yeah. the summer. I mean that that kid scored at a crazy rate in the AHL, had a good year last year, and like that was going to be a big next step. So like they're really missing him too. Oh, for sure. They got they have so like I said they have so many of these young guys and I can understand not wanting to to trade or or leverage any of that future until you actually see what you have. I think that from a hold perspective is they're viewing this as a, as a eh, it's not a make or break year to make playoffs. What's that? I got Portnoy calling me. Let's see what he wants. Oh, oh. What's up? You're live to tape on Spitting Chicklets. You're live to tape on uh on the on, on the, what on what good one on what on, on the um telephone. Telethon. Yeah, telethon. Oh, what's going on? So I have a question. The Chicklets guy Grinelli's up here pitching, and they have this great thing. If you buy five hundred dollars worth of merch of Chicklets, you're entered into a contest to go to a Bruins game with. And I was like drum roll. I'm like, oh, what a great thing, Biz and Wit. No, it's just the bald guy. So I think what we do, and I love him. I love Rear. Ray's listening to this. He's very offended right now. I, why? I said I love him, but you should go as well. I would love to go. I wasn't invited on this. I was just told so that this we was. Add it? We got four hours. Both of you guys go with the fan. Add it in there. I'm in. All hey, right, do hey, 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 do this too. You. Hold on, Biz has something to say. Hold Love on, you too, Dave. Uh, I gotta, I gotta tell you, tell, Biz. You say it. I'll repeat it because I got the headphone in. So tell Dave that I'll put up for like, do like an auction. Grinelli has to think of how much they have to spend to enter in this. He where hung somebody up. will. He hung up. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I'll go uh, fuck myself. Biz, I went away. Oh no, that I'm I'm psyched, man. I I know I love I love always meeting the fans, hanging out. You know, I'll fucking I'll hang out with a fucking statue, Biz. What was the thing with with Bush with his phone? Was he looking at highlights dur during the oh yeah? During oh, the that's show? the other <laughs> thing I forgot to mention. Yeah, he, <laughs> sometimes you're just trying to see how a play developed or broke broke down. If we're gonna revisit it, and and so you know to what you're talking to and how you're gonna like time the the breakdown of the of the clip. And I think he was just doing that, and it just so happens that he he swiped it to close it. And then it amplified the noise, and uh, you know we had a good laugh on the broadcast. But uh, that's the professionalism we bring, you know. Oh, absolutely, man! He was I, great. Bush was awesome. Uh, oh, he is. I ran into him out now. We were at Newport Beach when he, him and uh, Fedora come off the uh, fill, the Flyers bus uh, doing some media stuff. He, I could not believe how friggin' funny he was uh, in the interview too. But oh, he's uh, so funny, handsome bastard too. Oh, oh, no doubt. Another uh, big note here. The road to the Winter Classic is coming back, man. I'm psyched for this. It's going to be on TNT first episode, Biz, uh, December 13th. It's also going to be on uh, Sportsnet 1 up in Canada on December 14th. I hope it's as good as it was on HBO, man, because that show is fucking dynamite. We need, we need a show like this for hockey, like sort of what Hard Knocks has football. I mean, so many personalities, the game and uh, the, you know, the audio, the video. We, we, we need more of this shit out there. Absolutely. Oh, completely agreed. Yeah, it's it's nice when they get the full access. So I'm I'm interested to see what they came up with. And hey, everything that TNT does is first class and their film crew and their editors are amazing. So I'm really looking forward to this. Uh jerseys, I would say er, early win to Seattle Kraken. Maybe Big with time. The, maybe with the pants and, and the whole getup. Maybe Vegas makes a late run, but I know you guys like the jersey talk, but the Krakens look awesome. Yeah, nod to the uh, Seattle, Seattle Metropolitans way back in the day. The first uh, American team to win a Stanley Cup many moons They got ago. the red numbers on the sleeve. That's what looks so good on those. The Vegas ones are a little underwhelming, I think. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't for know. Vegas, I just, you, you expect yeah, you think they would add something a little louder maybe considering it's, yeah, like you know, save try the to gold sell buckets them. for something what? like that. Like save the gold buckets for something like that. <laughs> there you go. Uh, well, we were just talking about our listeners, our fans. Well, speaking of our fans, uh, we got to talk to a few of them over the phone not so long ago. Biz, why don't you explain what was going on here? Uh, as far as so well, we've studio. been asking uh, uh, G to help set this up, and, and we were able to do it in Boston at Kirk Minahan Studio, where we have Chicklets fans call in. I, I think, what, a few hours before we ended up sitting down, we tweeted out the number, and you know we got obviously some some silly calls. Some people were just more excited to say what's up and didn't really have a question prepared. Some people were just barking area codes at us like we knew where the fuck that it was coming from. Uh, but this is something we want to continue. And obviously with people having more pre preparation at the fact that we are going to keep doing this, we'll probably get some, well, 
maybe questions with a little bit more thought, but we did have some awesome ones. We're going to air them for you guys. I think it's about 30 minutes. But for me, the, the coolest thing that came out of this is there was a band that sent us uh, a clip of a song that they wanted us to use for their intro. Now, this is an independent band. Uh, I heard the song for the first time and I loved it and I sent it over to G and, you know, it just kind of got put on the to-do list. Well, this guy who's the lead singer of the band ended up calling in to remind me of this song. And I uh, hadn't even heard it. No. R.A. and, and I, because I think you guys forgot to mention it. Yeah, we never, it was on the list of to-do to get back to you after the holidays. But uh, so because this guy called, it got the discussion going and G was able to pull up the song and we have this whole creative breakdown of us testing it out. I love the fucking song. And this is more towards the end of the caller thing. So we hope you enjoy all the other ones. But this to me is more how to like, it's going to get you guys involved. We want your opinion on it. We love the song and the creative process of more about how we start the podcast and how long we should use it for. So that's enough. I'll say about it. Uh, we'll talk to you outside of the calls and and uh, and hopefully we can get some great feedback on what we did. So thank you to G and Wit. I want to say it was your idea to do this. So we're going to keep doing it and we uh, look forward to hearing from all you knuckleheads. All right, before we go any further, here's a few words from our friends at Labatt. Sadly, the warm weather has come and gone, but that doesn't mean the Labatt blue light should stop flowing. Whether you're on the golf course, at beer league, or watching some football, you can't find a better beer than a fresh Labatt Blue Light. Lots of things are better together. Hockey, food, golf. But if you really want to take things to the next level, drink some Labatt Blue Lights with your friends and live life to the power of we. I can't stop thinking about all these blue lights. I crushed that Thanksgiving. Next baseball game, hockey game, whatever I go to, boom. Labatt Blue Lights all over the place. And what's better than enjoying some cold ones with the people you love? I'll tell you what, nothing. Remember, take a page out of the Labatt Blue Light book and enjoy your beers together so you can live your life to the power of we. All right, I have to say, I got to jump in. And I, I think Merle's is the biggest advocate of this. It's the holiday season. You can never, never, never show up empty handed. You're going to the in-laws, you're going to your girlfriends, even you're going to a buddy's house. It's the holiday season. You can't show up empty handed. What better gift? The gift that keeps on giving than some Labatt Blue Lights, whether it's a 30 pack, a 12 pack, sometimes just a sixer. There's just the gift that keeps on giving and it's Labatt Blue Light, baby. Absolutely. And you can find Labatt Blue Light at LabattUSA.com slash finder. Good to go, guys. Yeah. First call. Oh, we have, hey. a call. we have a caller. First caller. You're our first ever caller. What's your name? Where are you from? What's your question? Hello. <laughs> What's your name, buddy? He's talking to Spitting Chicklets. Oh, it's Eric. What's up, Eric? Where are you from? <laughs> What's hey, your Eric. question? Hey, hey, big boy. <laughs> Crap, I didn't know I was first. Um, I'm from Pittsburgh. Okay. okay. Penguins fan? Yes, sir. Okay. Are we interviewing you? <laughs> Are you stoned? I, I, I don't know. I was just going to ask you guys, like, I mean, wit, I guess. Um, what, like, I don't know if you're around him that much, but, like, what's, like, the funniest story you have of uh, Mario? Oh. I, I, I got to think. I mean, I can't be doing the what's the funniest story you got about certain guys, but I would say the funniest story related to Mario was when Ryan Malone was – kind of in one one night and laying on the ground, <laughs> reaching up and grabbing crackers and eating them at Sergey Gonchar's Christmas party. And Mario just loved them. But everyone was like, it's a tad aggressive around uh, number 66. But Bugsy was just an all-timer. And so, I, I, I mean, listen, I probably said two words to Mario and he maybe said one to me. So I, I don't really have that much in terms of uh, legendary Mario Mario Lemieux funny stories. I think I think a funny one was when you were there when he got called in about the partying, and and Malone came out and he was all worried and he sat because he sat next to Mario and he's like, oh fuck, he's like, I just got pee pee whacked. <laughs> like, they're threatening to send me down and 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 Mario's like, you ain't going anywhere, kid. <laughs> so like he got the green light for Mario yeah. even though he was out being a complete disaster. Yeah, he said, well. well then I got, I, I'm not going anywhere. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> he, got, he got the green light. Have Wait. you, have you ever met Mario? Uh, no, actually I, uh, my uncle is pretty good friends with him. He, uh, was with the penguins for a while, like coaching and stuff. So I've been wanting to meet him, but it hasn't happened yet. 
All right. Well, hopefully you do. Good luck with that. <laughs> Thanks for calling, Eric. Wait, wait, did you get stuffed in a bathroom on I, like I, a plane I, with Mario? Or something? I asked them to go to lunch at Penguins Camp, and like everybody was like, <laughs> "Biz, like you think this fucking legend is going to be going to a guy who only got one per diem pack? Like your fucking return flight to Wilkes?" He probably thought going, you were the trainer. He's like, oh, "I'll buy you lunch, <laughs> but I'm not going with He's you." He's trying to get a back rub. I'm fucking on his table. Yeah, I got stuck on the on the private. It, I don't. It wasn't his private plane, or maybe it was on the way to the. I was in the Young Stars game, and Sid and, and uh, Gino, maybe Gino. Yeah, Sid, Gino, and uh, Mario were obviously going. And then I had a first class seat from the league. I said I should have just, I should have taken that because once I got to the jet, I realized I counted the number of bodies and then I counted the seats. They're like, no, there's one in the bathroom. If you shut the toilet, it's a seat. So I just sat there the whole time. And then when anyone had to hose, I just got up and waited, <laughs> maybe sat in their nice, legit PJC. So it, it was still, uh, I was the, the guy who deserved to be in the bathroom on that flight. So I can't really complain that much. Next up, we got a caller from the 815. 815, talk to us. Yo, no way, that's me. All right, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> that's you. What's going on, man? Oh, nothing much. I just got off work. My girlfriend actually sent me this like phone number. I was like, oh, I didn't know it's real. It oh, is sick. Yeah. Does What's she up, does she know you like spitting chocolates? Well, well, I'm Ch I'm Charles. I'm from uh, the eight one five, which is actually south of the six zero eight. So I played hockey at the six zero eight. What is the six zero eight? Um, that's Wisconsin. Okay. All right. So Ooh. do you think that most people so, like, you're Badger, talking to? If, Badger conference? I know, but if you said, hey, yeah, I'm huh? from the six zero eight, do you think most people know that that's Wisconsin? <laughs> Oh, people from Wisconsin, definitely. Okay, there we oh, go. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> no, I, I didn't even really have a You problem. don't either of us are from uh, Wisconsin, <laughs> right? <laughs> hey, making a murder. Mm -hmm. Badger South, baby. What do you got for us? Yeah, nothing much. How you guys doing? Uh, uh, we're doing no, great. You have a great day. What do we got next? <laughs> what do you think? It was the potty line? Call to fucking talk to people? <laughs> All right, next caller up from the 802. 802. Go, what do you got for go us? Go away, boys. Riley from Stowe, Vermont. Yeah, spark it up. Quick, quick little question for the fellas. Yeah, all right, I know you like that New England vibe. Uh, fellas, coming, coming from an official myself, who referees or linesmen were you guys' favorite when you guys were in the league? Uh, oh, God. Um, Wes. I love Wes McCauley. McCauley. Great guy. There you go. Yeah, he was, he was, he, he, he'd on. shoot you straight on the ice. He makes the funny calls. Fighting, you know, he does that whole like act once in a while. I think, I think Wes played it. I don't know where he played, but he definitely played hockey at some point. He was my favorite ref. Um, I always suck. I mean, I know, I know Wes McCauley, but I had a hard time remembering their names. Where if I saw them, I'd be like, "Hey, what's going on, man?" Uh, but they were all so nice to me. I used to hang out and talk with them fucking during the TV timeouts, get them their water and Gatorade. So they were all amazing. I don't really have one. To, I don't really have one guy in particular, though. Wes McCauley is kind of like the guy who, like, gets the mic'd up all the time, isn't he? So uh, where do you ref? Yeah. Like, what ages do you ref? Yeah. Uh, I work in uh, – I actually work in the USHL currently, like, full-time, work in the USHL. That's good for you. So, like, what's the path like if you ever – you know, I imagine you want to be an NHL referee someday. So do you hope to go from the USHL to, like, the AHL or the coast? Do you kind of work your way up as a player would? Yeah, you know, it's a ladder, right? So you kind of go from junior and you kind of, for some, you you kind of skip over the college route and you kind of go into pro. It's so like, you know, you'll go from junior to into the coast and then, you know, maybe you'll get a sprinkle of the American League and, you know, hopefully, hopefully you get your shot, you know? It's, does it mentally... It's kind of tough getting up and... and does, does, does it fuck with you mentally that everyone hates you guys? Like, it's not fair. <laughs> it's not fair. I'm not saying it is, but everyone hates the refs. Like, they're always complaining about the refs. Like, does that, are you like a dentist where it's like a little depressing? <laughs> do they pay for no, therapy? You know, or do you love it? Do they pay for therapy? <laughs> no, nobody's paying for my therapy. I'll tell you that. But uh, when it gets to February, it gets a little tough on the mental, but... You know, it ain't bad. Most of the guys like it. It gets you fired up, you know, kind of keeps you moving on the ice, kind of keeps you a little chip on your shoulder. You know, you want to you wanna fight back a little bit. It gives you a little fight. Yeah, you, you know? can't take the shit from the refs. You can't be the pushover ref. You no. got to give it back. I mean, from the coaches, excuse me. You got to give it back to them. Yeah, you got to feed them a little bit, feed them their own medicine. But, you know, sometimes there is a line, right? Sometimes you're just going to eat the shit sandwich and that's going to be it, you know? So it, it's a bit of a grind, though, at that level to work your way up. Like, you have to do it because you love it. 
Yeah, it ain't about the money. I don't do this for the money at all. I, so I, 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 at what I, point? I, I love going up the ring. At, at what point, if you get stopped at the ranks, would you consider being like, oh, it's too much of a schlep to keep doing it? Like, how old are you? I, I'm currently 21. Okay. Oh, so, got, you, yeah, you I got, got, got you're a young buck. You got 35 years he can do this. So, basically, uh, yeah, well, if, I, if, I got time. if you said you were you were like 42 and couldn't get out of the USHL, I'd be like, hey, it might be time to just get a 9 to 5. But you got plenty of time. Do you want to be a ref or a I linesman? Do you want to be a ref or a linesman? I'm a linesman. I'm a, I'm a career linesman. The linesmen, are, they're I'm cooler guys. They're, they're cooler. They're yeah. just more Thank chill. You. They don't have to be the Thanks. bad guy. That's right. I love playing good cop. I'll tell you that. I love Unless playing Unless you got cop. Boyd Gordon taking face-offs from your hands. He's fucking, you drop it on the wrong hey. side by a, a millimeter. He's fuck you and you up and down the ice. Yeah, it will take my hand off too, eh? Yeah. All right, buddy. Thank you so much for the call. Good luck in the journey. Yeah. All right, next up, we got a caller from the 763. 763. Go ahead. What's up, boys? Uh, Caden calling in from University of Minnesota. Go Gophers! Fuck the Sioux this weekend. I Question love it. I have for you, boys, was uh, who was the best locker room guy that you guys ever encountered in the league? Best locker room guy? Ah, uh, Yance. Yeah, I never got to play with him. Fuck, I, I think the, 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 the oh Jesus, the <laughs> dynamic between Donor and Yan sitting next to each other, and they just they, they you know they just fed off each other. Those were the two best, in my opinion. Always kept it light. Yans would, you know, mutter things under his breast and or breath, <laughs> breath. <laughs> under and his titties. Oh my God. titties, titties. I, I, I think it's Ryan Malone. It's just everyone loved him. He got everyone involved. It was yeah. always his stories. I, I yeah, it's, it's harder to think of a better one. What about Merle's? Merle seems like a great locker Merle's room was guy. An awesome that was Wits guy. era. Merle's was a great locker room guy. But he'd just be like, ah, oh, I just lost the the the. I had I had the points there in the Giants Bills game, and you're like, bro, so we just did warm ups. He's like, eh, I'm a mush. So he was still a joy to be around. He was worried about gambling bets and uh, after uh, warm ups. Yes, for sure. Regular season NHL games? No, I'm thinking AHL. AHL, okay. <laughs> All right, maybe maybe that's why he got the ticket, the one way ticket after one preseason game. <laughs> All right, next up, we got a caller from the 312. 312 caller, what's your name and where are you calling from? What's up, boys? It's uh, Sam from Providence, Rhode Island here. Uh, just got a question on the Canucks. I know the chances are a long shot, but what do you think the chances are that uh, Pedersen signs after the season? Oh, I'd, be, I'd be scared if it was after the season. I'd be a little worried if, well, no, because he's RFA, right? I yeah, would believe be so. Yes. Okay, so so I I I picture him resigning there. Yeah, uh, and unless he he hates something about living or playing for the Canucks that we wouldn't know about, he's he's the best player on the team. I mean, I, I actually think after the first two games, I mean, granted that's not 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 much. I I think there's going to be something going there this year if he's playing as good as he has started and talk it's <laughs> the man. I I bet you those guys love playing for him. So I think he'll resign there. They're going to have to pay him. I, I think his numbers, I don't know, 11 and a half, If he plays a half a season the way he did the first two games, I'm looking at 11, 11 and a half million, and he's got to get it. Confirmed yeah. RFA, too. Confirmed RFA. So yeah. I like the yeah. chances. Yeah. Up 100 plus, he's getting at least 12 million. We'd have to I, I, it, I, it, think so. I think 12 is the number, too, yeah. for eight years. If they didn't let GT, JT Miller walk, they ain't letting him walk. Yeah, I mean, he did turn on the captaincy, so that's the only concern. But yeah, but I, I that that would <laughs> you're right. That is a little bit of a panic that if they he turned off, it down. I didn't. Is that for sure? I mean, I'm hearing from inside sources that he didn't. Oh, you got sources? Do you trust these people? What is it? The rink attendant? I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> Come on, Biz, you're a rumor boy. Yeah. So yeah. hey, if that was the case, that 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 would worry me a little bit. Who told you? Can you tell us your source? No, close, very close to the situation, or very close to the situation. Yeah, Dick Ryder, to sixty nine, six down at hotmail dot no, I yeah. kind of, I kind of believe, I kind of <laughs> hey, believe this guy a little bit. Hey, hey buddy, I'm not sure. Jacqueline's Coke runner. No, <laughs> not sure if you're aware. We we, <laughs> <laughs> we had Pedersen on a few years ago. Just in case you weren't aware, episode three hundred four. If you haven't yeah. seen, I checked it out. Check it out. It's good stuff with him. All right, yeah, I've listened, but I'll do it again. Thanks, do it again. Right. That's your order. All right. well, thanks, yeah. thanks have a good one, buddy. It was fucking three years ago. All right, boys. Next up, we have a caller from the 630. 630 caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? What do you got for the boys? Hey, boys. How's it going? Uh, big fan over here. I appreciate you having me on. From uh, My name is Jake from Chicago originally, uh, but out in Scottsdale, Arizona right now. Die-hard Blackhawks fan. 
And uh, I know the hype is around, you know, Bedard, you know, bringing us back and uh, reigniting this franchise. But I want to hear your guys' thoughts on Korchinski. Because I believe, you know, growing up, those three cups we got don't happen without Keith on the back end. Yeah, you think? Uh, so I you know, <laughs> want to hear, you know, what do you think the future is for Korchinski? What do you guys, uh, what do you guys think about him so far? Well, first off, Biz, maybe you could take Korchinski. I mean, he's played, what, four games? He looks great to me. But you mentioned you live in Scottsdale. Biz has a couple old shirts that he's willing to sell you. Yeah. He's looking to make a couple. So just get in <laughs> well, touch with him. Deal. He's got some old Abercrombie tees that you can buy <laughs> off him half price. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> Korchinski looks like a nice player, dude. Yeah. He flies. He looks great. Where do you hang out in Scottsdale? <laughs> uh, so I'm up in North Scottsdale. I actually live right down the street from uh, from TPC. Okay. So you, are you a golfer? You, you, you golf in there all the time? Yeah, I golf a little bit. I need to get better, but uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to play a lot more. So you live out there full time. There's rumors that they might yeah, do the, that, um, the new Coyotes rink in North Scottsdale. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. That's great. I don't, they, they can't get rid of this. Uh, they can't get rid of the Coyotes here. The, like, if the Coyotes were good, Arizona and Scottsdale as a whole is just it would be too good of a hockey market for them to get rid of uh, for them to get rid of that team. I agree, buddy. Well, thanks for calling. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me, guys. Go Hawks. Was there buzz around town when you guys made the Western Conference Final? Did you yeah. notice it was like catching on? Yes, and then the next like it wouldn't Anaheim kind of when they're in the hunt. Yeah, but the next year they had the half year lockout, so it, it killed any momentum that we had, and it just yeah that along with uh, ownership up in turmoil constantly and no like you just you need solid ownership. You need to win. Correct. If, if you win, they will come. And yeah, I guess you don't win without solid ownership. But I, I it w I think it would be all I think it would be awesome if they were good there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Preach right, to the choir. Oh, is he still on the line? I don't know. Nope. Next oh. up, we got a caller from the 902. 902 caller, what's your name? Where you're calling from? And what do you got for the boys? Hey, boys. Big fan of the show. Brad Adams calling from Nova Scotia, <laughs> Canada. Up oh, yeah. Specific. What's up, Brad? Good the energy. Place, hey, boys. The first place of lots of great hockey players, as you guys know. Absolutely. Hey, yep. boys, I just got a more, more, more of a grind my gears uh, segment, if you will, instead of a question. What's your guys' thoughts on Bedard getting booed up in Montreal? To me, I think that's bullshit. Biz Whoa. loved it. Booed Biz a, loved it. year old kid. I fucking hate that shit. Give uh, me some thoughts, boys. I know Pierre-Luc Dubois is going into Winnipeg tonight. He's going to probably get a few maybe deserving boos, but I don't think that 18-year-old kid deserves it. Give me some thoughts. I think it's playful. I think they're just kind of wanted to be known as the first fan base to give them the boo and give them that treatment. I think that's like a badge of honor. And if, if I'm Connor Bedard, that's, that's fucking dope. That's part of this whole experience. Yeah. Cause like, I don't view it as something threatening. I view it as something like, yeah, you know, it's, is it not playful as a guy who knows from the other end of being booed at home, <laughs> being booed on the road is an awesome yeah. thing. And I think, as I can't, I can't say from experience, I had the bad one, but the guys who do get booed on the road, I bet you if you asked them all, they'd love it and it probably only fires them up more. I remember when Yager would come to Pittsburgh, like they'd boo, they, it got way less by the time I was, I was playing, but there'd still be some boos when he touched the puck. It's like, just let, let him be. You're only firing him up even more. So I bet you Bedard enjoyed a little bit. And I think those fans, I agree with you. Yeah. It's like, I think they're like, oh, we're going to give it to him like that. This is the NHL. So I don't think it was bullshit. I mean, they're Montreal fans, right? They'll do it to their own players as well, but it's just, it, it, it's a badge of honor on the road. I've been booed by. Yeah, I hear that guys. Oh. And Bedard said that himself. He he enjoyed it. I was more or less thinking of it from an eighteen year old kid standpoint. Maybe not being so hard. Yeah, you can't think of it. Man. It's it, you need to think of him as an eighteen year old because people have said it's just out of control, like how big his story and coverage is now. But he isn't really a normal eighteen year old kid. Like this is what happens when you're that good at something. There's going to be this much attention with it. Yeah, for sure, guys. Thanks for the comments. We're we're enjoying watching them up here. I got two young kids, and man, hockey's real relevant in our house again. And I, I I'd say a large part of that is due to Conor Bedard. So thanks for taking my call. Hey, hey, do you still think it's bullshit? Like, have you changed your mind since our opinion? I like uh, having your opinion from an NHL uh, experience standpoint. Okay, guys. yeah, for sure. All right, I, I like that. Yeah, uh, uh, that you said that. You know what I mean? Uh, from a um, out of town kind of perspective, that gives you like a He's being noticed because he's that good. He's yeah. getting those booze, right? Yeah. 
Cool, boys. Thanks for taking the call. You're the best. Thanks for listening. All right, next up, we got a caller from the 207. Caller from the 207, what's your name, where you're calling from, and what do you got for Biz, Wit, and RA? Hey, what's up, boys? This is Sean from Maine. What up, Sean? Sean, oh. Uh, this question's for everyone except Biz, since he doesn't have, he's too unbiased there. Uh, what do you guys think about the Rangers this year? Honest opinion. <sighs> I, I, think, I think they're going to be good. Uh, I have them in the playoffs. I think that Shesterkin's that good. And Panarin's that good. Zabeniad and the... It's a really good team. I don't know if they can win the Stanley Cup unless Kako and Lafreniere light it up. I think I said that on the Atlantic, uh, the Metro Division preview. But I still think they're they're, yeah. they're in the playoffs and they could win a round or two. And if Shesterkin gets hot, you never yeah. know. It, it, it's a good team. Biz is a hater. R.A. hates them too, though, deep down. Or he hates their well, fans. No, I, I like to troll their fans. I got them in the playoffs too. Shesterkin's too good. Thus, it's pretty much hey. the same roster. And I think Laviolette's a huge factor as well. New coach. He's going to crack the whip a bit. I wouldn't be surprised if they made a run to the finals. I'm, you know, I'm not predicting it. I just wouldn't be surprised if it happened. Yeah, no, I will agree with you guys. Ranger fans are pretty brutal on Twitter. But the, the regular ones of us just want to see the team do good. But... I think Kako's looked pretty good on that top line. So Some of far. them are bad in uh, person lost. too. They like sucker people in the in the subways. <laughs> Avery Zaretsky still owes us a jump in the Hudson as well. Yeah, Let's that not forget that. Bad. He really? He bet Pasha and he didn't fulfill his no bet. Oh so. wow. shit! That's not, that's oh shocker! Pathetic. Shocker! Not falling through with his bet. That's a Rangers pa- fan. That's scumbag. Pathetic. How about cowbell lady at PNC Arena during playoffs? Uh, what was it? Two years ago? Didn't she it, get arrested or something? Oh, uh, they kicked her out because she was swearing at fans because she kept doing the freaking cowbell and as the security guard and police officers were walking out she assaulted one of the police officers <laughs> that's just typical behavior from scumbag ranger fans so it's not unbiased i'm it's okay to hate a team i just hate no, them. i think you but, are biased but they have a team good enough to win a stanley cup because they have the goaltending they have and they have weapons and yeah there's a the card still out on that third line and bottom six production Next up, boys, we got a caller from the 519. Caller from the 519. What's your name? Where you calling from? And what do you got for the boys? Hey, fellas. How you doing? This is John from Stratford, Ontario. Yeah, I was going to say that's an Ontario number. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I actually was the one that's uh, been DMing you boys a bit. DMing G about uh, my band having a tune for a little refurbished look on your intro music. Okay. Did I repost it? Yeah, you storied it. Small town strip clubs, the band. I like it. Shots the tune and- I like it. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're always up in discussion tune. about changing our, our, our come in tune. And I don't know, sometimes even the one on YouTube, people are like, go back to the original of, of what? And I don't know what people are asking for now. Have you heard this song? I have not heard it's it. It's incredible. It's I, I give it a nine out of 10. Can we play it right now? Uh, I, I'd have to find it here, but we can get <laughs> okay. it. All right. We know what we'll do, buddy. We'll, we'll, I, I'll, all right. I'm going to listen to this. Because Biz likes it, G likes it, I'd love to hear it. All right, you heard it? I have not. All right, so small we'll t- Small I, Town I Strip Club, look them up. Small Town well, Strip Club. I will What's your that. guy's story? How'd your band start? So we've been a band since 2017. Started out as a cover band, you know, covering a bunch of uh, Canadian artists, a bunch of rock bands. Who, Tragically Hip? Bands like, hell yeah, love the hip, love Gord Downey, Sheepdogs, Rush. Sam Roberts band. You cover yeah. Shania well, Twain? <laughs> You do oh, Shania Twain? Well, we'll do it. We'll do it. <laughs> Canadian. Where it wants you to do it in a skirt with high heels on. <laughs> you got to shave hey, your legs. Never I never said that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're, we'll, check, your, we'll, check, we'll check this out. Uh, I'm, I'm going to listen to this right when we're done. With, right when we're done here. Sounds good, boys. Can I, can I give you one more uh, yeah. Stratford note? Okay. So there's a couple of boys in the, in the show from Stratford and they've, they've, how to come up in the last two seasons, Jake Middleton and Jared McCann. We love those boys oh, yeah. around here and they're due for a, they're due for a chicklets appearance. They're a couple of beauties. Yeah, Middleton. Middleton, awesome. Middleton, yeah. Middleton yeah. seems hilarious. He had the muzzy on the, the no shirt interview with you at TNT. Yeah. And he, he wears uh, the, the, the jock thing with no jock in it and like walks around the room and his ass cheeks are hanging <laughs> out. And the boys are like, buddy, put some clothes on. And his, his, his saying is I run hot. Like I sweat, I run hot. He's like RA, <laughs> but in, in this case, you're in the locker room, so he's just cruising around with a man thong on. So he's a different cat, and uh, he was great when we had him on TNT. Great personality, and and uh, definitely a character in the locker room. So we'll get him on for you. And even McCann, like he's a fucking sick player. Didn't he have 40 tucks yes. last year? Yep. Yes. 
I think he Pop went through off, Tro- Toronto yeah. and um, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Whoopsie. Whoopsie, we Daisy. Kept him. Love Kurt, but we should have kept him. Yep. All right, buddy. Well, thanks for calling. Yeah, anyways, boys, appreciate it. Have Thank a good one. Talk, small town good luck. Good, good luck. Out. Good luck with the band, bro. All right, guys. I'd like to introduce you to Cheap Shot by Small Town Strip Club. This is the song that they want to be our intro song. All right. Oh, is that all right? Awesome. It gets me going. I would, I would, I would, I would 100% start the show with this jam. This is our vibe, boys. Here we got beat. This, this is a, this is a good jam. I'll take it. Well, and it would probably end right now in terms of the intro yeah. to the show, correct? Yeah. I, Oh, yeah, yeah. that goes on for 14 minutes straight. Yeah. <laughs> R.A. is the classic rock guy. What are your thoughts here? I, I really do like it, man. I think it's got a good upbeat vibe. And yeah, I, it's upbeat. I miss the days when, when, like, way back in the day when we could use actual, like, songs because we weren't, like, we weren't going to get DCM8 or whatever We're the fuck going independent, is. dog. I, I know, but it was what fun. Are use, what do we use now? We use, uh, like, it's a, a paid system <laughs> called APM. It's tough. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. Not is right. it a different it's song different. every time? No, we have the same one every time, but it's basically just like a, a song that doesn't have. I've rights. been begging to change it. But why, you know, so why haven't we gone to him or this song? Well, Grinelli, I'll, I'll commend you, man. You've been very protective over what we change it up to, but I feel like this is the first one that we've actually all been like, okay, we might have something here. Yeah, and I think when he sent it over, it was right before Chicklet's Cup, so we really haven't had time to sit down and be like, all right, man, we're doing this. Let's sign I, the contract. I, I, I'm, I'm let's down. Let's get it done. I'm down. Let's do so it. Let's start the show. I vote yes. Yeah. I'm down with that. R.A., you're the godfather. Yeah, what do you think? I just said 100%. I mean, the fact that we, like, we don't even have, like, it's the only option, and it's good. It's great. So I it's think we like, should, can we roll it back one more time for, like, th- how long's the intro? 30 seconds? I was going to ask, G. I would like to hear as it would be in the show before the show begins. Yeah, give us a fade, too. So I'm, imag- I'm imagining, pause it for a second. Yeah, yeah. I'm imagining <laughs> that I'm getting in my car. Yeah. 6 30 a.m. Tuesday morning. Yeah. A bunch of crazy shits going on in the NHL that week. And then you're fired up to listen to the boys, listen to chicklets. And I now, now boom, go ahead. Hit it. Everybody. Boom. No, no, I, no, I no, think no, no, wait, so. you wait. It's going to build up and then right there. Wait. With the oh, my God. Now you're slowly fading out the cheap shot the, here. The wording on what it said, can you go back to the wording? It felt like a good time to cut it out, but you're saying we need I, the I cheap agree. shot. I, I, no, I think... I think before the tune changes going down, you start the show, dude. It's fired but, up. But it's, then but then he's saying it hits you with like another banger of like cheap shot. And it's kind of the brand. And then you fade Spitting out on the chicklets. cheap shot. Yeah, cheap. so I love the beginning. I'll, I like it more than the cheap shot part. But but I know what you're saying. I The beginning's great, dude. It, Should fire, we listen one, one more, more time one more, yeah. until yeah. after the cheap shot? Well, I, I do. So I want to. So you're doing it like the show will start? Yes. So that seems long. No? Yeah. I know, but it's such yeah. a fucking good tune. Uh, Right, yeah. with me, dude. That's a long time. Yeah, You're like, unless, I think I think we could start it about halfway well, through was, here too. I was gonna say if you don't start the song from the top, then yeah, then it might work. If, if you want to get that the cheap shot, uh, words, I like the start, start a little bit though, late too. Uh, well, that's yeah, that's I do too. How it's long? Too long. Okay, but I, yeah, so I know how long saying. time wise from the start till after it says cheap shot? We're talking thirty Ten, seconds. If that, that's even. 15, 10, 15, no, 15, 20, maybe? That more. felt like more. more no, more. I'm saying, I'm sorry, I thought, what should we go for? I'm yeah, you, you want about a 15 second yeah. intro. So, so, so time it to see how long it would be after the cheap shot. Uh, hold on, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to time it. All I'm right. going to time it. Right. The beginning, every verse, it's just going harder and harder. All right, ready? Yeah. Play from the beginning here. Yeah, and I, I want to see how long it okay. takes to where Biz wants it to end. And then let it keep going through the cheap shot so we can hear the part that, that Biz would suggest. Okay. Okay. 
Good to go. Ooh, everybody. I think fading out on cheap so shot. So when he stops it, it's 39 seconds. Yeah, okay. That's, that's, a, okay. that's time. So, so they put the time and effort to create this thing. I feel like the song is good enough and I don't get bored at any period of that. They deserve for people to hear a decent chunk of the song. And I fucking like it that way. I know. And, and, you, and guys and, on YouTube, which the cool thing is we can, we're going to put like Chicklets memories and awesome That's moments that I'm have saying. happened behind this. So it's okay, going to be like okay. Gretzky and Charles Barkley and ice fishing. And it'll all be running his B-roll behind this. And the start of the song escalates quick and it comes in with a hello with, with RA. And then, yeah, you need that in there. That's uh, awesome. It's awesome. So I, I, as long if as you he, guys are cool, that 38 seconds seems like a long time, but what he's saying makes sense to me. If we have enough people coming off the top rope saying this is ridiculous, I don't think people will. I think it's actually going to get them fired up for the show. Let's try it. Love it. I All love right. it. What an excellent tune. I am so fired up that we did this. If if we would have never came here, I don't think this ever would have got to wit and we would have had no, a debate about this. Had to. There's a reason why we came here today, and I think we got our fucking song, boys. So thank you to who? What's the band's name? Small Town Strip Club. There we go. Great oh, name. Perfect. We got a, where I used to work. Hey, we got a partnership, the Sundowner, guys. where I used to work. Thank you to everyone who called in. Um, Really appreciate that. It was fun to do. We we did a we did a ton, and I know G cut it down to thirty minutes this time. We have another thirty minute section of calls coming. We'll drop during another episode. But small town strip club, the band, the the song, cheap shot. I dug it. I just kind of pictured, you know, people getting into the car, going to work Tuesday morning, looking forward to Chicklets, and boom, that song gets going, kind of gets you fired up. And we listened to it a bunch. We've listened to it since. I think it's a, I mean, for them to reach out, and it's nice. They named their band after Business Junior Career, strong, Small Town Strip Club, him just, you know, frequenting <laughs> all worked, these spots. I worked at the fucking Sundowner. We should film the music <laughs> video at the Sundowner on stage where they used I to have I always forget those. you were a bouncer at a strip club. That's yeah, just for perfect. seven shows shifts and then i um, I was done i like that jam i like that jam i think it'd be a great intro song for us i don't know how long we've decided to play it but what biz no i was gonna throw it over to g quickly before i say what i gotta say i was gonna say they got a ton of songs and i'd love to hear what everyone thinks too because i got on a phone with these guys we were talking we got some of the creative juices flowing you know chicklets cups chicklets live shows they want to be a part of everything so if you like their music let us well, know let's because- start with what the fans think of the of the og song yep. to set the foundation the to the me the, at the beginning's beautiful though. oh it's just a that. nice little touch eh? like little hans zimmer s just <laughs> put that right there love it um i was gonna ask you guys did you ever used to uh watch the uh bet 106 in park the basement where they would do the you know freestyles freestyle fridays no I'm f- i i know yeah Shade i never watched but i know what you're talking about so I, I want to say it was 106 in Park where they used to do the Freestyle Fridays. It was all part. It was kind of like when you, you grew up and you had like the, the Rugrats and the lineup of shows. Well, BET had this, this section of time where there was about four when you got home from school. And every Friday, they would have the, the reigning champion, Freestyler, go against somebody new. And I remember the there was this like Asian guy who ended up going like 15, 20, maybe even 30 weeks straight where I feel that our opening song I would assume that people like it just as much as us. We'll keep it as our song until it potentially is dethroned, where there's a new submission that is better than it that takes its spot. I don't know if that'll ever happen. I love this one. I think it's catchy. It's an independent band. We're not going to get hounded about licensing this and licensing that because the music industry is a fucking joke and how all that stuff works and how much music actually costs to use. I think we should do it freestyle Friday approach though, as w- where it becomes a battle. It's never, it's never guaranteed. You're not guaranteed your next game. It's a privilege. That was, what, 
that was one of my favorite things uh, early chicklets was, was getting the songs uh, picking the songs to to start the show and end the show because like we, we you know we were pretty small back then so we could pick all those songs and we would get we would get DCM8 or whatever, DMCs whatever the fuck that is I learned a lot of Rolling Stones by doing that RA every time I'd ask you it'd always be a Stone suggestion you gave me a ton of good suggestions but it was uh, I learned a lot of old rock music how much would it cost us to uh, license a, a Stone song to open up the podcast <laughs> like hundreds of thousands oh, yeah. a million it'd be a lot of money, yeah. in Engagement ring price. Next, possibly. next thing you know, I'm going to be having. Like, I'm going to bring out my recorders. Actually, I mean, gee, it just. I actually made a, a well playlist or whatever on Spotify of all the songs that we used on the on Chicklets in the early days. So, uh, if any other OGs want to check them out, uh, I don't. I don't even know if my fucking Spotify name is because they don't go on all that much. But three hours and forty three minutes of some classic rock, good shit. All right, gee, it's that time of the show again. Grinding my gears, brought to you by bigdealbrewing.com slash finder. Okay, Karen, what's it this week? Oh, my. Fucking- we got, we got to get that lady on. Uh, we have to get that lady on. What supermarket was it at? Nah, I don't want to see her, hear her side of the story. Oh, God. Let's get the surveillance tape. Bring Please back do. a bring, bring back a, a forensic grind my Karen. gears. Brought to you by Dude, Big that, Deal that Brew. picture with the fucking the, the swooping head do they put on me? But all right, I oh, will good. say this one. You're not going, Karen. I think we all have the same grind my gears feeling right now. And you know what's grinding our fucking gears is our buddy Pasha's, Pasha's hot idiocy. takes. Pasha's fucking devil's We uh, want fucking this guy expert. answering questions. We had to tell this guy Tyler Tafoy was a good player. Pasha, we're going to collab this. We're going to make this a big deal brew, grind my gears, and a slash kangaroo court. I think that this guy deserves a podcast suspension for the idiosity that's been coming out of his mouth and the fact that you got me to drink the Kool-Aid of which is being served by the New Jersey Devils. Pasha, speak on your what idiosity. the fuck speak. are you talking about, Biz? I have so much to get off my chest. I had to go get a microphone just so you could hear me loud and clear. What the fuck are you guys talking about? Which hot take do you want to start with? Because I'll address whatever you want me to address. The New Jersey Devils. What the fuck okay. am I watching? I okay. think that I, I think they belong. They should get relegated to the American Hockey League. The way other they're, they're the, keeping other the than puck the Boston Bruins, who are doing some crazy Benjamin Button magic shit, breaking records. That team's invincible. They lose Bergeron and Krejci. <laughs> Find me a team in the league that loses their best two players and still plays good hockey. You take fucking the Rangers. Matthews. Matthews the and Rangers. Martyr. They lost Fox, Fox and, Fox and Whoa. Whoa. Whoa! Let us answer the question. G just said it. They lost a, a, a Vesna goalie and a Shesterkin Norris defenseman. Shesterkin missed like three games. And then while he was gone, Quick was playing like 2012 Quick. Like that doesn't count. Next man up. That's a good team right there, Next Pasha. man up. How would the Leafs do without Matthews and Marner? How would the Canucks do without Patterson and Hughes? How like how, May, wait, Maybe, wait, maybe wait, better. How much the Oilers are struggling right now? Imagine them without McDavid and Dreisaitl for may, 11 fucking have, games. Have Why are you row? deflecting? Right I'm now. not deflecting. I'm saying you're chirping the devils for how they're playing. When Hughes got hurt, he was the best player in the world for that stretch. He was putting up four points a game doing crazy shit. Nico Heischer is their captain, a Selkie finalist, 80-point guy. You're taking those guys out of the lineup. No shit. No shit they're going to struggle. They were 4-7 and seven while those guys were hurt, barely keeping their heads above water. I'm not concerned whatsoever. Obviously, they're, they're going to fucking struggle without Can I read you centers. something? Can I sure. read you something? Sure. All right. You actually dug this one up and you sent it to the chat. And this is, and, and remind you, you know, things are bad when Devils fans start turning on their own team. Okay. This is a Devils fan talking. Most teams have learned how to beat the Devils. A 1 3 1 neutral zone defense. Check hard. Devs are a soft, a soft team, soft, soft puppy team, shit. Pasha. And stay out of the box. Devs have no four check game and ops limit our speed. Opponents, as in ops. Devils get one shot off and puck is immediately going back the other way. One and done. Two, kind of like a one pump oh. chump like you and the rapper. Uh, <laughs> D1 pinching, and I can't read the rest of it already because for whatever reason, it's not pulling up the tweet. But if you want to read that one from An- Annie... Annika who, Devils. Annika who, wrote, Devils. Who wrote that tweet, Albert Einstein? Oh, check hard and stay out of the box. That's how you beat any fucking team. That's not groundbreaking. Well, they can't scouting. do it. That's not Well, they can't do it if it's so yeah, fucking all, easy. Yeah, all of a sudden, these people are saying that they can't do it. Yeah, no shit the Devils can't sustain pressure without Jack Hughes, one of the best possession players in the game, and Nico Husher, one of the best two-way centers Winnipeg in the game. Winnipeg don't need it. No they learn how to cycle shit. the puck. No Winnip- shit their game is struggling. Win- oh, and by the way, they're missing 40-goal Timo Meyer for half those games, too. They got oh, no yeah, he's like looked, he's, he's fucking looked, done oh, unbelievable, yeah, 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 Pasha. What do you mean? He's Four looked just phenomenal. Straight. I wouldn't let him on my big hurt. deal selects team. Fuck you guys talking about. So listen, I'm not saying it's 100% because of injuries, but like 
up, I would say till a week ago, there was no concern because it was like those three guys are out, you know, whatever. Talk to me when they're back. I told you this in the group chat, Wit. Last week against Detroit was when the first red flag came up and the alarm bell started sounding for me. That was the worst game I've seen them play in well over a season. They lost 4 nothing. They were shut out for the first time in like 105 games. After the game, Lindy said it was the worst game he's ever seen them play. That was a major red flag for me. He's they, deflecting they, too because his ass is on the hot seat. I saw the fire Lindy chants are going again. Woo, woo, woo. Ooh, trending Listen, again. Oh, I'm the they? farthest. I am the, well, the, you know, Devils fans, they're fucking crazy with that shit. Pasha did it from his burner account on Twitter because he couldn't even get into his own account. <laughs> yeah, liabetic. He locked himself out because he doesn't want to get ruined by the by everybody else online, well, including Rangers my fans. Thing is all he ever said to me when I was an Oilers fan was power play merchants. This is literally what the Devils are, dude. Who said that to you? You used to always say to me, the Oilers are power play merchants. The Oilers are power play merchants. Oh, I said that about JT Miller, too. What are the Devils? They don't have goalies, and they only score on the power play. Like, whoa. Let me finish finish what I was saying here. Okay. Okay. Let let me finish reading this tweet. It finally came up. Oh, you're going to pull out Einstein's tweet again? No. Hey, it gets better, buddy. It gets better. D when oh, pitching, yeah, check hard and stay out of the box and score more goals than your no, opponent. No, yeah, and I even they said really this a few. Figured out how to beat the Devils. Yeah, this fucking Twitter account should be coaching your team right now for the amount of incompetence that I'm seeing. So let me finish what the person wrote because they're bang on, and I said it a couple podcasts ago. It goes D when pinching, and they do pinch a lot. They have no back coverage, so opponent takes risks, risk and leads to too many odd man rushes. Buddy, I watched them play against the yes. Colorado Avalanche. Yes, without I, their top they, two centers. Uh, You've got Michael McLeod, their shutdown guy. I don't know if they were missing both center. their top two yes, centers yes, in that Colorado missing, game. They were missing okay. Fuchsia and Hughes. Okay, yes. so what? It, it it didn't teach him how to not fucking pinch and give up 13 odd man rushes in they a played one like game. Shit. They played like shit that game on the road against one of the best teams in the league. Big fucking whoop. Okay, I'm so I'm going to finish this thing off. This is a coaching fault. They won't change their game, and the the rest of the NHL has learned. And I no. don't disagree oh, with yeah, these Buffalo, comments. Oh, yeah, Buffalo really learned it last you know, game. Hey, and you know what I think of big losses? Uh, uh, shut the fuck up, Posh. And uh, Wit, you might be able to back me up on this. I think that Andrew Burnett had a lot to do with the success of that team who's now moved on to Nashville. Tell me I, if I'm I, fucking yeah, crazy. Yeah, I, 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 I think he ran the power play, which is still Woo! buzzing. No, so no, 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 I don't, no. I, but their no, no, PK he, he stinks. Ran, he, Andrew Pasha, Burnett ran the power play, which was middle of the pack. Now they have Travis Green, and now the power play's lights so up. That's so, a, that's, so that's, that's all right. Pasha, you, my you don't thing think is, he was helping in other areas? Like helping Sleepy sleepy Lindy write the lineup cards? Pasha, their goalies like aren't yes, good, dude. Yes. And you've never, that, ever said, like, oh, yeah, I wonder about the goalies. Like, you're like, no, 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 Devils, no, man. I'll be honest about it. I, I said last year... I was going into it being like, okay, we'll see what happens with Vanacek. Vanacek was breaking Broder's records last year for, for win streaks and all this <laughs> shit. He was, well, he was. That's a fact. There's nothing to laugh about. It's a fact. Yeah, who, who sent that one? The, Annika Devils? Their, <laughs> <laughs> their goaltending is a major, major, major 10 bell alarm issue right now. That is their only issue. Their only real main solid issue. The injuries thing is hopefully over the hump. Heischer's back. Hughes is back. Meyer should be back soon. Their goaltending is an issue. Vanacek, this guy... For all the records I just mentioned last year, who's breaking, I've had it up to here with him. This fucking guy lets in the softest goals. I predicted when I came on here in the summer, Schmid would take over as the starter by Christmas. Akira? He hasn't, he hasn't looked great either, but I still have more faith in him than Vanacek. But their goaltending has been god-awful. They're 29th in the league. The Oilers are one of the few teams that are worse than them. And, and Witt, as you know, the Oilers shouldn't be as bad as the record shows. But when you have goaltending that bad, every little defensive mistake is just exaggerated, put in the spotlight. So... So yes, the goaltending wait, is a major, wait, major no, issue. Wait, they zero, remind me of the oil. Like hey, they have zero no toughness. There's just no like grit and dirt in that team, man. They're just hey. high flying power play merchants, and they don't ever they are, like. That, seem no, no, to no, no. That is not true. They are not power play merchants. They're five on five. First of all, they're five on their five power numbers. Thirty eight percent right now, you and they're not even in the good, playoffs. You can have you can have a good power play and be a good five on five team. They were one of the best five on five teams in the league last year. This year, it struggled a bit, but again, major injuries. So we'll that's because Br- that's because Andrew Brunette was doing their five on five. Um, well, time, time will tell with that. But 
They're yes, it, the goalies are a fucking problem here. The power play looks lights out. Five on five, they're a solid team. All right, since but nothing's you uh, gonna happen until their goaltending since, gets figured out. Since you won't acknowledge the amount of odd man rushes and in, in, in defensive zone breakdowns, and you're just gonna point the finger at, at a young goalie like a fucking no, idiot. You are. Plenty of, there's Let's been plenty go of back. Odd man rushes. Why don't we go back to uh, uh, another power play merchant here, JT Miller? Since oh. your your comments on the podcast, I don't yes. like his I don't like his body I'm, language. I'm glad you. I don't like it that he slams doors. I don't know what you're gonna oh, say right told, now, Paul. Oh, you don't know what I'm gonna say oh, right now. Oh, 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 I'll, I'll tell you. I'll I don't tell like you. his body language I'll when he tells his. I'll I don't like his body I'm, language when it when he when he tells his teammate goalie to to get the fuck off the ice because it's a delayed penalty. I don't like his body language. Since I made my comments. I've got every fucking Jagaloon Canucks friend from British Columbia, Jagaloon. Vancouver, out to fucking Surrey in my DMs. Good. Being like, I better not see you with the Roxy, bro. You're going to get suckered, bro. Fuck Good. you. Good. The Canucks have played seven games since I've made my comments. Those seven games could not have exemplified my point any better. In those seven games at five on five, JT Miller has two goals and zero assists. He's negative two. He's had highlight reel plays like that turnover to Kale McCarr in a one goal game late in the fucking third. Are you fucking kidding me? This guy, he's making eight million a year. Every time he gets a point, I'm getting my DMs blown up. I would fucking hope he gets five on five points now. And then he's making eight million dollars a year. Two goals, zero assists at five on five in the last seven games. One of them I could have scored. He was sitting on the goal line and he fucking pushed it an inch. That's that's the quality. Maybe he could teach had, Timo Meyer had, to get to the he's blue had paint. Five, he's had five power play points in that time. What did I say? I never said the guy sucked. I said he's overrated. Gets all his points in the power play. Not great five on five. He literally has proven that in the last seven games exactly what I said. So what the Posh, fuck are you guys you're determining? About? Wait, wait. You're determining a guy who's playing yeah. against top lines night in, night out, having two five on five goals and only being minus two as as, as you're. And he's, he's plus he's, ten on oh, the season. Okay, okay. So you no. Well, I'm when I made this comment, it was what eleven games into the year, and that was based on a larger sample size of the last couple of years. Last year, JT Miller had as many five-on-five five points as Jordan Martinuk. Let that sink in. Jordan Martinuk had don't a fucking, career don't year. Don't talk bad about Jordan Martinuk. Fuck you. Hey, That's jo no Jordan, knock on Jordan Martinuk. Time out. Everyone's talking JT Miller like he's a fuck. The, well, a yeah, God's but it man. just so happens he's making he plays, eight million a year. Jordan Martinuk's just, making one point five. They had the okay, same amount of five-on-five five points. How, how much does Timu Meyer make? He makes eight and change. More than JT Miller, would you be okay with the body language and point production from JT Miller on your squad right Actually, now? Actually, let's put it this way, Pasha. You honestly would tell me you'd rather Timo Meyer on the Devils than JT Miller? It's easy to say no based on the last 20 game sample size. No, Before I'm talking this, about how they played the game. How about the 100 like point season he had? Oh, the 100 point size. season he had, like I mentioned, was all in the fucking power play. He sucks five on five. Posh, leave fucking Pavel Zaka alone too, by the way, all right? Oh, how yeah. About how the about Zaka Pavel Zaka? Before he went to Boston. Let's go. Let's yeah. talk, yeah. baby. Yeah. Okay. okay. I think hey, we're not We don't want him on the talk. first or the fourth line. Ugh. You want to talk Zaka again? Listen. In my opinion, this was a hockey trade that both teams won. I love what Eric Hall has <laughs> oh, done. Oh, oh, backpedal, <laughs> backpedal. If I can move the goalpost. The you. fuck you talk? Zaka we're going to get a, we're gonna get a Peloton sponsorship with all this backpedaling. Zaka has 16 points in 20 games this year. Hala has 12 points in 18 games with far less power play usage and first line time and all that. Okay? So those are relatively comparable numbers. Hey, Wit, who outperformed who in the playoffs last year when it mattered the most? Hala had a better playoff than Zaka. I'll take that any day of the fucking week. Hala's I mean, a leader he had in that six room. Six assists in seven games last year. Zaka I, was great I, in the playoffs last year. Hala was one of the Devils' best players in that first round. What, and he who, them, who, what, what was the point around. production? What did Zaka do? Pull, what did Zaka do? Pull, pull up the point production. I think Hala probably had at least six points as well. He had six points in 12 games, and Zaka had six points in seven games. Suck on that, Pasha. Who got Another to the one. second round? Oh, yeah. second all, round. All, all the result of Hala. I, I just Hala think Hala scored some massive goals in that series. Actually, he was really good. And 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 you know what? You finally actually you finally won one slice of an argument during this entire time you've been on. Congratulations. I uh, just think that you you ever since the day I met you, you're a Devils fan. You love them, which I respect. Especially a kid from Vancouver who hates the Canucks and and will will probably get. In a whoa, 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 fuck you! Man. He started fuck the you. riots. He, the Canucks. he started the riots. I didn't even mention that. I didn't. Even wasn't even a Canucks <laughs> fan. He started the first that. fight. Him and his he rich threw, West man buddy. Bruins jerseys you, to Game Seven and you shit. Threw he threw me him. under the bus so hard that podcast saying I hate the Canucks. I had everyone damn me about that when I was locked out of my Twitter and I couldn't defend myself. I literally said, other than Heisher. 
There's no captain I'd rather see raise the cup than Quinn Hughes. I pumped his tires, pumped Pedersen's tires. I said Demko is one of the best goalies in the league. Talkett's done an unbelievable job there coaching. Hoglanders look great. Besser's looked amazing. The team has a lot of good things going for them. Miller is still a one-trick pony. He's fucking overrated. But 33 teams points. Got a, uh, teams a got a lot of good game, things going for them. I do not hate them. I would like you to like the players, that. but you hate the franchise. You like the players because you don't go agree. out with them I, in I Vancouver. I don't agree with the process. Like what, That night at dinner in Newport, <laughs> that night at dinner in Newport, you listed the Western Cup contenders and you said Vegas, Colorado, Dallas. Then you included the Canucks in that group. That is such an insult to those teams. The Canucks are not in the same stratosphere as those fucking teams. Let me ask Man, you this. You so look JT, at their team and oh, you look at their goalie, like, I don't know, their start right now. Like, if they get in the playoffs, anything could happen with that goalie. Like, I, I think I, the team I has think it's no crazy prospects. to say. I think it's crazy to say right now that the Canucks have zero chance of winning the Stanley well, Cup. Of course they have zero chance. If you make it in the playoffs, you've got a chance. But to, to include them in the contenders conversation with the big boys I think of the West. I, I think R.A. said a that because he's as got his future. Demko. I think R.A. said that because he's got his no, future. No, no, you, you no. Know, you said it right after you were I talking think, about the tree I think they the way that their bottom six is playing, I think if they're able to add a piece up front at the deadline, one more, uh, or, or I, I actually... I probably would add a, a big piece to the back end maybe before I did up front the way well, that things What did going I say right when I came on? I said the Canucks PDO is astronomically through the roof <laughs> and it's going to regress. Since then, what's happened? They're three and four. They just oh, lost yeah. to the NHL history worst team ever, San Jose Sharks. They're coming back down to earth and that's going to continue to happen. They're a decent team. They're a solid team. They're better than I thought. They're going to make playoffs, but they are not on this planet of fucking cup contender that everyone has them on now. So we we're, uh, I, I, we talked to JT Miller and he's pretty much confirmed wants a sandbagger this summer coming up. What what will you do if he reaches a certain amount of five on five points for the rest of the season? We need to set a number here, RA, as 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 far biz, as biz, biz. can you can you just repeat that? You cut out. I didn't hear what you said about that bet. I said that we need to figure out a bet where we're going to have to set a number for um, JT Miller five on five points for, for, from right now until the rest of the season to get the Pasha stamp of approval. And if he hits that mark, there has to be some form of punishment when we have him live in the flesh at Sandbagger. I'm thinking maybe you stand at the end of the tee box and he's allowed to drive <laughs> one right at your nutsack. That's sure, what I'm thinking can, off the top can, of my head. Yeah, sure. How's that for body that. language, we can, Pasha? We can do that, yeah. But hey, let me ask, like... Where were you guys were crickets when I brought up those stats? Like two points, five on five in seven games with a fucking. I don't think that that's that horrible when you're playing against for an top million, lines. For an eight million dollar player, p- part of his responsibility is to shut down other teams' top lines too. Oh which yeah, makes you know, when it coughing up to McCarr in a one goal game late. So you don't think really, you don't think really Jack Hughes could go? You don't think Jack Hughes in a seven game span of the Devils going three and four could have two five on five points? No, and Jack Hughes is one on of the, the best, power play. Jack Hughes like, is one of the best five on five players in the league. I understand look, that, but like you could go into little ruts as the whole team struggles through a seven game yeah, span. It, You're like, yeah, nitpicking. okay, but I'm not ta- nitpicking. I'm not talking seven game uh, sample size. I'm talking full season sample sizes. Last year, same five on five percentage as Jordan Martinook. Like that's why I even brought it up. You guys are talking about an 11, 12, 15 game sample size. I'm talking about full season sample sizes. I'll put more value on that than a hot start to a season. Is a full season an actual sample size? What do you mean? <laughs> All right. I, I mean, it seems I, too um, big to be a sample, though. <laughs> All right, Pasha, you know what? You grind that idea is pretty good tonight. Once again, bigdealbrewing.com slash find it. Check it out. See if it's near you. Pasha, always a pleasure to have you on. Any final thoughts? Uh, thanks for having me, boys. Also, every Devils or every fan in my DMs chirping about the Devils this, Devils that. I will bet you the Devils may playoffs. So just come at me. We'll make a bet. Devils are going to be just fine. Am I am I seeing here of Jack Hughes's twenty five points five? I mean eight of them are five on five. Oh, what was last good. year? Okay, well we're going by this season. Who's got more you. five on five points? I just, I, I just who's said, got I more five on five points per size. game? No, pump the brakes. G, do the math. Who's got more five on five five on five points per game? Because I know that Hughes yeah, has been injured not- a little bit. We're not doing this Mickey Mouse fucking cherry picking twelve game cherry sample size. That's why he twelve twenty five percent of the season. Twelve game fucking sample sizes. Why don't you do all of last season and this season combined? We're That's a quarter, a way we're, more trustworthy we're, sample size. That's a, a way qu- more trustworthy sample size. We're a quarter of a way through the season. All right, 
This has grinded my gears. Uh, <laughs> by the way, all you Chicklets fans, especially Vancouver fans, I'll be giving out Pasha's address in West Vancouver <laughs> as well. Uh, uh, he, he's in the witness protection program right now uh, in Arizona. I'll be getting that address out to you as well. So uh, safe hiding. All the bridge and tunnel people from Vancouver are going to be murdered. See you guys at the Roxy. Thanks for having me, boys. All right. See you, buddy. So 11 of JT Miller's 33 points are five on five. And eight of Jack Hughes' 25 points are five on five. I, I don't we're, really... We're, it's I, basically like, the same. I so. just don't... It's not like a detriment. You're fucking scoring a, a fucking power play or whatever. I just... It, you know, he, he sounds like... Makes it sound like it's a bad thing. I mean, if you fucking get points, who gives it a sounds fuck? Like I will a say, though, that... that a determining factor of how dominant a player is is what he's able to do out there five on five, especially to today's defending standards compared to the, to the past. So I don't know right now who would be leading the league in, in five Sydney on five. Sidney Crosby. He's leading the league in five on five points. Yes. Oh, my God. Wow. Legend. All right. Well, that's a good I, way to end it. It's all uh, came full circle. Almost one. Oh. One two small notes. Uh, actually, I want to give a shout out to uh, linesman uh, Tyson Baker. I don't know if you saw the fight with uh, Calgary oh, yeah. Flame Dennis Gilbert in uh, Nashville's Michael McCarron. He made a hell of an effort. I think he, he put, got his hand on, underneath the guy's he head or helmet. Yeah, I mean, just you know, just the awareness and uh, not compassion. Just heads up, a heads up play. So we want to give All a right, shout just out to, to set Tyson. The tone, just to yeah. set the tone, two guys got in a fight, and as one of them fell to the ground, the ref dove. And caught the guy's head right because his helmet was off. He caught the back of his head right before he hit the ice. Was probably two inches away, and you could even see the look on the player's face as he was going down. The ref caught his caught his head. He was like, "Oh my god!" Like he, the guy just saved his life. So not shout to out mention to him. That those linesmen. They're trying to make sure they don't get hit with a punch. Like that's a tough gig breaking up those fights, and then to have the awareness to do that. That was a couple clicks for sure. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And thanks, thanks for uh, chiming in there, Gino. Elaborate a little bit more. Uh, and uh, last thing we have here, uh, Chicago Blackhawk. Uh, Corey Perry has left the team for the foreseeable future, and uh, really nothing. Nobody really knows what's going on. Uh, it doesn't seem to be trade related. I. Don't know what the hell's going on. Nobody seems to be the Blackhawks are very tight lipped about it. So uh, it's a news story. He's a, he's a, obviously a legendary player. So uh, he's not with the Blackhawks. We don't know if he's going to be back. We don't know what's going on. Nobody seems to, but uh, it's newsworthy. So we're passing along. That's all. Um, I, I will say one thing on it. So there's, there's some brutal rumors going on online, like stupid shit. Ignore that fucking noise. It has nothing to do with some of these things that you've been reading. When it's time for it to come out, it'll come out. But ignore all the bullshit that's going on and, and trying to fucking stir things up. It's nothing's confirmed and and fuck off. So yeah, we don't, we don't like to, to comment on, bullshit, on yeah. guys' yeah. personal lives we, and all that stuff. So l leave them alone. Yeah, it's okay to wait uh, two weeks, a month, whatever, to make sure, you know. Yeah, you know, once we know the somebody. story, we can kind of talk right. about it. I know that's not the world now, but boys, great show. Uh, any final thoughts you want to share before you, Vamoose? Thank you I, to everyone for buying Black well, Friday, Cyber Monday this. merch. Oh, sorry, G. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for buying merch. That's unreal. I guess going back to it, though, I will say, like, Chicago could probably just come out and say what happened, and then these rumors aren't out there. Like, maybe, like, they actually address it. I I don't know what now. Granted, I don't know what happened, but I, I think you could argue with Davidson being so tight lipped, and it's like, all right, well, obviously these ridiculous, crazy rumors are going to start circulating. So why doesn't the team come out and say what happened and get ahead of the story and not cause people to be kind of crushed by different bullshit? All right, you're shaking your head. You agree, no, eh? I'm agree. I'm saying uh, of all fucking franchises to like try to keep yeah, just the come fucking out and say the what something. Yeah, you might want to fucking re revisit not that a little Not to mention bit, that Chicago, they said you know? they they sent him home. They were like, this is our decision. He's not here. And then he came out with a statement with his agent saying like, yeah, I'm going home to address personal stuff. So if I'm the Chicago Blackhawks, I'm coming right out and saying what happened. And then you yeah. put to bed all the bullshit people are hearing. So yep. that's my statement on it. And, right. and as G said, everyone, thank you so much for buying the merch, supporting us. It means the world to us. I hope you guys enjoy what you ended up buying. Good, good Christmas gifts. Good for yourself. And, um, Thank you. Thank you. As always, it's, a, it's an amazing fan base. We love you all.